I'm starting with the base Minecraft village and I have a goal of allowing villagers to roam free. Last episode, I transformed the entire surrounding flower forest, which means it's time to transform a village. This has taken over 250 days to complete. So be sure to leave a like and please subscribe if you enjoy. Hey folks, Fip here and welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. A little while ago, the hard drive in my computer failed and everything was gone and all of my Minecraft worlds were on there. I instantly got to work trying to recover anything I could get my hands on. After 12 hours and quite a few tears later, I did it. I saved the hardcore world. With that, I decided to reward myself by adding micro blocks to the wandering trader. Along with surviving 3000 days, I think I've earned it. And here's my collection so far. And I can take a few with me to add around the city for some extra spice. Just little guys like that is gonna make such a difference. Moving on to something that will affect how I play the game. I want to use warped wood for the roof so of the village but i can't be bothered to chop any more down i really try to not automate the grind away as i might as well just play creative mode but i need another tree farm to build this farm i'm gonna need a lot out a lot of materials out first glass from the librarians and a lot of redstone from the clerics a quick trip down to the iron farm i just need a little bit of stuff a little extra mess for now as i get things sorted first crafting orange dye to create orange glass and i've already got tons of pistons slime blocks walls and slabs in here that leaves hoppers observers dispensers repeaters comparators and the works but this should be just about everything i'm going to need as we're building the automatic farm by crimulus now it's not the prettiest thing but I do need it near the future village so it can run while I'm working. And I'm thinking right up against the mountain here could be perfect. First, I need to prep the area and push this as close to the hill as I can. I didn't really think about where to put the redstone and I don't want it out here in the middle. So I got to clear this out too. And this should about do it. Next for any blocks I drop, we can put a little water in the corner and this should be big enough. First up here, I need to build a redstone clock that's going to control the entire thing. Next up to make this farm automagical, we can add in a few spawning spaces around here for all of our warped goodies and maybe the crimson. This farm also produces warped and crimson mushrooms, so I'm building a little collection system for those and an easy way to supply bone meal. Now for the much more fun, explosive part. But now we can take the time to explode stuff, which this should bring us right here into the middle. Okay, but actually none of this goes here. I definitely know what I'm doing and this is a little clock up here. Yep, I very much know what this whole thing does. And so I smartly finished up the farm with no tutorial whatsoever, definitely not, no way. As I'm a professional. Moving on and grabbing some bone meal, not as a distraction, just uh, stuff to do, let's keep going. We can fill both ends of the chest here with a ton of bone meal, 27 stacks each for now. I'm gonna sleep the night away before this gets too spooky as it is time to test this thing please work i mean i definitely know the redstone's perfect but yep please work the farm definitely was working as intended and i knew that straight away so we're off to play the field not as a distraction at all for me not knowing what i was doing whatsoever we just absolutely have to plant a new field precisely right now as also you absolutely should subscribe right now this is episode 30 and i've survived 3135 days in hardcore minecraft the flower farms and last episode produced an insane amount of seeds so i wanted to plant a brand new wheat field here near spawn moving on to the next distraction let's get this village going where yes i will actually build the village today the plan for this one is to bring a few roads through and link them all together then create some village houses and structures themed after villager professions adding in some market stalls to bring it alive and lastly some small fields around for the farmers to work now first to get the roads in place this should do now i need a little bit of wheat wow oh, wow look how much we have all oh, those farms working great i'll convert nine stacks over for now okay maybe just a little bit more i do need mud bricks after all for first step here before we put in the roads i think it's time to remove everything else inside of the village it's like it was never here speaking of which where are the villagers you've got what you've got to be kidding me how did you manage this get out 
get out right now. You want to stand there. Okay. And we still have two alive in the hot tub. The village can go on. We're next and I need to clear out some of the grass in order to bring the road all the way up. Right about here, I think we start transitioning out of the coarse dirt into our packed mud and mud brick. First section is in and this will work and we'll keep expanding it as we get the village houses in. But first I'm finishing the street layout throughout the village, creating a small loop in the middle where the villagers have finally joined the village of a building and a tower. But hi, lure two. Yeah, I'm going to lure you into the village. Get it, get it, get it. And our first toolsmith working the market stall that the horse's head is, huh, I, Oh no, I forgot to turn on the tree farm this entire time. I was really hoping to come back to a bunch of materials. Before I do that though, let's get a little bit of cobblestone here inside the quarry. I swear I never sleep in this bed, but uh, we can stay the night at home. Now let's turn the farm on. While I spend some time planning out where the structures of all these buildings are gonna go, we can do a stonemason back here with a small workshop station out in front. Kitty corner to that, we can have a leather worker's shop. They'll probably have a workstation back over here. The library once stood tall here, so so I want to throw it back in and something like this. Next door to that, we can have the butcher shop, a toolsmith over here. And for the entrance on this side, I want to include a tavern. It's actually going to come out over the road into a little stables. To fill in on this side of the road, we can do another farmhouse and lead into a replacement for the blah, a replacement for the chapel. This right here should do it. And I've got plenty of space to add in details like trees. Speaking of which, how is the farm doing? Wow, that's a lot of stuff. I think it's out of bone meal though. With that sorted, I'm gonna need a lot of blocks to build the village. First, a lot of copper, which I wanna lay out in the village. So while I'm building, it's already aging down. All three stacks are now placed down. Next, I'm gonna need to empty this shulker box. And it can go in here, it's fine. And here, cause it's so organized. From here, we're off to the desert to fill an entire shulker box of sandstone. This is probably why I have storage issues. I realistically don't need that much, but I just like having a lot of blocks, okay? So we're gonna keep doing it. Running down into the super smelter, I wanna put about 18 stacks in here for smooth sandstone, and it should be coming back pretty quick. A few minutes later, there we go. This house here is gonna be for the stone cutter and the leather worker right next door, so we don't need this field or any of the water, let alone the farmland. Both will have outdoor workstations, so I changed a lot of the grass out for coarse dirt and packed mud. For the mason, I wanna start with white terracotta, stone on the corners like we've done so far sticking kind of with the base idea from our first buildings i do want to include some tuff here at the bottom then we bring in the white terracotta all the way up inside of this way so we have a large entrance in case boulders or something need to be moved in and out of the workshop we can do this and since we have it let's grab some crimson stem planks on the corner a door and strip stems. I kind of like that. That works out really well. Moving on to the second floor, I want to take a lot of theme elements from the first building we created. So sticking the spruce out to the sides and then stacking it up with the same slope all the way up for the roof. Along the back here, I want to bring in some strip jungle logs with a few windows for a small jut out. Going for the birch and smooth sandstone for the walls with plenty of windows on top. The Mason's house is starting to look pretty good, but I forgot an item. So let's make the shulker monster even worse. Well, look at my nice wagon. You live in the house, give me this. I keep running out of the stuff. So I want to fill an entire shulker with dark prismarine. How much do I actually have down here? A little over two stacks. So oh, no, this is my life now. About an hour later and I'm all out of ink. Taking a quick trip out into the end to the Witherose farm or Ender Pearl farm, I guess. Okay, these can craft into black dye for more dark prismarine. Not perfect, but better than nothing. With that all finally done, I want to gather up all of the aged copper and get back into building. We have a lot of houses to build in the village today, so the mason's house is now set in stone. Then jumping over to the leather worker to build a one-story house and finishing up the outdoor workstation, where I have these big vats over here for some water and a small stirring. Nope, stirring tool. Of course, some actual cauldrons for workstations and a few extra bits around. And a much, much better. Now for the first farmer's house, where I wanna replace the base along here with some tough. I'm really liking the stone brick on the corners and then the white terracotta in the middle to match our Plains Village vibes, where something like this should work. Slap a mangrove door on the front, a little lantern right there, glass for the window and oak trap doors. Cutting another out on the side, giving this house a little bit more presence, I want to extend ourselves out this way 
stack up a few of the logs like we've done on a few other houses then for the middle we can start with birch planks and smooth sandstone on the sides this way it fits with everything else and really starts to set in the style carrying that around the rest of the house so it all feels cohesive and fitting inside the environment this is looking pretty good so far then here on the back I want just a small tiny section sticking out so it's not all the exact same let's bring in some oak then from here we can just extend out some slabs to cover finishing this farmer's house off with a diorite chimney and stacking up the roof style we're using throughout the rest of the village so far a bit basic for now but inside each of these houses i want to include a bed and a workstation stone cutters already outside here so they just need a bed and ow i get it it's fine this isn't even your house well the worker can have a bed too though next i want to tear these guys down and get some actual trees over here going back to the azalea trees we built in the last episode i want to repeat those here too and that is looking a lot better coming into the village from this side already most of the copper is aged down now so i can at least clean up this mess just a few stubborn pieces left to age i am starting to get a little worried about the villagers the population seems to be dwindling a quick stop at the wheat farm i can craft a few stacks of bread now if i give this to one of the villagers hopefully with all of the okay just walk away from the bread i'm trying to give you if i give these to you hopefully you'll go give it to your friends right yeah and you know what yes kind of forgot about the banner i made we can add in a few of them around the village just to keep the vibe going but next up i'd like to refocus on the opposite corner of the village and work on an inn with an attached stables Ooh, you're aged i want to add some more color into the village so let's get some purple dye or purple terracotta and magenta terracotta our first child appears to be uh stuck behind the stone cutter um you'll figure it out right yeah I believe in you cobblestone base going around the sides then here on the front I think we could have some stone brick and then we bring our purple terracotta coming up throw a little door frame in here with some spruce and we carry the details going around the rest of it to continue on with the purple I'm thinking we do the door here out of crimson I'm kind of loving it right now since I finally have it to work with finishing off the first floor I carried the purple terracotta all the way around and built a little side section this is a pretty good start and to have an overhang on the road I think we can extend a little bit of spruce out bring some trapdoors down creating a small archway the archway is going to link to the stables and a second floor for the inn so we can have a few more rooms but first off finishing the inn with white terracotta for the second floor walls with a little magenta at the top and a warped copper roof to bring it all together I'm really loving this for the back entrance into the village and I think a very tall tower right here will look fantastic or fan flippantastic we now have two children in the village and a tower where yep the extra height is working great to go up even further though i do want to collect a little bit of sand from the river because somehow i have all the smooth sandstone but no sand to keep an eye on the new children and make sure they're safe i'm adding a top of the tower out of sandstone with a deep slate roof we are officially a village we have cats look at him he's adorable but first we need to build a stable section which is gonna go right over here a few stalls to get inside and then i think we can bring some jungle all the way around the back i'm trying to keep the scale similar throughout the entire village so it all fits together so we'll bring ourselves up four blocks and then we'll do strip jungle logs in between you know what instead let's go up five blocks and then inside of here we can create some stalls for the horses themselves like this and spruce coming across the top where i've run out for now let's tear out the entire floor underneath and replace it with some coarse dirt out here in the front i think we can replace some of this grass too as it's gonna be a busier part of town so we probably need an actual road that is looking much better somehow i have all of these shulker boxes of so many different types of materials everywhere completely unorganized and there's no spruce wood we're completely out time for a quick break from the village and stop by the neighboring mega taiga as i need to restock up on as much spruce wood as i can fit in my inventory an entire day of log chopping later and this should satisfy my endless need for spruce trap doors maybe for just this project but i'm not a bad guy so i will replant the trees i chopped down materials ready to go i'm back at finishing the stables with a second floor balcony moving on to some sandstone walls to keep it simple and then a spruce roof to add contrast to the other roof lines in the village oh hi there little friend uh no thank you we're not accepting visitors quite yet i've still got a village that needs building
one final line of logs here at the top and the stables is done just a few beds in here for the inn and barrels for the bartenders before moving on to a new area i want to build up more of the cypress trees to border the road like i did on the far side of town i need a quick sacrifice here from one of the horses for a bit of leather with sticks to make item frames as outside of the inn i want to give the beds as a symbol at like please thank you this is an inn with a bed so you can sleep in the inn and a second out here with a little banner showing that we're coming into the village next up it's time to get some farmers first i need to grab a load of carrots this beautiful house right here is going to be for a farmer so we can throw in a composter and a bed then right back over here where i can throw in some slabs waterlog them and then expand farmland around it and plant in all the carrots for the villagers to hopefully maintain the population themselves a few slabs in here so the farmer doesn't trample everything but these two lovely gentlemen should be able to uh, maintain the village if they can't figure out how to spawn golems to keep them safe i do feel kind of bad leaving our new farmer friend without a roof over his head so i need to raise it villagers i will protect you everybody's safe okay that's good oh we got a golem look at that oh we have a protector i hope this doesn't look too awful in the end as i want to bring the flower farm style from last episode into the village i am not done with it yet though so we can frame out the window maybe campfires along the top and do something like this to kind of hide it all before jumping into the warped wood for the roof we can bring in a little spruce as a border and the farmer approves he likes his house to go along with this being related to the flower forest i'm thinking we add a little stand out here where they might be selling some flowers and a little awning on the house itself making sure here it's still related to the village i'm throwing on a warped roof pink pink and red now i really like soul lanterns but this is my last one and i want to throw one back here to keep the farmland a little brighter taking a quick stop at the iron farm for some iron and we jump into the nether <laughs> made it professional now inside of here i should find that they gave soul torches professional quick trip into the quarry for some bamboo though i can craft a ton of soul torches which using iron nuggets we can craft soul lanterns quick stop at the sheep farm for more orange and pink wool to craft tons of banners because i need more cozy vibes in my life off to build the next structure i'm building a small blacksmith for a toolsmith to work using deep slate for the chimney in an outdoor working station and some mixed stones in for the walls and dark furs marine for the roof adding some magma blocks for the forge here and trap doors so the villagers don't warm their toes to death smithing table for the job station and a an anvil that looks pretty good except the magma is leaking out so maybe i just do that yeah probably better i know you're a fisherman but you like the forge no yes no he's just leaving okay goodbye oh he likes it i should have a toolsmith around here so oh hi there you are sweet that actually works out great let's buy some hose be a little symbol on an item frame for our shop the extra details really do help make a difference here taking a look back at where we started we've already built houses for our stonemason and leather workers the inn is ready for any travelers who might want to buy tools from our toolsmith and our village is now self-sustaining with a few farmhouses we've still got a lot of work to do but there's a wandering trader right over here hey buddy what do you got what do you got hello hello oh dripstone block cartography table okay i really okay i need i need as many of these as i can get ancient debris <gasps> i don't think i have any i think i smelted it all emergency emeralds and this is what i can get so far not too much but it's a start back to the base we go i need many blocks okay i've got a few more blocks we can trade but no diamond oh wait 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 i forgot about these i will take that any ancient debris in here oh there's three netherite kind of forgot about those now back to focusing on the village where we need to build up the butcher shop and then the library wandering traders being useful again is actually so much fun for me for the butcher shop though i want to give ourselves a small tower working all the way up here and a little window from here we can add a little top trim going around with some spruce on top of the spruce let's bring in a little copper for the highlight and that should do it now we just need a building to go with it where we can tear this out and bring in packed mud stone for the base again and then we can do a few stairs as a divider from here i think we bring some oak in and then around where we're gonna have windows we can maybe do a little stripped oak working on a slope coming down over here i'm thinking we do a single floor where the oak is at the base another window down here then we could just bring it into the middle and peek it up since this is a butcher i do want a place for animals to hang out nearby for a vacation yeah vacation we'll, t we'll say that yep vacation but back here we can have a little side entrance with some mangrove then for the place for animals to hang out we just bring in a bunch of coarse dirt with a little outdoor area like this i think it'll work great and then we could just bring in the stairs all the way up with a little oak back here <laughs> 
Quickly finishing off the second story house and adding in all of the details, the butcher is finished. After I make a furnace for a smoker, which we can throw inside the butcher with a bed. So the villager can't get into the animal pen though. We'll put a trap door here. Speaking of the animal pen, let's get a few carrots. Maybe the top of the mountain shall give pigs. Pig. Now I just need to guide the two pigs all the way into the village. Okay, let's see if we can get these guys in together. Yes, perfect. And baby piggy. One quick stop before we move on. I need some emeralds to buy bookshelves. Okay, maybe I need more emeralds to buy more bookshelves. Hey, want to see me build another thing in the village? Want to see me do it again? Just so much learning in here. I mean... Look at all these bookshelves. I just can't quite afford a floor yet, so we'll put the lecterns over here and two librarian beds here. Moving on to the final houses here in the center, I've got a new idea, so let's tear out all of the cobblestone. For these, I'd like to build out some row houses to share the space instead of the single diagonal building I had originally planned. I realized I still have plenty of space down here to include another building. So I've added a balcony to be able to get up to a second floor to get inside this one. And then also a way inside of another building and the front street entrance is looking really good. To make them feel unique, I want this entire top floor over here to be made out of mangrove. This building on the other hand is gonna be stripped oak logs. This area is going to be a market soon, so we can add a big bay window here looking out over it. And I want this building to be slightly shorter than those guys, so it'll come up to here. Repeating this over to the far side too. With the walls in place, it's time to raise the final roofs of the village houses. The only building that now remains is the chapel, but we'll tackle that soon, as I need to deal with mob proofing the actual village. For this one, we've got to go inside the giga tree, which right here should work. Yes, to the old glow lichen farm, which for once is actually not out of bone meal that should do it the giga tree give us again one day i'll actually expand it one day and it won't look so wonky but back over to the village as the roofs of a lot of these buildings are very spawnable so a little glow like and dotted around should help keep all of our villagers safe for a lot of these back sections too i think we can just dot some on the outside walls so it'll just keep zombies a little farther away ah, cat ah, i don't know why this cat scared me so much but it did and that should help keep the villagers safe. Next up, we've got to fix up this area and turn it into a market. First up, I need to tear up all of the grass in here. Oh, a house. And replace it all with rooted dirt, a little coarse dirt, and slabs to bring it down for the market layer. And much better. This here should be perfect for a little market. Oh, I almost forgot. I need some composters and a few beds for our new homes. They're just gonna share a house and stare at each other when they sleep. Hopefully they're good neighbors. And the third gets a big house to themselves. For the market, I'd like to include a few villager professions that we don't already have homes for, and maybe a few random little stands. Like this here, we can fill in with some flowers. Then another stand can go right here so we can have a walkway. We'll cover this one, but I do want to bring it in line with a second stall right over here. Scaffolding for a little standing area. Then to cover this side, I think we start with some birch. Smooth quartz, birch, smooth quartz, and birch. Oh, don't, no, don't. Oh, don't kill yourself. I love villagers. I'm building a home for villagers because I love villagers. Now for this one over here, we're gonna just use some red sandstone. Right back here, we can have a Fletcher and over here we can have a weaponsmith? Weaponsmith, yes. This corner isn't big enough for a stall, so maybe instead we just have some firewood around. Then in here we can build a well. That would probably do best with a little bit of water. Perfect. Building up the corners. And a few stairs on top. First try. Definitely first try. Oh, bedtime. I love this bell. Oh no, buddy. You're gonna you're gonna have some problems with that, aren't you? Yeah, we'll deal with that later. As for a final stall, I want to give this for Fletchers. And by Fletchers, I mean shepherds with a loom. Now for this one, we can just throw in a little bit of mangrove for the roof and have it inching up to the top. For one last addition, I think we can add a little deep slate right in here and another post back here. Then if I can figure out a way to connect them, we can hang some lanterns and banners from it. Ooh, 
No, oh, so close. I think something like that'll work. Then I should have some more banners. Yes. I think off of the lanterns or maybe right next to the lanterns. This is looking really, really cool over here. Maybe we can add in a few of our white tulips. Uh, Azure Blue for variety and this last guy? I don't know. Maybe he's growing right there. Grabbing some more rockets and I want to make a quick flight home to this lovely mess of my storage room floor storage porch. It's a storage porch now where I have all of these. Let's grab a cartography table and a bunch of other goodies which we can throw around the place to help decorate and just add a little extra flair. Maybe some ore for the weaponsmith. I don't know how he's turning that into a weapon right here. Minecraft logic. But the rest are starting to be a little filled out now this is really starting to feel like a bustling village time to keep an eye out for wandering traders as i stop by but the sun is setting and i really need to make sure this place is uh spawn proof on the inside so any dark spots we can toss in a few lanterns but i think maybe this corner you really like that plant huh yeah you kind of want to go home buddy no no don't go through the bush go around the bush oh you're so Okay. Oh, there you go. Look at you. Wow. So talented. I've added a few prismarine walls in here to kind of block things off, but it looks pretty safe. You're doing great. You didn't, you'll, you'll get over that trap door one day. Right. I think we can move forward. It's time to build the chapel. As a first step, I want to completely remove the original plan I laid out as I've got a new idea. I don't want to base anything off of real world religious structures. So the chapel I came up with is with my own circular design. Here in the center, I've decided I want to have a sapling of the Giga Tree, something like that. And leaving it open to the sky, I want to surround the central garden with pillars. The sky's weeping. It's so happy to have a garden. We can start to light this by having some soul lanterns hanging from these walls. The outside frame, I want to start with tough on the base. Moving into white terracotta, stacking all the way up to the top of the wall. This is already starting to look really nice, but the lighting in here isn't quite enough. So I think if we bring some glow lichen around the base of the pillars. The cat can live safely inside of the chapel thing. Even with these large windows ready to go in, the outside's still rather flat. So we add in a little stone brick in a sight stair, and then a little more stone brick with another stair. We can throw a granite wall on the base. That's a good start. Here in the middle, maybe we do some cobbled deep slate walls stacking up just to bump it out a half block. Then on the 45 degree angle, Angles, we could bring that in even further with stone brick walls to the top and of course our cobbled deep site walls in too yeah i think that works i just got three more sides to go Adding a front entrance, breaking away from the circular shape, I'm adding in a touch of glazed terracotta here too, which with the prismarine, I think is working pretty well. I'm really enjoying the walls expanding and making this just a touch wider. So let's add some more here on the second layer. And the open gaps on the outside, I think it can work too. This is meant to be a little fancier than everything else in the village. So I think the more details we add in, we're gonna hit that mark. Next up, crafting a bunch of orange dye to make orange candles. As I built out these shelves around the side, and I think a few flower pots and then candles and I'm one short and two candles dang it ah wait we live in a village let's get some emeralds and stonemason bricks flower pots I really love the azure bluets and I use them throughout the world so much so I think we can just use those and light the candles it's really getting lit in here hello hello fellow kids okay it's fine i'll just go back to lighting my candles ah huh, much better next up i'm gonna need a lot of warp wood and crimson wood where thankfully this farm has tons the crimson we can use inside of here as a way to kind of give ourselves a in a ceiling that's what it's called an internal roof or you know as one might call it a ceiling and something like this should do it but maybe we just throw a few torches on because uh this is very dangerous up here now for the roof uh we can add in a bunch of warp stem for warp stairs Stacking up a few blocks high into the sky, creating the entire ring roof of warp planks with little lightning rods on top to stop the villagers from turning into witches. Of course, we do need a cleric villager in here so we can have a brewing stand. Now the windows, they need some glass. I've already got orange and light blue, but I wanna grab some pink dye where we can work from orange glass, pink glass into light blue. A little weird, but I kinda like it. And now the Giga Tree Chapel is finally finished off and the sun was just hitting the tree perfectly. Oh, hi sun. 
but the vibes in here are absolutely perfect with the final building done it's time to move on to detailing the village to wrap up this project and create a nice place to live for the little children hey you're still stuck behind there huh first up i want to expand the carrot fields because uh the farmers aren't able to reach it quite well and the chapel did remove a touch of it first one in place back here a few leaves to kind of border the houses and maybe this section the fields also work as a great way to mob proof things and stop the zombie spawns so we can throw another back here around the corner that should work and the farmers will fill out the rest of the field a little hedge wall can go all the way around on top of the fields i want to add little flower beds like this grab some more of our azalea leaves and dot in a few more trees around the village the inside of the village is looking really spectacular now you'll get up there one day buddy you'll get up yep mm -hmm. you'll get come on no okay yep Ye look at you they're getting smarter every day except the shulker monster that is we'll clean that up soon now outside here i have a lot of empty spaces and i'm sorry friends i've got to kick you out of the hot tub now it's time to actually be members of the village it's safe and great and beautiful it's so much better than when you were last there okay come on now you you you're trading who's in the bottom block. Ah! For this open flat area we have, I think just a little bone meal over here is gonna be really nice to have some dead space. It looks artificial without any tall grass, but this will help just liven it up a touch. I just gotta get rid of a lot of the flowers. And much better. Now over here though, I thought another of the orange tulip fields could look really nice. This will be a pretty big field. Time to just make my ears bleed a little bit more. Yep, favorite part of this game. Ah! That should be plenty. With all the orange tulips ready to go, I just got back to work placing them down in their rows. That worked really well to fill in the area. For the rest of the dead space, we can go through the process of just bone mealing and all. I'm sure there's a better thing I could do in this space, but I really don't want to take away from the village and everything we just built, so it's okay to have a little bit of dead space as just the green foliage. This journey started nearly 250 days ago with the base Minecraft village, where we tore it all down without TNT to keep the villagers safe and create this brand new village, where don't worry, I did clean up the shulker mess, but I am so excited to share this newly completed village transformation. And with that, this is episode 30, meaning it's time for a world download. This is available to YouTube members and Patreon supporters as a thank you for all of the continued support. Like most Minecrafters, I finish a project and move on to a uh, never touch it again, but not today. Today, I revisit a project from nine months ago, completely transforming the ocean monument into something truly special. This has taken taken well over 200 days to build. I've been planning out the next city expansion and realized I need a lot of materials from the ocean monument. I put over 100 hours into this thing and well, it's really slow, but I think I've come up with a fix. This is gonna require a beacon. With haste two, as my plan is to just dig a really, really big hole. What the heck is grass doing all the way down here? Also, you thought I was kidding, right? Nope, not at all. Ow. If I drop the guardians down even farther, they'll have less health and they die quicker. Naturally, we have to give them an aesthetic demise, so I want to fill up the walls with prismarine. At least now they can die in style. Next up, I need to clear out the entire drop chute before we can rebuild it at the bottom, where I've been creating a gigantic mess of cod. That's... That's a lot of cod. To stop the farm from gathering even more materials, let's just get all of the hoppers picked up. So I don't flood myself with fish, let's run into the nether to grab soul sand from the big Lombarding station for soul campfires. If I dig another chamber down, we'll have a way to get up and down pretty quickly. Drop shoot down here, and second hole will go right here with soul sand at the bottom that I can replace with kelp. With the kelp filled in, that is now a super quick way out of here. The new killing floor will be right down here with all these campfires, and all of the hoppers can go in from here. From here, we can add in all the chests and hoppers sticking out and the supplies will actually just fall down here to the base wait i don't have to move it look at this i think a quick little water bucket here will just shove everything off the edge i've made a mistake i've made a mistake like situation seems to be getting better over here and we've got a lot more storage this time with an extra row of chests and i want to be able to see the guardians falling down so let's fill this in here with some glass leg definitely isn't fully fixed but i don't hear any guardians dying so let's get rid of these really quick and patch in a second glass window up here at the top which should hopefully mean we have a working guardian farm they're falling and pretty much instantly dying 
that is gonna do great since i moved the killing chamber down i also need to drop the afk platform down a few blocks which is going to be extremely important for later now that the farm is working i don't want to spend my time here looking at this gross mess any longer first let's mob proof what we have here already right time for torches minus the one zombie down here so close Find us the one zombie down here. Everything else seems to be pretty lit up and spawn proof. Moving on to the tower surrounding the perimeter. I need blocks to build with, which actually required me going back into the nether. See if we have any courts. This should actually be plenty. Oh no, I didn't mean to make those. I guess I need more courts. But thankfully I have plenty more to craft. I want to smelt most of this down here into smooth courts, then grab some gravel and sand to craft a white concrete powder. Pillaring high up into the sky. I'm converting the white concrete powder into white concrete and tearing it all right back down. Oh, and we have a distraction. I mean, wandering trader. Don't go anywhere. <gasps> Trades. Wait, wait. I want those. You don't go anywhere. Hello, sir. Please don't disappear. I'd like to take your entire stock, please. I forgot the diorite. Don't go anywhere. And diorite. Thank you. You can live today. The micro block collection is really growing. But back to collecting various types of white blocks like calcite and diorite. For lighting, I want to use end rods. And heading back to spawn, we can get iron from the iron farm to craft soul lanterns. And something new I want to try here, I'm going to need some cactus where we can smelt down a stack of it to make green terracotta, which I actually want to cook down into green glazed terracotta. Well, that's all cooking down. I want to run inside the great tree and gather a little bit more Lichen. with one final stop at the brand new nether tree farm because i need more warp wood thankfully everything else i need i can just get from the guardian farm let's focus on this tower to get started continuing the white concrete up from below and then we can swap into some calcite and i think we'll have the floor right about there i've got a bit of a gradient going up here which is going to bring us all the way up to the top and we'll probably have to extend it down but i do like it the only problem is the white concrete powder well turns to concrete if it touches water. With the test done, I worked my way around building the other sides, but I left this gap open here on the back for the glazed terracotta. I want to try and use this as like an algae growing on the tower. Since we're out here in the ocean, I thought it was really fitting. Then to further blend this all together, I think a little glow lichen can add, which I think can also be waterlogged. Yeah, it can. Up close, kind of weird, but I think I actually really like that. Let's slap a top on this guy. We need to run down to the guardian farm to craft a ton of prismarine and prismarine bricks. To help connect the top of the tower to the base, let's bring some prismarine bricks down here on all sides. Prismarine bricks up from there, and I think we can start working around some stairs. How the absolute heck did you get out of the farm? That? I'll deal with later. As I've got a really cool design in mind for the base of this tower, if we take some stairs along here, then do like upside down stairs and a slab in the middle we can create a railing it's looking a little too full though so maybe we do slab stair slab like this i do want to keep going taller so we can stack up the pillars to bring a little grime back into it i want to add in some diorite to make it look a little dirtier then on top of these we can work our way around creating an inner archway and i want to connect them all right through here moving into some prismarine bricks we can bring those around the pillars to add our light source on the bottom with soul lanterns for extra detail i've got warp trap doors which we can bring walls on top where i want to bring in some warp planks and work my way up into the middle adding an inner roof here out of prismarine bricks it's time to do something my friend lizzie told me to never do in minecraft and for that i'm gonna need a lot of the blue coral blocks And there's a full stack. Grabbing some extra buckets of water. I've added in the rest of the top of the roof here, and I really like it. But now I need to put water here and tube curl. Tube curl, water. If that's not touching water, it dies. Now the question is, does flowing water work? Like, does that count as touching water? And with that, I set off on a quest to build a literally living roof inside of the Ocean Monument Transformation. And there we have it, the first tower is completed. With five more of these to build, I'm gonna need a lot more blue coral blocks. And that should just about do it. The plan is done for the first tower, so I copied that over to another to make sure I had the correct height above the water level. 
repeating this around to all five remaining towers on the ring. With the base in place, I added in the remaining quartz to clear my inventory a touch. Before speeding off to complete the tops of the remaining towers, these are all the exact same design as the first one we built up, so tons of pain placing water to keep the coral alive. But now, all six towers around the monument are standing tall. This looks pretty great, but the surrounding area feels very empty. I want to first start by creating archways to circle the entire glass ring. Let's focus on designing a small section here first before I commit thousands upon thousands of blocks to something I don't like. Unfortunately, I am really enjoying using quartz in this build. The easiest way to get quartz is to take a ton of emeralds and purchase them from stonemasons. The problem is I don't have too many stonemasons. That's less than two stacks of blocks and pillars, and they're already locked. I was going to turn on the villager breeder but i think uh instead i should turn it off grabbing some stone and iron i want to add in another 10 stone masons without zombie carrying stone masons already trade one emerald for one piece of quartz so we can actually skip that step so i'm thinking a quick lever over here and we can route off this direction to where i can clear out a space behind our current stone masons to have room for even more I'll worry about beautification later. For now, I just need to get the quartz blocks. You know what? For this, we can just make a little sidetrack and push them in. I'll never have to move them again. Levers appear to be all the way set up so that things will just go straight through. And we don't need to stop at you. Off you go. First stone mason in place. Seconds off. And third. Looks like the first is taking his job so we can lock him in and take away the rails. And here are the final three villagers all in place. Everybody seems to have jobs except the new guys. And we're starting to unlock the next layers. The problem is quartz is all the way at the bottom meaning i have to get every single one of these to master level here we are completely maxed out on every single one of the villagers all the way down to the quartz trades at the master level except i've got a new problem i kind of need emeralds to buy all this stuff one thing we do have now to help generate emeralds is here inside of the grocery store in the city as down below i built a pumpkin and melon farm which is producing a decent amount okay you know what not that many but down here at the farmer villagers thankfully i've set up a good amount of them and they should be able to trade one pumpkin and one melon for an emerald well this is a start as each emerald can be turned into a block of quartz but even with that that still only gets me this much quartz i've got an idea now for the first section so let's take a bunch of these blocks of quartz and smelt them into smooth quartz i think i can save on the quartz count by incorporating a little bit of diorite since we unfortunately don't have any white trap doors i thought we could grab iron and use iron trap doors as i kind of have a lot of iron i should have enough materials here to get started on the ring and now that i've removed all the water from the middle i actually want to bring some back in as long as the water is not within the box of the monument itself i can use it to decorate where my goal is to turn this in almost like a reverse hanging gardens so water reaching its way towards the center is gonna be really good i do want to incorporate actual green garden areas as well so i'm thinking in front of this we can raise up some moss blocks Now to border around this, I want to have polished anisite stairs going all the way upside down. Oop, nope. Upside down. Working down to the next layer, I just want to copy where all of this anisite went in and extend it down with some stone. Below the stone wall going in, I also added the next ring out of quartz, along with some jungle leaves on top of the moss for the extra pop. Down here, this water is going to be for a coral garden, so I want to add in mossy cobble slabs on top. And what coral do I have? Ooh, I really want to use bubble coral. This would look so good. Gathering coral is way more painful than I expected, but we should have enough to fill this in. And I think I really like that. Yep, that's, we need that. Now with that in place, it's time to start building archways that are gonna hide some of the giant glass wall out of quartz. First one is now in place and that's gonna work really well next up i just need to carry this pattern all the way down to the next tower this is looking pretty great now except i'm not only gonna see it from the inside i need to reverse it all to the outside of the ring here too where i've already got some diorite down surprisingly this turned out to be easier than the first time as i could just swim around and build them all up in stages our top is currently at water level, so I want to take it up a little bit further here with some prismarine. I can't make this too tall, otherwise it's going to make the towers feel really short. Here's where things get expensive. I want to do double iron trap door and then dark oak. And by that, I mean dark prismarine all the way down. Now 
You know you're a builder when the most iron you've ever used is to uh, make decorative trapdoors. I don't think it's a problem. I think it's fine. But now from the inside and from the outside, this part of the ring looks good. I absolutely love the grind of Minecraft, but sometimes it's a little too overwhelming and changes need to be made. Each section of the monument requires nearly 500 blocks of quartz, which means I need 2,500 blocks of quartz minimum to finish the outside. So I decided to save myself tons of hours of emerald grinding and flew far, far away from my base to build the ENX04 raid farm and produce more emeralds than I could ever need. Next up, I had to grab a few villagers and bring them back over to the farm. Yes, there you go, in the pillar. Second villager is going down. And third villager is in. Last villager going up. Oh, thank you. After those were in place, I finished off the remaining parts of the raid farm. One final step before running the raid farm, I need a super beacon. So I'm out here in the end to kill a few withers. Those are the only four I need, but I am here, so I might as well get some extras. And there goes the last weather. 15 nether stars, and I can craft 12 beacons. And we're back at spawn. We're actually over here. I do need a lot of blocks of iron. For the first time ever, I'm going to be building a super beacon to get all of the buffs to defend against potential vex leaks. This here should do it. Slapping four beacons on top. There they go. Resistance two, strength two. I guess I don't need the last one, so jump boost two. Because why not? Last Step is spawn proofing it with a layer of glass as a final step i need bad omen from a pillager which i should be able to get right down here i've just got to find a banner boy this is taking a lot longer than i thought it would there we go bad omen it is time to leave making my way back to the raid farm we can run up here and now i just sit here for a long time i think it's working i'm not too sure but i think it is yep there's a lot of mobs dying nice about 10 minutes later, and we have almost nine stacks of emeralds. It did automatically turn off on me somehow, so I think if I just take these guys out, it'll restart, because I need a lot more than that many stacks of emeralds. About 20 minutes has passed by while running the farm, as I try to not AFK too much in this world, so let's see how many emeralds we have. Wait, what the... All right, that's almost five double chests of emeralds. Is this farm too OP? Should I... Should I blow it up with TNT next episode? Cause this is, this is really strong. But for now, let's pack up all the emeralds. This does feel a little too much though. Wait, I just noticed I'm level 165. Well, there's six shulker boxes full of emeralds. Let's uh, go get some quartz. My goal is gonna be to fill four entire shulker boxes with quartz. So let's dye them white and fly back into my pit of villager trading. Hi buddies, I'm back. Let's get to work. The 20 villagers I already had weren't cutting it. So after trading a while, I decided to add in another 10 masons behind. And the first shulker is completely full of blocks of quartz and another one of pillars. But I'm not using quartz. I'm using smooth quartz. So I need to throw this all in the super smelter. For while that's filling up, I can go back and keep trading. I'm having so much fun right now. I didn't think this grind could get any worse. And look at this. It's now two emeralds per block of quartz. Why? Why do you do this to me? I just want to buy your stuff. These guys are all locked already. I don't do almost have two shulkers. I might be eating lunch currently, but the second shulker box is filled. The first has finished melting down, which we can throw back in here. And the second can start cooking. While the chaos of villager trading was happening, I jumped down into the mines for a break and broke a bunch of diorite. I've got a box of dirt, diorite. I've got a box of diorite. And now two days later, IRL, it's finally time to get back into building the ocean monument where I want the gratification of finishing something. So taking the same design I already did and flipping it to the other side of the circle. Last step is bubble coral going on top of the mossy slabs. And we are now two six done. If I can sort out this middle section, the rest is all copy pasta. First step here is gonna be to grab all of the stone and build the platform all the way across. Before we add in any of the water, I want to get this planned out. So let's throw in our moss. Where I think this section is a wee bit bigger than the others, because uh, two stacks was definitely good enough for the first sides. From here, I just need to bring in all of our polished andesite stairs upside down around all of the moss. 
With those in place, we just need to bring in a few leaves on top of the moss. Before I get too far though, I did forget to add glow lichen over here and uh, mobs are spawning. The pillars on the outside are seven blocks apart so we can start spacing those in here. But I think it's gonna be easiest if I just duplicate them from the outside and then see where they meet up. And of course, we have an even center because it's an ocean monument. Right. Regardless, I think this is gonna work out. Nobody is gonna know. They're not gonna know. Nobody is going to know that the middle is 10 blocks instead of seven blocks. Nobody's gonna know, right? But what you are gonna know is the backside is now finished as well. I've left the middle open as I think we need a docking station to actually be able to get in here as the wall going around isn't very accessible. Before we get to that though, I need to add in the small coral garden here along the base. Next up, the quartz slabs. My circle isn't the most perfect, but we'll figure this out. Now I still have the entire back half to complete, which is, uh gonna require a lot of digging and these dudes keep popping up all over the place and splish splashing around you can live first up let's swap the beacon to haste to let's also craft a few more sugar boxes thankfully i only need to carve out the land to match the levels we already have for the pools built up on the other half we're gonna run into a little bit of a problem here as the glass doesn't come all the way down i'll deal with that in a sec i've got a lot more digging to do first First set of tools are pretty busted at this point, and I'm a little over halfway done. Grabbing a few new tools here, and it's back to the grind. Everything is pretty much dug out now, except for the boat. And I think I'm gonna be removing it for now, where we'll rebuild the boat outside of the ring eventually. Maybe, probably not, but yeah, the intention's there. But if we need a new build idea, we could come out here and build a giant boat, you know? But I'll probably forget, but like, I meant well. I meant well on rebuilding the boat. Oh, there's still treasure in here. How did I never get that? Oh, well, boat's gone, and I got this cool new map. Look at it. That looks really cool over here. I kind of love these. I don't really use them that often. Before the grind continues any further, I need to repair my tools. So a quick drop down into the nether to the wither skeleton farm. We're definitely back in the ugly phase here, but if I keep working at it and keep getting things in place, I should be able to quickly move out of that. This should be pretty much all of the stone that I need going around all of the remaining platforms. Now I just need to fill in these entire sections with some more water. First one's done. There goes the second. And I already did the third. Sweet. With that done, I need to count out the spacing for the new pillars going up. Wait, why do these not line up? Hold up. Yeah, that goes to the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's going on here? Oh, I hate everything. The entire circle is an even width of the diameter because it was built off the guardian temple. That's an odd, so it's shoved one block over. For the second time today, nobody's gonna know. They're not They're not gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. It'll be fine. We'll make it work. All of our base pillars are now in place, which means it's time for me to get back into builder mode instead of destruction mode as I'm creating the remaining half of the ring. Only 80 days after starting this project. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Yep, <laughs> totally fine. This is a very sad satisfying thing to be looking at right now with all of these around. With that done, next up, I wanna bring all of our mouse blocks in. Follow Shandesite stairs to go all the way around the edge here. Lastly, jungle leaves on the top to complete the planters. And the bonus step for a little glow lichen to keep it spawn safe. Nearly complete with the lower walking ring here as well as I just need a lot more bubble coral. I think I need about 100 of them and I got 63. First section is done and only 28 remain and not even halfway through the second. Coral Reef, here I come. There's a full stack of bubble coral. I think I need just a few more though. All right, let's see if this is enough. And hopefully I can make it back. I've only got one rocket left. And there it is, the monument. And a ton more coral to keep. Really happy I grabbed those extras. With the ring completed, I jumped to the outside of the monument to work on the outer pillars.
First side is all done. Here goes the second one being finished. And there's the third. All of the quartz pillars around the entire place are now in. And there goes the top coming together for the entire ring. One step remains, replacing all of the exposed blocks with glass, which is going to require another trip into the out. Out. Villager cave. I should still have plenty of emeralds in here. Yes, yes we do. Which we can take up to the librarians and trade the emeralds for glass blocks. You know, I think this will probably do it. From here, I could craft light blue dye to create light blue stained glass. From here, I just needed to go through the entire process of removing the walls and then replacing them with glass. I should probably craft up a little more white concrete powder and finish the base of these towers. Taking a look back at where we started today, this is already a massive transformation to the monument. But I can't believe I forgot to do this. We need to plant a field. How I made it this far into today's episode without planting a field, I don't know. I must have been lost at sea. So you should be sure to subscribe and see me take 200 plus day distractions from my planned project and make super coral stuff like the ocean monument. But with that, we now have the 31st field. Can I offer you a carrot in these trying times? Too bad. It's mine. Jumping right back into the madness today, I want to remove the monument, but first I need to stop the fishies from leaking out of the top of the guardian farm. So I'm fixing that with a white glass lid on top. Next, removing the entire ocean monument all the way down to the base level as it doesn't quite pass the vibe check for this transformation anymore. Which is a massive change for the base already. Now moving towards building the structure in the middle, I need some more coral to create more coral gardens as I go up. But of course, I also need greenery for the gardens here. So I'm bone mailing some azalea oak trees to silk touch all of the leaves with my hoe to gather them up. Finally, jumping back over to the ocean monument, I have a small thing I want to fix first. The corners of the bubble coral ring are pretty harsh, as well as it's supposed to be a circle and not have corners. So I'm fixing that, bringing it more in line with the ring. Which I have to say looks so much better. But before we go down any further, we need to go up. Which brings us up to here, creating a massive tower reaching up to the AFK point. But I am going to need a few new materials to make this happen. First up, stopping by the Mesa, as I need to grab a lot of terracotta. Which I want to dye into cyan terracotta. With all the sand and gravel I looted while tearing everything down, let's create some white concrete powder. And since I'm in here, grab the copper box. Before we do any concrete converting, I want to see... Yes, I do have andesite. Let's bring some of that. This is the kitchen sink build. Everything goes in. Grab a little bit of water and start pillaring up the concrete powder. We can start with three stacks for now. And back down we go. Mew. Nailed it. Coming back over again to the tree farm I built in the last episode. I'm really hoping. Warped wood? No. Warped wood? No. Oh, great. I can throw a little bit of bone meal in each of the sides and hope this works to recoup. This here should be plenty of warped wood, so we can turn that off. One final stop. Please, 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 please have some frog lights. Oh, yes. And with that, everything is here ready to go into the build. It's one of those times where I really just want to shut up and play Minecraft and place a bunch of blocks down. So we're going to do that right now with the first layer of the cake. Just kidding, me again, but from the future. Ooh. Okay, so this build has a lot of blocks to it. I think it's cool that it has a lot of blocks to it. So I placed a lot of blocks down here on the build to add in all of the blocks in place to create a first big circular Minecraft block of the, I don't even know what to say anymore. But it's looking very good and we can move up to the next layer where the shape is already in place. But I would like to add in some of our coral gardens that we've been using already. And I think that'll work. Next, filling all of this in with water buckets but so that we don't get guardians spawning on top of here, let's put on the slabs. We use the bubble coral on the outside, so up here I want to change it out for the tube coral. One section is complete, and I need to build three more of these to complete the entire ring. Moving to the next layer of the tower, I think adding in some diorite right along here and over here. We can create another archway where on this one I want to be slightly brighter than the cyan and basalt we have below where we can use in a little bit of the warp wart and then planks on top. Guess what? On the circle build, I'm building this around the entire circle again. Now to fill in the gaps here, I want to add in some bush. 
So I think we can do something maybe like this. And Azalea leaves. Before I can continue building this upwards, I need to jump down into the farm. As hopefully by now, yes, we have a ton of prismarine. Well, that's completely empty, but that's not. I'm gonna need a lot of prismarine bricks and prismarine itself for the next layers. And more sea lanterns. On top of the warp planks to the back of the archways here, I wanna add in some stripped warp logs. Probably about up to here. Oh, and we're above water level now, which means mobs can spawn, so let's put some torches on in front of these i want to continue this entire layer up here with quartz pillars with a little smooth quartz for the trim looks good but these are a little flat on the corners before we detail this face any further i want to try something out here if i extend a few calcite up polish diorite into a little sticky uppy bit and then i can use some diorite to almost connect this somehow like this to the wall we're over here i do want to have some extra details like we can have a prismarine brick here and then i want to use walls to bump this out just a touch sea lantern in the middle can we do this to the other side i think i like it second size now in place as well and i think that'll be a good way just to bump it out with the front figured out i moved around to the rest of this layer adding in the main walls with quartz pillars and stripped warp logs all of the walls are now in place on the walls so we just have to go around and add these extra sticky outy bits of course with our sticky uppy bits on top the very technical terms I'm really enjoying the divider we have down here on the lower level. So now that the upper level is completed too, to move into the upper, upper level, let's add in some dark prismarine on top. That helps out a lot down here. You know what the next layer needs? More arches in a circle. I know, it's new. The backdrop on the next layer, I'd like to use cyan wool, which brings me back home to the sheep farm. Or hopefully, yes, we have plenty. Now, I also need a lot more dark prismarine, so maybe I have some extra wither roses in here. No, but I have a barrel randomly full of flowering azalea leaves. That could be useful. Wither roses. Starting off the next layer here, we're gonna do this one mostly out of smooth quartz, and I want some three wide gaps, which is gonna leave two in the middle. Behind this is gonna add in all of the cyan wool. And for some extra detail, I want to around this entire higher layer here add the glow lichen quartz coming up stairs and then another line of quartz on top cutting off the top bit here with some diorite slabs and that's the whole layer i really like that glow lichen in there the glow lichen looks almost like a mosaic carved in the quartz that as you guessed it goes around the big old circle and then i'm adding in a little front triangle to the tower and i started on the first big main dome out of prismarine bricks we're all the way here above the water now i want to fill this entire thing with stone transitioning into the next section to be able to further break up the shape Time to add a little bit of purpose into this build, as I want to relocate the nether portal from over there to the monument itself, right in here. With a portal to the prismarine dimension, I get. Okay, now the portal goes back here. To the nether dimension! Flint and steel, there it is, yo! Oh. For the walls on this layer, I want to do sea lanterns at the bottom to get a little bit more of a glow, and then prismarine coming up. Which we can carry around to these sides here too, but I want to do something more fun over here. Incorporating a few iron trap doors, we can add a little extra detail. Quartz pillars like usual as the border, and then on top, we're gonna to bring in a little bit of quartz brick, which gives us this, and I think it's perfect. Now I just need to complete this going around the entire ring, you guessed it. That's looking pretty good for this layer in here, and I love how the prismarine changes colors. Now for the next bit, we have need a lot more materials. As iron trap doors are going on the top here, which creates a cool little lip, but now I need dark prismarine. But thankfully I grabbed the wither roses as I don't think that's quite enough. Ooh, it's spooky in here now. Grab the crystals. Craft dark prismarine. Grab crystals. Prismarine. That looks like just enough. Where we're building out yet another dome on top of the tower. I ain't done yet. We must go further, further into the sky. Except first I could use some more tube coral blocks. And much better. Just like this place is looking so much better. Oh, wow. That's cool to take a step back at it. Starting with a ring of calcite here, I then want to add in some diorite walls to just give it a little bit of extra thickness. We can go two wide on the ends, and then here in the corners, we can have a one wide little entrance and trap doors. Since the nether portal is super bright down below, I thought we'd bring back into the bluey vibes and bring in frog lights behind. As we work on stacking those up with the calcite here, I want to add in some warp trap doors just to get a little extra color. 
Trying to make the arch a little bit taller. We can come up one, two, three, and then a fourth. And this is where I want to add in our stairs. Which means the frog lights come all the way to there. With this, the beacon of whipping door is lit. Since we did all the walls at the bottom, I'm thinking I can add a few more of our walls here at the top. Just out of our prismarine this time. Far above sea level, I can bring water back into the build without spawning guardians, which means it's time to bring back a living core roof into the build. A little bit lower than the initial AFK point, but I think I'll be able to AFK down here pretty safely and not really spawning anything below so that i can actually fly in here i'm gonna use a combination of walls and chains which thankfully are pretty easy to fit between from up here though i do want to work into a little bit of copper for our final roof sticking into the sky and there we go standing tall in the sky and i can finally remove the little glass platform this way we're more attached into the minecraft world instead of just sitting on a random little weird box in the sky this feels amazing to have finished the main structure of the build and fully transform the guardian temple into my own vision before we move on there's one more step i need to do that requires me to come over here getting the coordinates for the portal i can tear down the old portal dividing both of those coordinate numbers by eight i can recreate the portal over here and it should hopefully link up where yes yes it does running back home to grab some cobblestone it's time to dig down as i'm cutting out yet another ring in the prismarine platform for the monument to actually sit on as right now slime spawns are completely ruining the farm with the circle math finished i completed the ring going all the way around the building removing the entire outer box the prismarine and cobblestone kind of weirdly work together as if the stuff is like leaking out of the farm jumping behind the monument i set up the beacon again to tear down the landscape even further which naturally as you might have guessed, I started mining and brought the entire section down a few levels. Completely level on the back half now, and somehow I have more items than I started with today. There's so many things over here. We'll just throw the cobble on the ground. As next up in front of the polished diorite we have here, I want to start with some stone bricks and bring stone all the way down. To add a little extra flair to this entire build, we're going to add prismarine to the entire bottom layer of the trench. Somehow I thought I was going to have leftover prismarine, but that's it. And this guy is taunting me. Look at him. Look at that stupid little face. Don't you turn away from me. Oh no, even the children. Oh no, even killed the children. Oh no. You saw nothing. Quickly running down into the guardian farm to grab even more shards to craft even more prismarine. And back to the fun task of placing all the blocks right back down. And filling it all in. Oh, dang it. And I need to craft even more. One more time. Now it's done. Quick double check all the way around and there we go. From here, I just need to cover everything with water. And there we go, reaching the water on the far side, which means it should all fill itself in. Completely slime proof and it looks pretty good. Minus the, uh, ugh. Before we worry about that though, I've got to fix the picks. A quick trip out to the end dimension. We can take a flight to the end render. Oh, hello experience. Much, much better. Great, back to work. Taking a look at where we started today. This has turned into a massive transformation for the Ocean Monument, and I absolutely love it. Now, ignoring the Shulker Monster out front, we need to come inside as well. The interior is, uh non-existent let's get to work fixing that by first adding in a floor here out of some warped planks all the way to the end where unfortunately i think i need to move the drop shoot and up shoot over a block next adding in some pillars around the entire outside we can bring in bricks for some extra detail and extend the pillar up even further With the pillars in place, I want to turn this into some really cool archways so we can bring in a stair, full block, and then slabs to go across. Full block and back down to stair. Then along the edge, I recently learned this tip from my buddy Mythical Sausage. I can waterlog the mangrove root and place the coral on top of it and it'll stay alive. Adding in another little coral shelf here in the back. And then I think we can add in a few more trapdoors up here where I want to break it up just a touch and introduce a lot of chains along here. But I added greenery back there, so I think a little more greenery in here could work out well. And that should do it for the entire entry hall. Now, I just need a better way down like a block back to go down where I might as well bring it all the way down to the bottom chest level and nibble G nailed it. Nope. Nope. Didn't nail that. It's not perfect, but at least I can swim up for now. Grabbing a little bit more kelp and this should fix the problem. Just kidding. 
I didn't get enough kelp. And there we go. All the way up. And now the shulker mess is even gone. Time to go home. Just uh, don't look in front of the starter house again. It's fine. You saw nothing? Yep. This was definitely worth it. Now when I sit in my little box, I have a very nice view. I've taken on the challenge to build a massive medieval city in hardcore Minecraft. Today we're doubling the size of what I've built already. Heading down to the river, I'm building an entire industrial district to show where the city gets its building materials. Now like all foot builds, this is going to start with a lot of digging. And I'm going to need a beacon to make that happen. With that done, I want to first expand the main river to allow for larger boats to move through. Wait a second here. How did I miss that waterfall up here? That That is beautiful. Look at that thing. Okay, uh, small distraction. Small distraction time. I think this is going to work as a really cool canal coming through the city to divide up the houses and create even more space other than just buildings in here. That should work for digging out the entire canal coming all the way up to the mountain. But I do want to turn this into like a small lake in here so it doesn't, you know, go into the caves. This time I was nice and let the animals out instead of burying them underneath the landscape. So I think that's a pretty good win. From here, the water is going to cascade down the mountain to reach the main river, where I'm working on placing in a few retaining walls so that I can have the city raised up a little bit above the water's edge. I do like the idea of having another waterfall right here just before it reaches the main river, but maybe instead of being like eight blocks tall, we just go to here. If I do this correctly, I might be able to even slowly drop it down to meet the water's edge. You know what? That's uh, that's close enough. That, that'll be fine right here. Grabbing a little bit more dirt and we'd expand the little riverbed area. Oh, hi, uh, hi, hi there, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe I should light up all of this because I am creating a lot of mob spaces. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. It's fine. Everything's fine. You know what? That's a future foot problem. Back to the project at hand as it's already a distraction. Plus, if the mobs are spawning down there, they're less likely to spawn inside the city, which is a win. Now I just need to send the water all the way down and this should be pretty perfect. We've got a lot more terraforming to do, but I'm really happy with this so far. This is already a FWIP certified video. We've cleared out a bunch of terrain and done a random little side project. But now let's get back to the industrial district. To make this a real industrial district, I want a system that's gonna convert dirt into mud. If you didn't know, you can place a block of dirt down, get a water bottle, and turn it into mud. This is a micro farm by Il Mango that doesn't require too many materials, so I quickly got them all together. I think I want to build this a bit into the hill here so it's easy to hide a structure around. Before we can test it out, I need two more things. First being a ton of glass bottles. A little bit more than that. Quick trip down into the villager cave. Ow. I can grab some emeralds in here to run up to the next level and visit all of my librarians. Glass, please. Got a few extras here, but that should do it. With these, I can fill the dispenser in the back and the hopper back here. The next item is a little bit more difficult to get. This is going to require a trip over to the monolith to grab a little bit of gunpowder, which I can use to craft TNT. As I need a new netherite shovel. Taking a quick trip, hopefully down into the nether, we can just start a new netherite tunnel off of the edge of the quarry. With that, it's time to see how much ancient debris I can get with two stacks of TNT. Oh, how did I miss one all the way out here? I will take that. Not the luckiest run, but we did get 11 more ancient debris, which is more than I needed. Excuse you, my tunnel, but it's time to get on out of here. Headed over to the netherite forge. We can smelt all of this stuff down and I already had a ton extra. Huh? Oh well, now I just have even more. To share how stupidly OP toolsmith villagers are, we can bring our emeralds over here and get a brand new diamond shovel, a mending book, and unbreaking three. I need a grindstone where the only one I can find is up here. To get rid of the efficiency on the shovel, upgrade this to a netherite shovel and throw our mending and unbreaking three on it. Finally, we're ready to test this out. Dirt goes in the offhand, chest piece on just to be safe. If I place this here and then break it a few times, we get mud and there we go. Now it seems to be working pretty well. Okay, maybe not totally perfect, but 
not half bad. Okay, so that wasn't working too well. So I made a regular diamond shovel now this time. Oh, I broke the glass. But that seems to be working much better now. At least a little bit better. It's fine. You can go up there. Right, with this machine sorted, it's time to hide the structure in the first building in the industrial district. I'm gonna need a floor level for the building to sit on. So let's get some coarse dirt, maybe a little more. Some packed mud and packed mud bricks. And since we're here, some polished andesite slabs and stone brick slabs. I'm gonna completely texture this wall here soon, but for now, let's just throw a little topper on. Now from here, I'd actually like the road to be right underneath with coarse dirt to border. And then we can work our way in with a little bit of our packed mud. That'll hopefully look like some tire tracks or just area where people are moving more consistently. There we go. This is starting to get the vibe that I'm going for in the road over here. We're going to have a second layer for the street to be coming all the way up here behind the building, but we can throw this guy in a little later. Hey, would you look at that? Day 3,400. Woo! Nope, nope, nope. Not in the ground. Area is prepped for building, and now I need blocks to build the dang thing, which is going to require a ton of different materials. So I raided my storage room for as much as I could get my hands on before needing to run out in the world and gather some more blocks. I've got nearly everything ready to go in these boxes, except some hanging roots, which I can get right here. And this should be more than enough. I've got to convert all of this light gray concrete powder to light gray concrete, which I can do super quickly right here in the little pot. Now the next one, which I think is gonna be a theme in today's episode, I need a lot of cobble deep slate. Each region I build in the city, I want to theme off of a certain colored roof. And I thought darker colors like deep slate and blackstone could be great here. All of this cobble deep slate and zero diamonds, but they are useless, so it's fine. Time to get building. Now this is everything I need. I think I wanna divide this up into two different parts with dripstone and spruce for the base over here. Some more dripstone on this side, wrapping all the way back. And then from here, I'm thinking just some jungle, working up into some mud and mud bricks to be darker. That's looking pretty good. Then here on the inside, I wanna make a giant door. Starting with a little something like this, and then we can bring in some trap doors in the middle as a divider and some giant door handles and flip those back closed. Moving back to the left building, I'm trying to make this section of the city look very, very dirty and grimy. So I went with a ton of different gray blocks to pull off this look. We'll throw the roof on here shortly, but first I want to build a small roof in the form of an awning using some quartz and diorite. Just trust me on this. It should look pretty good in the end. I, I hope. I, I hope. Jumping over to the far side of the build though, I want to extend out an awning. And by awning, I mean balcony. We can carry some spruce up on the corners right here. And then for a pop of color, I'm thinking acacia trap doors for the railing itself. Before we bring a covering on the balcony, I should probably build the walls on the rest of the actual building. But for this, I want to work from the light gray terracotta into white terracotta, leaving space for plenty of windows where I think for the first time ever, I want to make a two by two window with big old glass along the back. From the white terracotta, we can move into a little bit of birch and then stripped birch going all the way up. And now it's time to put the dark prismarine balcony cover on. And then I moved on to building out the roofs, one out of cobble deep slate and the other out of deep slate tiles. With that out of the way, I wanna add in the chimney campfires. Soul campfire with a brick wall on top and spruce trap doors going around. This is gonna really help the place feel a lot more alive as it just adds a subtle amount of movement, which is making this build look really, really cool. Except we can see through it. For this open space on the back, I thought we could use another spruce section to add a door to an upper street level. And for some simple street details, a cart carrying mud on the lower level. Where this is really starting to feel good, minus the shulker monster, but I need to keep in adding more of the workman's quarters industrial vibe. And I'm in the water. Which did give me an idea for texturing the retaining wall with a ton of grime built into it, so I just decided to run with it and see what I could do. And I gotta say, this is looking really cool for just one building and a wall. Now seems like a perfect time to plant a field. And to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, I've now survived just over 3,400 days in hardcore Minecraft, and I've loved every minute of it, but I am nearly at 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube, so please subscribe to help me reach that milestone as we jump down into the valley under the first castle in this world to plant a new carrot field. Which I'll be honest, the more time I spend down here, the more time I wanna come back and improve the area a bit further. But that will have to come later, as all of the mud I have is fantastic. 
fantastic, but the item I really want is packed mud, which is where my LA powered wheat farm out is going to come in handy today. Look at all that wheat and it's so full so full i'm going to need to craft down a ton of planks into chests to make a bunch of hoppers on top of that i want to bring the wheat all the way up here to the surface level and build a storage barn around it so it's a lot more accessible than flying down into the cave this should be enough storage to last us a good while and then for any overflow we might have i think i can throw a hopper in here composter on top of it with another hopper and this can kind of just snake its way along for now we can just surround this with a bunch of mangrove planks along the back then from here i want a pipe that's going to be coming all the way in a quick test here is if we put some ice inside and break it down the water should flow to there perfect quickly running inside the cave over to where we have our setup with the LA farm we can set up a little system inside of here to dispense all of the wheat that we already have into a water stream and bring it up to the surface I'll add that last redstone when it's ready to go otherwise we're gonna lose a lot of the wheat from here we just need to create a water track that's gonna carry the stuff all the way over I forgot to break the ice water column is nearly ready to go i just need to throw some kelp in so it becomes full blocks getting rid of the last bit of kelp and we shoot back up with one final step here adding in the redstone dust and there goes the wheat nope the wheat stopped why'd you stop wheat there goes the wheat which is all now starting to arrive at the top meaning the system is complete next up we should probably build something around this right trying to keep the structure a little on the smaller side we can make it about this far in for the base let's use some granite and mix in a bunch of bricks a few spruce fences as some supports and we can transition into the next layer here which is also going to be where our roof starts for the inside i want to throw in mushroom stem and a little window from there i filled out the trim on the front of the roof for the front of the build i want to do something a little different and have two large doorways to get inside using spruce wood as a trim and for a fun element to divide from the roof let's add in some composters make sure it stays mob safe on the inside we can also add in some spruce doors and trap doors with the front sorted, I moved around to add in the walls and roof on the main barn structure. But you know me, I can't just have a single shape for a build over here, so I want to build up a small grain silo attached to the right side. This is looking really good here, but this grass has got to go. But before we get to that, uh, the inside is even worse. So I think we can bring in some oak slabs right along here on both sides, and then just bring it up by a slab in the middle with the little lamp. Next up, we really got to replace this grass floor, and I'm thinking just coarse dirt itself can do the trick and yes i will go all the way back that alone helped a lot i just need to get my doors back on okay in the time i built this entire thing the wheat is still flowing in from the farm down below i decided to hang around for a bit longer add in a few more details for ourselves and the inside is a little bit more decorated and now all of the wheat is moved over check this out we've got over four double chests of wheat now this wasn't just some side project no 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 this is extremely important as a main goal i have in this world is to connect everything with a road the wheat field is already on the road network that comes all the way down here into the quarry which itself leads into the side city gate so if i grab a little bit of cobblestone and some slabs i now have the ability to connect my auto wheat farm to my auto mud farm with a brand new road this curve right in here should work out for us and then i can use a bridge to transition over into the industrial district we're not focusing on this section today flip we're not focusing on it just focus on getting in the road and then go to the industrial district stay on task you can do it one wide is a wee bit small for carts to travel along so i expanded it by three blocks on both sides now i just need to replace most of the cobblestone to add in different blocks because mass cobblestone looks very 2013. from here i want a bridge going all the way across to the other side and i think some cobble deep slate can work out as a great transition material probably all the way over here this seems wide enough to get some carts through using some bricks for pillars on the four corners top with a little bit of polished granite now for the not so subtle flex on the outside let's use some beacons to actually light this up that's a good little pop right that's that's what it would be now to add in a few more details to the front of this guy we can start with an archway out of polished granite to make it a little bit more reinforced and then to give it a little bit of depth maybe incorporating a few mud stairs more polished granite worked into the top and on these flatter sections just a few soul lanterns and i think that's pretty good which means i just need to repeat it around to the backside. this is starting to look really good for a little bridge but uh unfortunately it can't be water under the bridge <laughs> get it get it because it's water on a bridge 
Uh, this looks really bad in here. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I meant to say is it looks really bad and I want to spend a little bit of time fixing it up because it's very ugly on the inside. We can get rid of the little land sticking out here. So it feels like some more water is moving underneath and it is a little bit more substantial. Quickly taking some spruce logs and crafting spruce trap doors. We can make a really subtle archway down here with some spruce slabs on the sides. And then we just add in our trap doors all the way across it in the middle, which looks pretty good. And I'm why did that scare me so much okay so now that we've got the bridge in place i need to think about the industrial district buildings which will help guide me on where i need to build the roads with a few residential buildings and shops on the lower level some storage warehouses down by the docks and moving them up into the mountain will get us some brick production with a bunch of kilns and workstations but back to the roads for now where we're gonna bring in a few temporary blocks and try and work our way down here to the dock front i've already made the road for along this way it's actually gonna go down to a wooden dock level closer to the water the main line is gonna run back along here where it's gonna go up a little bit before coming down this direction and boy oh boy i got a lot of terraforming to do I'm going to fill this in behind the second retaining wall just so I don't have to later. For now, the main road in the residential area is ready to go. And now back to these gross hills I need to figure out. I think we can bring in a retaining wall right back here, which can work its way over something like this. But I do need to reserve enough space on the top for the road to go through to connect into the next building platform. And I don't want this to be flat at all, so we can start slowly sloping it downwards to connect it over there. I spent a lot of time mumbling to myself as I start working out the inner details of this thing and just breaking blocks, replacing them and working through the whole process of just trial and error. There's no right way to do this thing. I'm trying to figure out ways to create more functional working space that isn't just about raising up some buildings and adding some roofs over it. So down here next to the mud farm, I'm thinking we just create a flatter raised section. So it's not at ground level that we can do a few little like workshops, a little work yard, I don't know, things. Stuff that looks like somebody works and lives in here, you know, that's, that's, that's the vibe a vibe that's gonna be need to cl be cleaned up a lot outside of that i do have a lot more of the pathways worked out here which is starting to look really good where i'm trying to create more of blobs of textures instead of just randomizing them and i think it's giving the result that i was really hoping for adding the little retaining wall in back here and we've got another road leading up here it's starting to turn into one of those builds that i feel like i'm doing more for me than for making a fun video out of it with a few finer details added in it's time to move back into making buildings but i think this just looks really neat jumping up to the one place that i haven't managed to actually build a road to let's work on a new redstone farm i need a machine that's going to convert dirt to mud again i didn't have a single piece of pointed dripstone at my home to show an example of what i wanted to share but nearly 4,000 blocks away from spawn inside of this mesa. There should be a dripstone cave somewhere. Yes, perfect. There it is. Just need a few of these guys. This should be plenty. And now if we take a piece of mud and put a pointed dripstone underneath it, eventually this will dry into clay. Flying back home and my elytra is nearly dead and so is my shovel. So time for a quick stop at the Wither Skeleton Farm. <laughs> Much better. And 42 free skulls to uh, walls. Look where you're flying in the nether flip. Look where you're flying. But I got 42 more wither skull skulls. Now for this farm, I'm going to need to get a bunch of pointed dripstone blocks. And by that, I mean the very pointy square block that is a cube. I guess cubes have sharp corners so they are kind of pointy outside of that i also need some pistons redstone torches two craft repeaters dispensers and some trap doors starting by creating a bit of a piston pushing machine over here redstone torch underneath and a piston right there we can set a repeater over here with a redstone dust that can come around and now anytime i place a block here that pushes it perfect aesthetics wise we do that we'll need a dispenser to be able to turn this into some mud copying the machine that i already built before over in that building Swoop it down to grab a little bit of water. We can fill that in back here. I need one more. Ignore the missing hearts. My landing was extremely graceful. Now to build our drying rack. This will be the max piston pushing limit right there so we can hook in all of our new pistons. Another little torch. And create a system that loops all the... 
way back around here. Or we're supposed to. I'm being a redstone professional. Leave me alone. Professional. To turn this into a drying rack, we need to fill this entire lower section here with our dripstone blocks. Where I think we're going to push it out 12 blocks. Otherwise, this factory building is going to be massive. Hooking up a little bit of a light gray glazed terracotta back here. That should stop the pistons from being able to push it any farther. Or no. No, that, that won't. That won't work at all, actually. That's that's a dumb idea. Obsidian will work, though. And this can be a little decoration. Now, for a little test here, this should push all the way over. And perfect. Scuba flip mode. I just need to place in pointed dripstone underneath all of these blocks. One final step. I need a lot more emeralds. To buy a ton of glass. Again. Final step, we just got to load up a bunch of water bottles here and drop them in the system. The system seems to hold about a stack and a half of dirt right now, which isn't half bad for some free clay when I need it. And a good amount is already converted and it just finished filling in. Enough of this redstone stuff. Time to hide it all behind a nice building. But creepers keep on creeping out of this cave, so it's time to seal it in. I also outlined what I think we can do for the shape of the building on this inner line of dirt. Then if I need to remove all the dripstone down here, it'd be nice to have a bit of a working space. But now blocks to actually build this thing. First, a bunch of deep slate materials for the roofs. A quick trip into the nether. Grab some blackstone from the piglins. I'm going to need a lot of spruce wood and oh no. Okay, new plant somewhere in here. Saplings. So many saplings. This is all going to be covered up eventually, so we can just put them down here and not have to worry about the pods all spreading everywhere. I'll get everything else together and hopefully these will all be grown up. That should be plenty. Quick stop over at the wheat storage to get a few stacks where I can grab the mud that I did earlier and turn it into packed mud. A little diorite to relate back to the other side of the city. Two more quick stops. The first being digging into the tree to get a little more glow like it. Next to the librarians to buy lamps. And none of my trees have grown. Oh well, good thing I have a wither skelly farm. Please? 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 There we go. The final, 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 final step here just requires a lot of spruce as always. Right into the build though, I want a mangrove section over here with some planks on the bottom. Moving into some strip mangrove log, moving up. And we can do some fun windows out of yellow and orange stained glass. Not everything in the industrial area is dead, so let's do a few leaves down below and some trapdoors for shutters. Working my way back up to the top though, we can grab ourselves some copper and use this to create the roof. This isn't the full height of the build, so the main structure is going to be coming up with some weathered stones. For a front face, then along the side here, I thought we could bring in some spruce planks and cut open some holes for windows. Like this. For the main building roof itself, I want to bring in some deep slate, which will stretch its way all across here. To the next layer though, I am apparently addicted to windows. So let's put even more in. But these are out of glass instead of trap doors again, so it's different. To make it different from the roof, let's try some polished blackstone. Before we throw in the mini roof, the main roof line is gonna be probably out to here. Flattening out just a touch at the top. And here we can just pop it up a touch with our blackstone. And there goes the entire front of the roof, which is looking interesting now. Interesting is good, right? I think so. We'll run with it for now. Going on with the theme of smaller buildings, adding up to a larger factory building, I'm breaking away from the stone structure with some extra visual interest. Next, I want to add in a new smaller building over to the side to finish hiding the clay farm itself with a simple black stone roof on top, where I think this is actually looking really good so far with just one more corner to fill in. And for that, I want to add in a large bell tower in here to allow for the factory to ring in the workday. Then I decided to copy over the bell tower design from the original city bell towers that already, I had already built to complete it. And now this is starting to look really, really good. Except for the fact that, you know, well, it's still floating over here, but I'm thinking eventually we'll have a stone wall just coming down. Just coming down to ground level in here, but I want to get the ground situated before we figure out how steep that needs to be. I want to continue focusing on the upper industrial area first, and I know I've already built the mud farm, but it's it's not 100% working. I can't figure it out. So I ran back over to the swamp to uh, get a lot more mud to bring back home. This should do it on the mud for now. I even found a wandering trader who had mud, chests, and packed mud. Little micro blocks. These are going to be so perfect. He's going to stay in the boat in case I want his other stuff. Next, another quick stop back over at the wheat farm to grab even more wheat. 
for, of course, more packed mud. This place up here is gonna be containing a bunch of kilns for brick making and whatever else they need to be producing up here, cooking down, all that good stuff. So I think a small little retaining wall or safety wall right here to block out people from being able to get inside is gonna be a good idea. Grab some coarse dirt. And I think right here we can start the actual floor level as I don't think grass is really gonna fit it since, you know, it's kind of a dirty area. And carts are gonna be moving all over the place so we can start incorporating a lot of our brick or well mud brick pathways i've been building for like six hours today so if my brain is a mush uh that's why here's a small path that's going to connect ourselves back up into the factory from where we're going to have our new entrance that i think will be at about this level going all the way across we start working the slabs down instead of the previous stone line it can be a little bit more gradual and then we work our way up into the mountain sticking with the three high and then we go into our polished granite slabs on top i just want to work it all the way up okay maybe a little bit more up here since it's kind of steep regular dirt on the outside and this should clean it up a good amount for now i'll just bring the road all the way down to this layer and then we'll figure out how to swoop it along back here down to there But maybe since I'm thinking about it right now, over here we can have a flatter section that can be for some carts that are waiting to go in to be loaded. And this should work for now, just to get the idea in. As I slowly build yet another mob spawner into the terrain. Now we can move in. Nope, nope, gotta fix it. Oh no, I'm out of grass. I can't be distracted anymore. Okay, inside we go. Back inside, I'm building a circular road going around to create a loop for carts and to leave some space for some more structures, which is where the first kiln is gonna come in. And I think we can start with a base right like this, working into a little entrance right in here to be able to put bricks in and out, adding a little front entrance in here. This thing's inspired by one of my friends, Vigo Man, so I did wanna give him a shout out on that. But bringing a little bit of fantasy technology elements like what we got in the dwarves. We have some sort of like an exhaust system here as we're building the kiln up. But quickly coming inside for the kiln itself, I wanted to bring in a bunch of details, like some bricks that are cooking down in here and i thought a fun thing to add would be like some nope out out burning toast rock hopper is something like in the process of smelting and just pile up a few more bricks and slabs around which from the outside looks like a few things are cooking in here hidden in the smoke but i need to stack this thing up much further into the sky all the way up here now i do want the smoke to go all the way up so shift clicking hay bale into the composters that should give a good amount all the way up to here which we can top with a few walls and slabs on top but what will be perfect is adding four more of them around here down in the dwarven cave now i need to pick up a few more campfires which we can get out as a quick trip over to the fisherman that should do a full stack i'm gonna need a lot more copper for this one so let's craft down a little bit of raw copper throw it into the super smelter and get to work on de-aging this copper all the way down to stage two. First one's already finished up i don't quite have enough aged copper here so i'm gonna create my own mini david strolling down the mountainside the rest I already had, thankfully, so I flew around building up the other four brick kilns for this upper section. Except I am still missing a few bits of copper. But while those finish aging down, I want to build some covered work areas to stay out of the sun. I want to use some spruce wood on the outdoor workstations as I cover and working in a few oak trap doors to allow for smoke or heat to not get trapped in the top. We'll detail out everything later on, but first I want to get the structures in place with the first storage shed coming in here out of birch diorite and some white concrete with a few spruce elements on the front then working in some composters and dark oak on for the roof jumping to the back i did build out a second storage building for some fuel which i'm using blocks of coal and blackstone to build a huge pile of coal inside this is a work zone after all so i think we'll need to add in a ton of carts transporting materials around the entire zone but with all those beginning elements done i wanted to create a cooling area for all of the bricks that are coming out of the kilns and yes i i did add even more carts to the brickworks with some more details added in this is really starting to look completed and i love it so very much but it's going to be time to move down the hill and focus on the rest of the district but first we have pots and little vases and flower pots if only we had the 1.20 flower pots that'd be really cool in here but you know it's fine i'll just wait for a little bit longer we've got a well over here and the factory building itself still is absolutely disgusting on the inside but it has clay and i just think that's neat now for the moment you've all been begging for it's time to build a storage room for dirt just just types of dirt and other blocks, I guess, like mud, 
gravel maybe sand first step though we need a ton of oak planks to craft chests for this i want to store dirt grass horse dirt rooted dirt but i have none gravel sand packed mud mud and muddy roots let's start by digging this back a little bit into the hill so we can hide it in the mountainside first up before we put in all of our chests let's bring in a little spruce along the back edge i'm thinking we go four tall and double chests all the way across i want to put some markers along the front of this or what items are going to be stored but i need to make sure that the grass doesn't grow over so this needs to be packed mud dark oak pillars on the side and then i laid out all of the blocks i want to sort inside of these chests with a little copper in front to separate it now instead of grass blocks i did put moss in here otherwise it's going to grow over my dirt and i like my dirt we're just going to borrow this rooted dirt to finish the storage nobody's going to know much better i had these little archways in front and i think it's a good decoration we can still easily get all of the chests which is fantastic and then up here i want to bring in a little bit of strip mangrove moving all the way across then we can extend out a few of these little guys doesn't line up perfectly but maybe we just cover this out to here and connect these pillars into the ground that we can use as some big entry doorways to get into this storage warehouse here above the chest so we can't see the top let's just fill this in with regular slabs which really closes it all in now we're gonna finally head back over to the starter house and look at all of this stuff that's terracotta that doesn't go there i forgot a spot for clay oh no maybe we only need one spot for gravel that should be fine i also forgot puzzle but that's in here now you don't have to leave the angry comments i know i found it unless i forgot something else then leave the angry comments that's fine Look how many shulkers we freed up now. These are all empty. We've already done so much resource gathering today. So look as the building magically appears in front of you. I definitely didn't spend the last two hours getting materials together after I had already spent an hour moving materials into the storage room itself. Wow, would you look at that? We got a new building over here. Oh my gosh. Need to get a floor down there with a roadway, but maybe first we just get a few glow berries. Definitely one over here to help keep mobs away. And glow lichen perfectly glowing during the night now and now with the addition of actually having a road in here this is going to be accessible and much better just ignore the floating blocks that is a future flip problem so you've heard of first warehouse but have you heard of second warehouse on the lower level here i think it's about time we can add in another one industrial places need a lot of storage for stuff right it's yeah makes sense i think i don't know but as always i need more spruce logs because i'm already down to 14. <laughs> and much better i'm sure i'm gonna need more so let's put some of our saplings right back down over at the build now i want to start with some large archways stretching across to create a more open air warehouse running some spruce stairs all the way across the front here and i can start inching my way up to the max height which i think about here is gonna do it and then slabs across the middle take our way back into the hill a touch let's bring in some polished granite for a base and clear the rest of this out top of the polished granite i want to bring in a few bricks and some regular granite to look a little bit more age bit like that up to the storage room grabbing a tiny bit of sand to contrast all of our bricks i wanted to bring a little bit of this in just for that extra pop of color and we can bend the stairs coming back down the other side blend it a little bit better let's use some trap doors hello llamas would you like to work in the industrial district move things around yeah i know you would okay just come with me don't kill each other there has to be a fence down here somewhere please anywhere where's our fence have fun ow have fun have fun until you calm down at least the warehouse is looking pretty good so far really guys really you're shooting across the river to try and hit me come on now that's that's a little sad that's a little desperate since the roof is going to be working into the landscape here we can actually remove these and bring in a little bit of stone so we can build a bit of a barrier for carts to not really fall on top of the roof this should work and then we can just fill in the backside with some coarse dirt to stick on theme for the roof itself let's grab some cobble deep slate and make deep slate tile stairs sticking on theme i'm adding in a deep slate tile roof with some windows to break up the shape now for very important lore reasons the uh the warehouse is just waiting for goods to come in not that i just don't want to do the interior right now it's very important that the warehouse remains empty for the foreseeable future until i can find a reason to do it before we jump up the hill again i'm completing the little workstation here before i uh forget about it again as a small blacksmith forge for making tools and randomly a little chicken coop over here where i need to find some chickens let's grab a few seeds and hope something's still alive over here nope that's a pig 
that that's a pig a chicken no don't run with oh i should probably put this sword away okay now follow me i'm so far away egg egg maybe that could be our second chicken all right buddy it is the middle of the night but we gotta make it home we're so close you stay here i gotta take out of a few problems okay come here now chicken buddy buddy come on get across the river i have spent way too long getting you over here please no creepers okay you get it nope 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 this way just check it i hate mobs get in here do you get a child no i kind of forgot that i actually have you know a chicken farm over here for eggs and that's the amount it's produced in 3500 days in a world okay maybe i actually need a new chicken farm <gasps> he's in the coop look at him he's cute yay have a child maybe maybe have a child you got a child! Looking back at where I started today, it's crazy to think I already have a mud farm, a clay farm built into a huge brickworks up the mountain, and two warehouses along the docks that will store all of my double dirt. Oh, I guess I never finished the road here. Hmm. Oops. We'll fix that up real quick like nobody noticed. I know it's an industrial area, but it doesn't mean we can't have a few trees. Gotta offset that pollution, you know? Where did my chickens go? You're i see you down there sir the llamas don't seem to be attacking me anymore that's good where's the other chicken you know what you can work the blacksmith now just don't leave okay or don't don't die in the magma speaking of animals that are just so easy to work with up here i need to add in another building as we have the brickworks and a bunch of carts to move around i thought we could throw in a small stables building with three stalls three stalls should be good bring a little bit of mangrove in here i wanted to go with something rather simple up here so i'm just adding in a few random details throughout to make it all work and just give it a little pop of color here with the mangrove but otherwise blending into the environment pretty well with our spruce There we go, a little different, but I like it. Let's go find some royal steeds. I really wanna make a giant horse stables pasture somewhere in the world, but for now, let's just get a few saddles and see who's on top of the mountain, because for some reason, they're always up here. Ah, mountain horse, I need you. First horse is secured, number two. And there goes number three. Okay, I grabbed a fourth horse, which I wanna hook in right here, so he's hanging out by the cart. And hopefully that lead doesn't break. Everything I can think of for the brickworks is pretty much ready to go, except we probably need some people to work it and they need homes am i really just making my own city builder game in minecraft over here what's wrong with me well one thing is uh i'm nearly out of rockets and uh my electric's almost broken first up quick stop at the sugarcane farm to make a little bit of paper find my way down the mountain over to the monolith where i am running out of gunpowder we'll have to chill at the gas farm a little later on but for now i at least have rockets we could tackle two stones with one bird here on the next step by grabbing some emeralds to trade with the stonemasons as i'm gonna need a lot of bricks for these next builds and there we go the wings are all better and we got some bricks i still want to give each building inside of the city a purpose outside of just residential so over here i think we can theme this after being a smithy so along the street right here there'll be a little entrance to get inside of like a smith workshop on the base but to get up to the second floor where we'll have the residential section i want to bring in a little dark oak slab walkway and then for a small railing it's gonna be a little wonk but but oak trap doors will be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. Totally fine. Yeah. Hey, at least he gets to walk up it. And we can put a door right here. As a bit of a division, though, moving up, the base is going to be out of brick. And then from there, I want to move into more terracotta, jungle planks, and strip jungle logs. To represent this being a smithy, we can extend a little street sign out here and just slap an anvil on. For the doorway into the workshop, we want to do something a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking spruce trap doors, dark oak at the base, and we just make a really, really tall, big dark oak door. Big door. Back into the granite base over here we can work in a little bit of dripstone itself and continue on with this new theme of texture variation that i'm doing that is trying to be more intentional about where things are going in i don't know it's fancy words for uh, trying to make shading i guess that's looking pretty good for the base over here to transition into the terracotta i don't want it just to be bland and boring so let's work in a bit of a balcony across here 
this will actually work out pretty well. As a break point to move into the next layer, I want to work in a small covering on the balcony here and a little soul lantern for light. You know what though? I've got a bit of an idea that we can do here in the balcony. Let's take some scaffolding and grab some flower pots and they can have a little flower garden on their balcony. Quick trip over to the flower village to grab a few. Azure bluets, white tulips, and pink tulips should do. For something a little like this should work. With that done, I move forward on finishing off the walls to the buildings and added in a large chimney on the back for some smithy vibes. For a little extra detail here, I staggered out the campfires to reduce the smoke, so there's a little bit more variation. And we can throw some glass in here for the window, going with the light gray so it's a little bit more opaque. But from there, it's roofing time. Wandering traders confuse me so much. They just appear at the weirdest times. But the building is now done and it's looking really good. Moving right along to the next buildings where you think in all of these shulkers, I'd have what I need. No, no, don't be silly. Of course, none of it's here. Raided my way through the storage room and guess what? We have even more shulkers. And just like that, you can watch as a massive building appears before your very eyes inside of the city industrial district with this Minecraft YouTuber magic of off-camera material collecting because I didn't want to put in any more clips of me opening chests to find stuff because we've done that so much already today. But we can hide in a nice little field over here in the corner for a little city garden carrot patch. People got to eat, so I think these are going to be some perfect little decoration options to fill in some spaces. Because shulker boxes, they're a vibe, but they're not the vibe I want. Now, I'm not too sure what I want to do with the back quite yet, so I've left it blank for now. But hey, you know, at least it has a wall. For one final detail in here before we really get into the street life, I wanted to bring in another market stall. Using a little bit of my Mossy cobblestone, diorite slabs, and smooth quartz slabs. And something like that should work out. But what do I put in here? Let alone put over there. Would you look at that? We're at day 3,503. We've been doing this for well over 170 days. Okay, let's build a meat. I can't even word. Okay, let's build a dock. Yeah. I want to grab a ton of oak logs for this. Then taking spruce logs, we can craft into planks for a bunch of slabs, a few trap doors, and stairs. But more slabs. So many slabs. I want to start with designing a really simple docks down here along the water. That's going to be split on two different levels for larger vessels to dock at the higher dock for docking just ignore the fact that this river literally goes nowhere that that's a future foot problem but current foot needs to focus on placing in spruce slabs for the entire lower dock and that is starting to look much much better as an additional add i want to add a few small staircases for people to get up and down where we can do some trap doors and spruce fences as a form of a support take it the same idea i built the second dock and added in some ladders to get out of the water if i do fall in which will definitely be used a lot in the future as uh, again we're coming over to the wheat farm to grab even more wheat over to the dirt storage building to grab some mud and craft ourselves packed mud but then we can start clearing this land out over here and figure out some way we can curve a road all the way down. Looks like this is actually going to work out really well. It's a bit smaller, but uh, it'll be okay. Now we've just got to rebuild out some of these retaining walls so it looks a little bit more put together. I think we can extend the stone all the way out here around so it can be a little bit more supportive. I might expand the city up here further, so I don't think I'll put in a retaining wall for now. We can just kind of smooth it out a little bit. The grass will regrow here, so that should be totally fine, and I think it's about time. This lava has been scaring me for far too long. A little bit of texture added in here instead of the cobblestone. We can do a little acacia log and tough, and that's do the trick we're currently in stage one of this section of the city so the finer details are gonna have to come in the next episode except i really want to situate the builds in the environment a little bit more which means we can build in some custom trees like this little oak tree here next to the storage building which is looking pretty good oh i forgot my bed next i want to build some spruce trees up here along the mountainside which means i'm gonna need a lot of spruce leaves Leaves are all gone, but this is uh, looking a little ugly up here. So let's chop down the logs too. <laughs> Thankfully, spruce is very easy to get and it's time to make some trees in the morning. Somehow this is the first time I've built some large custom spruce trees in this world. And we're now 3,500 days into the series, which is kind of crazy. But here we are adding in five new ones behind the storage room, which really helps it fit a lot into these builds. And for those of you that have stuck around till now, let's update the world map to see everything new. Buying some new maps from the cartographers and picking up some glass panes to preserve everything. From there, I'm taking seven maps at a time to make sure I don't miss anything and start 
started flying around the spawn region to update every little thing I've created around here that adds up to the awesome hardcore survival base we have so far. Next, I need to take all these guys again and copy them to make two copies of each. With that done, next up, I'm taking a single copy of each of them to use the glass pane and lock it in place. This will forever preserve the copy on the wall. And this is looking really, really good with everything coming together. There we go. Episode 32 locks it in and our new section of the city over here is nearly as big as the first one and that is looking so good seeing it all coming together soon they'll be connected today i'm solving a huge problem in my world i have so many fields but no copper field to call david so i am building a massive copper factory to avoid any future messes of copper everywhere and well i did get a little distracted expanding the city with the industrial district build from the last episode i created this canal except it's a bit too small to make it really show up once all the buildings are in place i want to first redirect the upper section to allow for even more building space and then expand it by another two or three blocks to let the water have more of a presence in the build next up i just need to extend these walls back here where we're bringing the river back in and the pig died oh no on top of that i do want to change out the entire bottom of the canal here away from the stone and into some dirt and this is looking pretty good now next up we need to fix the retaining wall first we can start with a little bit of stone and then throw some polished andesite on top we're right here to fix the little overhang i'd created last time we can just throw that in probably be easiest just to start out with a ton of stone laid out here maybe making a little bit of what we did on the harbor wall i want to include a little bit of stone brick mossy stone bricks and then we'll work in our mossy cobblestone cobblestone and a tiny bit of moss i absolutely hate building while floating in the water since it puts me in the swimming animation constantly but you know it was worth it for the canal it looks so much better now one more swim through this entire place as i first need to add in i'm swimming again i need to add in a lot of kelp which we can create little bunches of and i need to make sure it's not under the flowing water and in between we can add in a ton of seagrass now that's looking much better next thing i need to fix up is well the clay farm is uh floating since we are talking about it let's fill this up one more time how did this all break I haven't done anything. Oh no, I'm breaking even more. Oh gosh, chicken, don't look at me like that. I have to drink all these bottles of water. I would be so hydrated. You could help. You could help chicken. We can just put those back in there. And now please, why aren't you working? Ignore the fact that most of that's clay already, but I think I've fixed it. Yes, it is working. Look at that chicken. Look at that, we're making mud. You just, you just pushed me out of the way from making, ah, chicken. Right, much better. Oh, that was a, that was a headache. And we fixed it because I'm a very hydrated professional. Right, back to focusing on the cliff and no more distractions. I'm gonna need light gray concrete powder, light gray wool, which I'm almost out of. A quick round visiting all the sheepies. That's at least a little better. Next, some acacia logs, more stone and tough blocks quick trip into the mines to grab a few extra tough blocks we found diamonds now for the cliff building i'm trying to use the acacia and tough as darker colors than the light grays as highlights to add in some extra depth to our stone cliff first corner is now completed and i like it a lot so let's get rocking and complete the rest of the cliff around the corner where i'm really glad i took the time to do this right instead of just slapping some stone on and moving on now this stone over here is for an eventual build i thought adding in some sort of cold storage could help add a city element into the natural landscape and now we definitely have space for a new building back here which is going to be fantastic before i get too carried away with the previous build it's time to focus on the copper factory which is going to need some land to sit on so i've got to get the rest of these spruce trees out of the way oh bleh. sad no minecrafter likes an accidental strippage oh quickly running up to the lumber mill to drop off all of these sprucey logs and next down to the harbor to load up on a bunch of grass blocks as it's time to do a little terraforming and level out this entire space where yes you can all rejoice i am going to be trying to double dirt this as much as i can starting by outlining the road to give it a bit more substance as i need to go up from here next i want to pick a few points like this one and extend the grass blocks out to the far side 
life with something like that this is for a factory that needs a larger flatter space so i'm not adding in anything too crazy here i might have made a mistake i made a mistake i made a mistake all right this little section here is now filled in okay let's tackle this and make a few torches no 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 my dirt i just put it there everything's fine put lights down the bad things will go away i'm gonna be smart and light up this whole section i'm planning on building over right now uh yeah that's probably good to do that should make things a lot safer down here yeah no no damage at all except this stupid guy i really just needed a way back up i don't have my elytra on and i fell back down take two no 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 take three take three. First try yeah just like absolutely nothing happened, I finished leveling off the terrain. And now for the fun part. This definitely isn't large enough for the factory. We've got a good amount of depth, but I want to send it farther over here. I plan to build an interior for this, so we need a lot of extra space to work with. And I think that's going to mean bringing the cliff all the way back if we don't use this space i'll just do some terraforming like we did over there and it'll be totally fine but this will help connect us all the way over into the gate which is gonna be really cool if i just level off this top section we should be able to get a good idea of how much more space we're creating here that definitely <laughs> that's a lot more space okay hopefully this works step one we build the beacon for some haste too getting right into it i worked from the top of the hill going down to level it out as much as i can for the future factory location there goes almost all of the dirt and that is one very dead shovel and just like that the stone is now also gone but most importantly i've now placed over a hundred thousand dirt in this hardcore world okay but for real i really need to repair these tools it's kind of stressing me out which means it's time for a stop at the wither skelly farm nope i saw you you're not blowing up my farm today nailed it with everything fixed up, it's time to plant a field. Today, we're doing something a little different. I want to plant a field of Azure Bluettes, which first is going to require transforming the soil into some coarse dirt so it doesn't have the grass sitting under the flowers. Surrounding the plot of land with some oak leaves, asking you to subscribe. Wait, no, 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 that comes next. Uh, planting all of the flowers in, and now be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Back over pretty close to world spawn now, and this is looking really good. Back over to the build today, I want to finish off the canal with a water mill right back here grabbing a ton of materials for this i want to add in some fun new colors into the area as if this structure is a lot older than the industrial district itself revolving mostly around wooden blocks for the build the jungle logs i do want to go ahead and strip them down and use this all for the roof I've recently realized that I'm pretty much only using stripped logs now, and I never really even build out of the unstripped logs. I just love how much cleaner these things look. For one final pop of color, let's grab a little terracotta here and craft some yellow terracotta. Okay, let's start with a little bit of brick here along the water's edge. Coming up probably four blocks, and then we can use a little dripstone for some texturing. I want to have the building jut out back along to this side. Before we get to that, though, I want to have the next floor jutting out here with some stripped dark oak logs and trap doors in between bringing those up the sides then for the wall itself let's use some smooth sandstone which looks pretty good then right out here let's extend a small balcony out with some spruce slabs surrounding it with our acacia trap doors look at the cute little balcony over the canal now on top of this sandstone here i want to add in my typical divider and then we're going to bring in the yellow terracotta for that fun pop of color working up with the roof line i'm thinking we can use our dark oak fence gates and open all of them but right here we can do a little window test site is figured out so i ran around filling out the rest of the walls up to the roof which we do now need to raise and this is going to be done with jungle planks along the bottom edge working into strip jungle logs and strip jungle wood to make this appear a little bit more reinforced i'm thinking we take a bit of spruce along the outsides as if it's like holding this roof down and I think that's looking pretty good, except for this random gap. Here, I want to add in a small little spruce shed for a small space for the person who might own the mill to live inside, which needs to probably be about that size. Then to keep things simple, let's just use a little bit of jungle slab action. 
Now for the most important detail of the building, otherwise it's just a house, I extended a log across the canal to create the water wheel. Grass doesn't work too well out here for the road in front, but something like this works great to contrast against the building. There are two ways to get copper in Minecraft. Number one is to mine it out of the ground, and number two is to kill a drowned zombie, which is actually most easily done in the end dimension. So realistically, I can't build a factory to produce copper over here in the city, but, 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 but I can build a factory that ages copper for building. So let's get a ton of empty shulker boxes as I've got to do a lot of digging. My goal is going to be to age four stacks of copper blocks at once, and each block needs to be a minimum of four blocks away from every other copper block. I am definitely going to need a beacon to set this up. Okay, so each row needs to be this long. Now I just need to dig this line all the way down here for the same length. Using the crimson planks as a guideline of where I'm going to be placing all of the copper blocks on top of, it's really easy to actually block this entire thing out. Two of the outside lines are in place, so the first big dig is underway to clear out the entire top layer. First layer is now dug out and the copper blocks would sit right here, but I want to try something. Making a quick trip into the nether as I'm going to need to get a few frog lights. And I'm here. Ochre should be okay. And back we go. Mob spawning is definitely going to be a problem down here if I'm not careful. So I actually want to replace all the planks that we just put in with our frog lights. Now, I know adding in a copper block is going to cover the light source, but that's okay for now. With our copper block sitting right there, we need to come down one, two, three, four blocks, and the next will sit right here, meaning a frog light will go under that, which means it's time to tear down another three blocks in the hole. I have some raw copper that's ready to be smelted down. Ow. Out, which we can toss into the super smelter. And while that stuff all smelts down, I want to run over to the librarians and trade for a ton of glass. In between each layer going down, I want to add in a floor of glass so I can easily tell what is or isn't aged. And I'm out of glass. This is going to require a lot of materials. With that, the glass floor is now in place, and I've got two stacks of copper we can load into the system. And there we go, just about halfway done. With that ready to go, I went into my deep, not so dark pit of a copper aging box and finished digging down the entire space. Super dead pickaxe later. We can now add in the bottom two stacks of blocks of copper and a lot of the top ones have already aged down. Except I do wanna allow for more easy future expansion of this thing if we do need it. So I've gotta dig this all down another block. Ah! Ah, of course this is a slime chunk. The little ones can live. With that dug all the way down now, we can grab a bunch of glass and fill it all back in. The floor is now entirely shrink-wrapped, and I can go... That's stone. That's copper. I can go around and add in all of the last bits of copper to age down. There we go. Four stacks of copper all aging down pretty slowly. I mean, no, this definitely didn't take me and my little slime friends like an hour to dig the entire hole that the top section is almost all aged down. No, 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 no. We just hanging out for a few minutes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. First step here, I want to create a staircase that's going to take me from the bottom level up to the top level. And I think a three wide walkway should be pretty perfect for that. And I went too high. I do love when the math mass going from the outside edge perfectly into the middle. To keep it simple, let's just throw in stone brick stairs for a easy way to walk up. This is intended to be just super functional for now, but I can at least clean up the edges so we're only seeing stone, which kind of helps a bit. Now, if we bring ourselves back this way a little bit farther, I got a little lost in here. So after thinking about it for a while, I decided to just create a looping staircase up to the top for an easy way to walk in and out of the copper box. Looks like we have broken a above ground underground so we're getting close to the top which i think it means it's time to actually refocus on building the factory before i get out of here let's be sure to gather up the beacon and seal this in like we were never here just don't think about the giant secret hole we have underground now i forgot the stupid stone 
like we were never there. Well, all that copper H is down, I need a ton of materials to create this factory. First off, running over to the dark oak forest to strip down a ton of logs. And a good while later, I now have all of the wood materials we're gonna need out of the lumber mill. Next, dropping down into the quarry, I have an empty box that I need to fill with rocks. As I want basalt, bricks, granite, Polished andesite, polished andesite stairs, as well as a ton of deep slate materials. Unfortunately, out of dripstone blocks, so down into the villager cave to where my emeralds are gone. There's always emeralds in the librarian stand, which we can use to buy dripstone blocks. To add a little more texture in, I do want to bring in a little bit of concrete. Continuing along with this epic resource gathering journey, I also need some prismarine, endstone, and stone bricks. Now if I can find some cocoa beans somewhere, ah, there we go. We can make some brown stained glass and glass panes. That's the first time I've crafted this. Huh, I'm as surprised as you are. Last few details, I'm gonna want some wither skelly skulls, lightning rods, iron bars, a daylight sensor, and a bunch of other stuff. And this right here is everything I'm going to be needing. Except, well, uh, the copper, where hopefully all of this is aged down. You know what? I do need the other stages too, so it'll be fine. That right there is all the copper I'm gonna need. And in the meantime, let's grab more raw copper to throw in the super smelter. I love this thing, it's already coming back. Thankfully now this, this is everything we need. Right into the build, I wanna divide this up into multiple structures, where the first here is gonna be for loaded carts that are ready to leave to distribute the copper to their final destination. Work in some mushroom block, jungle planks, a window right here for something like this. And I think the building's gonna come up to about here with some composters stretching across. I want to run spruce slabs up the side for a roof trim. Along the back of the build, I want it to almost look like garage doors, so I want to use some basalt behind archways here for a darker contrast on the entire side. Inside the factory, I want some large entrance archways in here, using spruce stairs and trap doors to create the big arch. This will give a lot of clearance for moving materials around. Carrying the composters along the front because it looks nice, and then I want to throw in a few oak trap doors here as little windows, but then we can run our slabs along the top. Things are a little flat currently so maybe we bring a few of our spruce trap doors here and fence gates going up well fences this is going to lead into another larger structure across here but before we get into that let's throw the roof on here To finish the back of this warehouse, I wanted to add in some large canisters that would do some cool factory things that I definitely know what the technical term for these are. Moving on to the front here, I wanna create a division wall to keep us off of the main street so we can create a bit of a work yard. Doesn't need to just be solid blocks though, so we can add in a few walls on top, fences from there, and trap doors to run the distance. Something like that should work out really well. And we can extend it a little bit on the other side with the entrance in the middle. Which leads to the second building in the back where I thought a diorite focus Focus building could be a cool contrast against the mud building we just created. Now behind all these structures, I do want an area for copper forges, which means I need a way to get back there. And if you guessed a large archway, you are, in fact, correct. With something a little like this. We've got three archways to lead out in multiple directions, and I added in a basalt wall back here, where we are gonna have a second floor that I think we can bring in some strip spruce logs and slabs which is looking pretty good now. So I should probably finish off the rest of the walls for the building and going up to the second floor, I'm bringing in sandstone with a little bit of endstone for that like weird aged color look. I actually like it here because I do it everywhere else underneath all of the windows. I wanna add in our flowering azaleas. On the corners though, I wanna bring in a little bit of light blue terracotta for a fun pop of color on the roof. And then taking spruce stairs all the way up to the top. Maybe we add in a little fun sticky outy bit like that and take this all the way down. For a roof completely made out of wax copper to bring in a third copper color to the factory. Now with the tower added in, this build is starting to really come together. This just leaves one stage of copper left to implement and one more building, a big boy over here. Being the main factory, this needs a good way for things to move in and out, meaning even more archways. Behind this to give it a little bit more depth, let's bring in a bunch of dark oak and just surround the new archways we've created. Small tweak along here, I've been really liking adding in a plank bit just to help break the entire thing up a touch. This build is primarily gonna be made out of dripstone using a little bit of granite as well as bricks to add an extra bit of texture. 
That'll work for the front. Now, just the other two sides. I also added in this weird structure here with a doorway to nothing, but I kind of like it. But moving on to the second floor now, I'm using a mix of oak and jungle with dark oak supports. Extending out a log here along the front, I want to add in a small lift here so that we can have some sort of way to more easily move things up to the second floor of the factory. But maybe we move this down and add in a scaffolding as like the grabber. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Back on the main street now, as I've left this opening in here, where I want to build an overhang so it's not such a flat wall here on the street. We can throw some scaffolding in for the windows and the rest is just going to be out of white terracotta with our really leaves nailed it made it professional and oak trap doors for shutters that is looking pretty good now for the back one much better which just leaves the roof left to slap on top with our fully oxidized copper some prismarine bricks and warp wood to add in the texture as it is a really big roof and there it is the copper factory we've got a pretty natural back wall here with the mountainside i blocked off this little section and now i want to do the same thing over here just to have some form of a natural barrier where we can say you know what everything inside is what we're working with for the factory buildings and what we need to decorate before we start decorating i do want to change out the floor in here for that i want to use rooted dirt and i have two coarse dirt we can make more but i'm gonna need a lot of rooted dirt here off on a new adventure i flew around the world until i could spot an azalea tree wait look at that azalea tree hi i just want the rooted dirt i just just want the dirt please thank you no 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 Right, area is now cleared and it is daytime again. But what's in here? Clocks. But I guess now it's time to just gather up as much of this rooted dirt as I can get. Wait, it doesn't go anywhere. It's supposed to go all the way down to a lush cave. This tree sucks. This tree rules. Just kidding, there's nothing again. What is going on? Where's all my rooted dirt? Oh, it's all the way down here. What the heck? I guess it doesn't like sandstone. With that realization, I set off to gather the rooted dirt that was hidden beneath the desert sands. <laughs> I almost choked because the spider scared me. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Spider aside, I think we just found an iron vein. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. I hate baby spiders. Oh, that's kind of cool. A minecart and a geode. Oh, just golden apple. Couldn't be that lucky. What is this diamond vein? What was that? That's amazing. All gathered up now and look at all that rooted dirt and check out these diamonds we just found and two spore blossoms. Back over at the factory, I took rooted dirt, coarse dirt, and dirt dirt to change out the entire floor into something more lived on. But for one extra little detail here, I wanna grab the shears and come down and just get some tall grass. I should probably do this at the end, but I mostly just want to right now, so it's fine. I'll probably remove half of this though. Uh, maybe not there. Little over in this corner. This can just kind of show the spaces that people aren't really walking around in. Nope, 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 no, no, grass, no. You don't spread there. Wait, actually, yes, grass, you do spread there. I just remembered I did that on purpose. Next, inside of the factory buildings, I want to add in some stones for the floors to reinforce it further and mixing in a little andesite and stone brick as well. The way this lines up is just so perfect. Wow, it's almost like I planned this beforehand. Look, we now have a way all the way down to the copper aging area. Amazing how that works out. Now for a rare flip thing to do, interiors. Except this stupid grass is growing through my floor. Much better. First up, building some wagons inside of the warehouse. As most importantly, this needs to be a functional place for them to stop and be loaded. One filled up with copper and the other waiting to be loaded, which we can continue this look by running a chain with a hopper all the way back over here using a grindstone coming all the way down to the ground to another one we can create a small little like hoist but maybe down a block yeah it looks like it's dropping it onto the cart now along the back here i want to connect into the surface 
well, ceiling like we have with that guy into some smokers. Now over here, I'm thinking for a small retaining wall so we don't just fall down the staircase, you know? We can use some trap doors, but maybe these, we instead put barrels. Then back at, over here, I wanna add in a small ladder going up to the top where we can install a little loft space with some barrels and we can craft a bed for ourselves. Well, actually the poor unfortunate soul who has to pull an all-nighter ain't gonna be me. And that should do it inside of here. But back here, let's add in some item frames a compass and a clock just so i can know if it's nighttime or not as i'm coming out of the lovely copper aging facility that wow it worked look at that and wow i think i totally forgot something yes we did smelt it down look at that which means it's time for out with the old and in with the new this takes so long to fill up that some are already reaching the third stage so if i go bigger they'll be done aging by the time i'm done placing and it's an infinite loop write that down write that down if we need more copper write that down working backwards in the copper production process let's move to the backyard here i want to add in giant smelters to show the process of turning raw copper into copper ingots adding a few more storage elements around here as well but what we most importantly need is some stockpiles for all of the copper which something like this should work with a second larger one back here back over by the two forges i want to add in a little covered working area so workers can be out of the rain if they need to for this i'm thinking we just bring in a bunch of slabs and work them over stepping back two blocks at a time leads us to here perfect and that should work out perfectly. A few extra decorations in, added in back here and we can remove all the fire on the campfires because it's not supposed to be on fire until it's well in there. Because I can't help it, right over in here, you guessed it, we're adding in another wagon or a little cart. I don't know, you choose, but it looks pretty good. I also added a little back entrance into this space and we get working on it. As one final decoration option back down at this end, I want to do something a little bit different and build a sort of a reactor type thing connecting into those stacky things that we made. And we are all hooked up. This wall, uh, future foot problem. You know the deal. With the back done, I flew through finishing off the copper receiving area to create a conveyor belt system to take unloaded copper, smash it, and get it ready to go in the forges. Sleepy Flip can't word very well, so I just decided to time lapse the whole thing out, and it's looking really good inside of here. I've got these little micro copper blocks that I wanted to add in, because they're just so cute. But here we have the conveyor belt moving everything down this way, gets smashy smashied under the anvils, turned into raw copper, up the conveyor belt, which then drops into this system to load in right there. Here in the middle of the yard, we have a lot of dead space that really can't be used all that well, so I don't want to fill it in too much but i am thinking a few supplies around here oh i don't want to break my grass just to have some stuff around i think something like that should do maybe a little log pile back here now let's grab a little bit more tinted glass and a quick trip to the nether to grab some frog lights where these should do now for the second floor of this building up here it's not going to be super usable so we're just going to turn it into stage dressing so let's add some tinted glass behind all of these and then surround that all with our frog lights. I saw B-dubs and Scar do this a little while ago, and it gives a great little brightness behind there, but no light actually comes out of the window. So during the day, it doesn't feel overpowering, but at night, it feels like somebody's almost living in there. As a final step, I'm running around with some glow lichen and glow berries to add the natural vibe to the build that I use everywhere else inside of the city. With that, I'm really happy to say the copper factory is complete inside of this world and actually contains some really cool functional elements, which is fantastic. Taking a little break from the copper factory, I jumped across the canal to the previous industrial district build to spend some time decorating out the back areas of all the buildings, adding in a few additional elements to really just bring it alive. Then I went to the street side to build a fish and ship stand for snacks and a carpenter's workshop in the small space between the buildings, jumping back around behind the houses again though i'm adding in a small backyard for the homes with a beetroot garden and some extra more elements of people actually living here this is looking much much better throughout here but it's time to connect up the two sections of the industrial district i've built so far which means we need some new city buildings right along the road here starting off as always i do need more spruce so we gotta clear out all of these trees next up grabbing a new shulker box and diving into the nether cave as we've got to get out to the mesa to mine a load of terracotta i should only need a tiny beacon to to instant mine the terracotta, right? Yes, perfect. 
There we go, one full shulker of terracotta. Time to get out of here before all the spooky spawn. I want to experiment a little bit on this build here. So let's craft a ton of purple terracotta, which I think will go really well with some deep slate. So back into the mines we go. Once again in the mines, gathering up cobble deep slate to refill my shulker box. Most of my pickaxes and my wings are nearly broken, so I got to fix that. Nothing a quick trip into the nether can't fix at their wither skeleton farm. about an hour later now and this is nearly everything we are gonna need for this build it's gonna be a big boy along with a few more decoration blocks that i need to fully bring these new builds to life and you know really mess up my minecraft inventory Let's focus on this roadside for the build and the purple experiment, where I want to start with some deep slate tile that'll work into our cobbled deep slate and then into the purple terracotta as the main block in the build. This is looking really good over here, but it's very flat. So I'm thinking we bring out here in the front a little archway balcony type thing for a covered walkway, which first is going to start out with stacking up a ton of pillars and then connecting them with our polished deep slate and dark oak trapdoors. You can also hook these all the way back into the building itself. Now, on top of all this deep slate we've already worked inside of here, we can create a seating area as I think this building is going to be intended to be like an inn or a tavern so people can look out over the street. Of course, with a little covered balcony, something can strip dark oak, flowering azaleas for a really cool hedge going right along the edge. Now, on top of all this, I think it'd be a perfect fit to add in even more of our deep slate tiles. To show this is an inn, let's bring a spruce plank out here, item frames on both sides, and have the pillow pointing towards the door. And that is starting to look really good here on the front of the building. Continuing this theme around the back of the building, I extended up the purple walls and added in a lot of dark oak elements to make it a not-so-flat box. Before jumping up to make the roof out of deep slate with a spruce trim, I did leave a gap on one of the corners, though, so I can add in a tower out of mud bricks sticking high into the sky to break up the skyline from the flatter roof we have so far again before moving on into the next building i want to add a small jut out over here i think something out of some stone over here will be a really good way that we can kind of tie everything in and transition into the new building small window right here with a flower pot sitting on a little sill in front this right here should work for all of the stone face and then i want to bring in a little dark oak for the roof it's just gonna stick up as high as we can make it leading into the next attached building right over here i'm trying to really bring the city feel in here with a lot of overlapping buildings tucked in as closely together as they can while they're still feeling a little unique minus this big hole in the back that completes the exterior of the first blob of buildings here on the front to connect this terracotta guy into the next ones i'm thinking we bring in a little bit of brick and develop an archway coming all the way across a bit like that that finishes our two archways across here and then i'm thinking we jut this out for a little bit of spruce and spruce slab action for a floor here in the middle we can continue the beams going across well kind of because i apparently didn't make it even but it's fine we're just gonna ignore that for the going nighttime we can throw in a little lamp to keep things safe creating another terracotta wall on this side over here i want to bring in a little bit of sandstone here for a bit more of a pop going along everything else for something like that and then we do scaffolding and slap in the rest of our windows back size now and as well and from here i want to extend some dark prismarine slabs and just extend this all the way up to the top right now we have a great wall oh, maybe it's better to look at from the outside we now have a lovely walkway across to a building that's probably going to need a lot better of a wall. I think this building is going to be about that wide apart. So I want to bring in a little bit of our orange terracotta here because I got it and I think it's going to be fun. Doorway goes somewhere like this. To go along with the orange, we have the mangrove stairs. And so our door itself isn't sitting on anything. Let's bring in cobble, dark oak door, dark oak door, and trap door. Now for some windows, which might also be considered new entrances since they're out of scaffolding, we can throw those right here. Wall's gonna come up to about there, but on the corners, I thought we could add in some glow like in to kind of be a decorative bit. And being able to see through that's a little awkward, so maybe we do a barrel chest here. And I think I have some. Yeah, we'll just throw in some mangrove planks. Like that. Now, above this section, so it's not just flat, I think we can jut it out from the wall. Probably by two blocks with a little bit of supporting slab down below. Going with our tried and true, we can extend all of our spruce trap doors out from here. Oak planks along the base, working up into our stripped oak logs. Oh 
Walls are in place. And as always, I want to add in our little flowering azaleas that have turned into almost like the symbol of the city houses. And for the roof of this section, I think we just do some mangrove stairs for the additional pop of color here. Still staying on theme with our warmer colors, but just something new that we don't quite have yet. This build is currently a lot of brick and terracotta. So moving to the back over here, I wanna try and complement it and do something a little different here with our jungle, which then is gonna go into strip jungle logs. And I wanna raise the entrance up a bit so it's just slightly off ground level. But over here, I thought it could be kind of cool to add in our chimney as something actually outside of the building. We'll use the composer top for this one. So not everything is smoking and just causing more lag. Blending this back in here with our current roof theme where pretty much everything in this area is at a deep slope currently I want to repeat that over here With that done, I have a big diagonal box in the middle left to fill in, so I wanted to try a new roof shape here before I get so far into the city building project that it's harder to introduce new things. But sometimes it is good to include the old faithful style, so I went back to my starter house build style to fill in the smaller space on the side as there wasn't too much room to do something grand and it fits really well with the older water mill vibe next to it. Five hours later and all of these structures are now in place. But most importantly, now the copper factory is connected to the original industrial district. Next, in the same way, we polished up this area over here earlier, and it's looking much more finished around the original homes. I want to come back here and fix up this big grassy area, which is gonna require a lot more spruce trap doors and oak trap doors. I really like using these for the backyard fences as it's something substantial, but it's still pretty small. The bigger house can have something like this where we can throw in a little garden. Now for the purple house, I think we do something about right in here and just close it off right next to the staircase. Now where we have our big shulker mess over here, I want to turn this into like a covered work area. So if we do something like there, three would bring us to here and we go another three. We can create something inside of this. Streaming down the logs, we'll get to this in a minute as before I add in too many finer details, now that I've got an idea where the structures are, I need to figure out what the pathways are going to look like. Where I want to come back over here, grab a ton of rooted dirt, our coarse dirt, and regular dirt. Using spruce slabs, we can create the way to walk up between the different layers and tear out a lot of this grass. You fill in a ton of coarse dirt or something a little like this, and then we've just got to spend some time taking it all the way around. That is starting to look much, much better back here. Now I just need to relocate my mess so I can actually work in here. Nope, grass. No, oh, wow. okay, okay, never mind. Sorry, grass. Looks like I can't grow anywhere from there so it can stay. But here in the back, I wanna throw in a little bit of water and create a small herb patch in here where we can have potatoes, carrots, potatoes, carrots. Nope, potatoes. Potato. And then back in this spot, I'm thinking we do pretty much the same thing. Next up, let's grab our beehives, our barrels, soul lanterns, maybe some candles. Back in here, we don't have too much space for a seating area, so this can just be barrels, little beehive, and another one for storage. But over here, I made this little mud brick area, so I was thinking we could have a little seating and some candles on top. That's looking pretty good in here. Now for these pillars that I stacked up earlier, I'm thinking we simply just add on spruce planks going all the way around. Okay, here in the middle is a little flat, so let's get some stairs. We're hopefully, yes, I can do this. We can give the illusion of the slab being in the middle by doing back-to-back -back stairs. Nobody will ever know, it's perfect. There we go, that's looking much better now just to decorate the inside. And much better, not too sure what it does, but it's a little workstation. Next up, I want to plant a glow berry and I need a lot more of them. As we definitely need a little bit more greenery around here inside this city, it's everywhere. So I don't want to forget it here. I've got a few hanging roots left we can throw in too, but I got to be pretty sparing with them. All of the little stuff is in around here, but I want to include some trees like this one inching up the side of the wall here with some acacia leaves on it. Something like that should work. I've recently been inspired to come up with some new tree designs and created this weird jungle tree a while back, and I'm so happy to finally have an excuse to bring it into the world. Now, it is a little tall, but if we fly all the way back here, it pops above the roof line just ever so slightly, and I love that. Just look at it. Oh, it's so good. Also, I wish we could use vines on the wall and shear them like glowberries. I mean, look how much string 
I had to put back here just to stop this thing from hopefully growing. Also, vines with little flowers on them like we have in the flowering azalea bush. If that's not too much to ask for, that'd be really cool to have, thanks. But there we go, a full copper factory ready to oxidize all of my copper moving forwards and a brand new expansion to the city. Enough horsing around at the city. It's time for an adventure. Today, I want to get back to and just enjoying playing Minecraft by transforming this plains bomb into a beautiful horse racetrack while trying to breed for the fastest horse possible in Minecraft. I think it's only fitting to head over to the future racetrack location on horseback. I do love my original horse, but hopefully this will be a little bit quicker in the future. But here we are at the end of the road and a start of a brand new project. Where first, I'm gonna park our horse over here. Somehow up here on top of the mountain, we have tons of horses just all over the place, which means we don't have to get far to get a great start here to try and get the fastest horse in Minecraft. So crafting down a ton of spruce fences and maybe first we clean up the area just a touch before we create a giant horse pasture. Track's not open yet, sorry, come back later. Let's start by creating an archway so we know where the entrance to our little place is. And for a really simple top entrance, let's just do this and some trap doors. Fence gates across so the horsies can't get out. And a lamp. Okay, so I like this in general, in theory, but it's a little too slopey. So I'm gonna do a little terraforming here. Just a small terraforming project to kick off the day. And now I need to run fences around the entire perimeter. And that'll do it. Right there, we've got a lot of space for horses and one's already inside. This guy is uh, very slow though. So, sorry buddy, I don't think you're gonna need that saddle. I think uh, you're gonna hang out here, yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking we leave a saddle on top of all the horses that are half decent uh, for everyone we bring down from the mountain and then the ones that are just gonna hang out here and live out their merry days can just not have a saddle. Next, I'm gonna need to get a lot of saddles. And well, I also need a lot of emeralds, so let's stop by the raid farm. Maybe we grab a few more empty shulkers along the way. Quick trip down into the nether to the ocean monument, where somewhere in this direction, I think, should be the raid farm. Ah, there's the giant ugly cobblestone thing. It even still has emeralds. <gasps> I love, wow, there's so many in here. And redstone, <gasps> I love this place. How did I forget about all of these? There are so many emeralds here already. I might as well craft them all into blocks that'd be a little smarter we've got so many emeralds in here now and uh, i'm a little worried that this doesn't produce saddles but we'll try running it for a while and see i can't remember a quick little swipe at this guy there we go and i think i messed it up already nope nope there it goes that's i'm hearing mobs okay that's doing its thing just under 200 levels and i think it's time to get on out of here we'll let them all despawn why are you still spawning no Everybody should be dead now. Now, did we get any saddles? No, we didn't get a single one. Saddle, saddle, I see you. Oh, my inventory's full of junk. No, my saddle. Ah, oh, we got one. It was worth it. Everything was worth it. I mean, I guess this here is kind of worth running the farm, just kind of slightly maybe, but these are cool too. This right here is pretty cool. I'll take that. You know what? Worthwhile trip to get out here. Okay, new plan. Leatherworker villagers at master rank will trade saddles. So somewhere here in the village, I should have some running around as there are cauldrons for workstations. How are you up there now? Okay, maybe all the leather workers died. There's not too many villagers in the village. Oh, here we we have some villagers. Let's see if I break the composter. Will one of you become a leather worker? Yes. <gasps> Ooh, pants. Oh, I need my emeralds. Now, if I max this guy all the way out, and I've got here at the village, so it should be dirt cheap. Sorry, I don't need your pants. Oh, this is going to take a long time to max out. Oh, no. I grab the other cauldron, so maybe this guy will also want to be a leather worker. Yes, there he goes. And saddles for one emerald. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, I'd like those back. That's not a tip. Both of our boys are maxed out, which means we now have all of the saddles we should need. Now, I need to run up here to the top of the mountain and jump on every single one of these horses to tame them. I should probably get some carrots to make this easier, huh? Oh, my gosh. Finally, the first one's tamed, and he's decent. Not amazing. Not, not amazing. How's your jumping? Oh, he's a three block jumper. Okay, you keep your saddle. With the first horse brought down, I ran over to pick up some sugar cane and crafted it into sugar to make taming a little easier. And then started to bring all of the horses down to the mountain into the pasture, being sure to leave a saddle on all of the decent ones. Okay, this should be the last mountain horse coming down into the pasture. And a lot of these were actually pretty decent, so they kept their saddles on. So it's time for some speed. 
speed test. I'm after the best possible horse in Minecraft today, so I need a sprint track to test their speeds quickly before I get that out on the actual racetrack we'll build later. 40 blocks should be long enough to finish this. Now I need to expand this to be six blocks wide for a little more wiggle room. Crafting a few tripwire hooks as well as a hopper two different barrels and lastly I need some string maybe that cave I covered up will have a spider inside of it somewhere there's an abandoned mine shaft down here which means there should be cobwebs and we can grab some string in this <gasps> diamonds and cobwebs don't mind if I do Ooh, there's a lot of them 10 more diamond ore for ourselves that's a pretty good find down here now let's get out of here before I overstay my welcome on both ends here I want to create a polished deep slate on there and there and then we connect these together to activate a tripwire hook which I'll produce a redstone signal anytime we walk through it out of the back of this guy we need to run a redstone line all the way down into the center repeating this to the far side to get it all caught up for next i want to run the axle redstone line with repeaters coming all the way down into the middle at the end of both of the redstone lines we're going to place in a piston and a piston with a redstone block here in the front we put a barrel and a hopper going into the barrel with another barrel on top grabbing our extremely technical timing element here of two stacks of dirt anytime i walk through here the redstone block gets moved over the dirt starts counting and that should move it back which locks the hopper again stopping the dirt from coming in locking our timer i'd like a little bit more speed up time to get to max speed so let's give ourselves a little bit more dirt on this side and some slow down zone on the far side taking a little time to expand the track and adding in some flowers to make it really feel like a fancy horse racetrack now over here i've installed a redstone lamp so we can know when the thing is on and ticking so i'm thinking we bring ourselves up here few fences going across and strip the logs down with that i just want to create a small overhang here so it looks a touch nicer just kind of building into the redstone system but that should work and we can still kind of see the lamp so it should be okay from here i also want to create some archways going over the top similar to the one that I created around the horse pasture already. This right here is starting to look pretty official, I do gotta say. So I think it's about time to grab one of our saddled horses and see how quick they are. I think I remember this guy being, yeah, he's quick. Take one on the horse sprint. And we're done. This is a nine dirt horse. Let's do that quick test again. I wanna make sure it was empty. There we go, round two and done nine dirt again okay that is getting a really consistent time and that's very important now i'm just excited to try this with a bunch of different horses so let's see where we can get with this guy nine dirt again nine nine dirt again. okay is everybody gonna be nine dirt come on now horse number three and that felt a lot slower 11 dirt okay yep nine dirt is currently the time to beat so sorry buddy i'm gonna be taking that saddle back you can live out the rest of your days here in this lovely little pasture the other test i want to make is for jumping the most accurate way to do this is with a bunch of snow layers here so we can just gather up a ton of this stuff then right next to our little sprint track, I built out another area for the new test. Where from here, we can start creating a few pillars for ourselves that are gonna go up three blocks tall, space it apart over here. Then this one will be for four blocks tall. And then this will be for, if we get some really super powered horses, five blocks tall. And I think we can actually repeat this right in front of it again here, cause we don't need too much space. Crafting a few ladders in here, and then I would need a way to get up to these back ones as we're going. Where if you didn't know, we can add one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven snow layers to create a full block and by that i mean eight snow layers but we're gonna just ignore that my thought is if we can get over the front one then we land and we try and jump over the next and this will have three layers on it to start so just under a slab and then we can add as we need one of these horses was a super jumper not that guy oh i think it's this one yep <laughs> let's see what he can do three blocks cleared it easy four blocks nailed it now can he do five blocks oh just so close adding another two snow layers here how close can we get to five blocks i need to know oh five layers four blocks five layers can we do seven layers yes oh he's just under five blocks jumper not the quickest though not the quickest hey look another distraction I gotta plant a field! In every hardcore episode, I plant a new field inside this hardcore Minecraft world to keep expanding my base and asserting my dominance over this puny Minecraft world as I slowly destroy all of the biomes and convert them into quick farming paradise. And you should definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. You might watch my videos all the time and not even realize you haven't subscribed yet, so be sure to double check. There we go, a wheat field in front of the auto wheat farm storage. Okay, no more distractions, let's build the horse stables. For this, I'm gonna need a ton of materials as always like stone some basalt 
tough blocks, diorite, and cobblestones for the base layer. White wool, concrete powder, white concrete, some birch logs, and then some light gray concrete for shading. For the roof here, we can go into the copper factory from the last episode to pick up some freshly aged copper. Throwing the beeswax on some of it, and we can turn it all into cut copper. Now, don't yell at me yet, or do in the comments. It actually helps the video, so thanks. But on top of that, for the roof here, I want to use melon blocks. To add to our melon roof, I've got lime concrete and lime glazed terracotta cooking down, as well as a little lime wool. Lastly, for this project, I'm gonna need a netherite ingot to craft ourselves a lodestone. Starting off over here, we can get into the front of the build with the start of our stable space, where I wanna include a lot of stone coming up to probably right here as a trim for this i'm thinking we have stone bricks going all the way across with some stairs and some full bricks going all the way down that's looking much better inside of these openings let's bring in a little bit of our mud brick stairs for a darker color as i want to create some windows for the air to get in and out of the stables and then for a doorway over here we can do the same thing right here just a block lower thinking a three wide opening and the structure should probably end yeah, around there and that'll work for the entrance the two side walls i want to leave more open to add in some other shapes soon but i repeated the same window idea along the back i'll sort out these basalt structures on the edges here soon but first the front where we can pull the classic whip move of extending some spruce out here and slabs in between i hate flat faces on buildings so i want to stand out a small oak bit sticking out from the side to help achieve that adding in a pop of color here with our purple glass windows and then i want to bring in some crimson trap doors behind the windows to give it a little pop of lighting we're going and I just bring in some frog lights and spruce planks going in for the roof now for the rest of the roof i'm thinking about coming in over here and transitioning from our stone into more of a white palette where i know i am using gray right here but it's for shading so to be fine right over here we can have a big open space and incorporating a little bit of our birch and some diorite in here then along the back just to close it all in i'm thinking some jungle trap doors but this can be how we can have a way to get up to the top i remember helping my mom as a kid out with all the horses and we always had a hay loft on the second store so i'm thinking we can kind of replicate that in here with a hay bale being lifted up to the top we'll give an access point for all the hay to be down into the horses where we have some stalls in here but that's just kind of the idea i'm running with speaking of running i ran around to add in those basalt structures as little additions for a tack room and like a stable hand space and then i got to work stacking up a new tower in the back corner which looks so good from the inside yeah look at that i mean definitely at the inside here but next i want to come here along the front and bring in some of our more white concretey blocks that we have into up here we can do a little bit of our gray birch right here and then we're just gonna keep working our way moving down here the entire side now on all of these above the windows, I'm thinking we bring in a few campfires, extinguish those down all the way. And then underneath, I want to throw in a few of our acacia leaves with more of the crimson trap doors as little shutters going the entire direction. What? <laughs> Ah, there's one more. I'm so close. Moving into the giant roof section, I want to add a little bit of a border here that's going to be kind of holding everything up using our spruce trap doors and spruce slabs going all the way down. Before throwing the roof on, I thought another tower base back here would be nice to balance things out. And well, actually, I built it because I want to create an archway going over our future racetrack. And I needed something to attach it to here. To make it a little fun and funky and fresh, let's work on a bit of a diagonal over here and come out with one, two... Excuse me, I forgot my cool lodestone that we made earlier we gotta include the super cool lodestone where is it ah lodestone lodestone and one two that should even things out and then if we put our chiseled stone brick here i can bring it at one two three and four which then we just go right back up this is looking pretty good but it definitely needs more of a foundation to it where we can just extend our slabs going all the way like this and then on top of those we just bring stone bricks around up to floor level with the door here i'm thinking spruce planks down the middle to walk on top of and another layer like we had before using our smooth stone blocks with a little deep slate to darken it up now i want to keep the lighting out here fairly subtle so let's throw three lime candles there and three here and we can light them this is going to be a fantastic place to start the race where for that i'm thinking we take a trip bar hook a redstone lamp on top of it and extend our string coming all the way across here to repeat the same to activate it and now that block should be powered and they turn on oh i like that that's a fun start this does need to lead somewhere so i think a small watchtower to view the race will be perfect and our archway is now finished up but it's time to throw the final walls in of this big build 
this is starting to look really really good on the outside but i think it's finally time to throw the roof on this thing not gonna lie i am terrified to start this as it's probably one of the most unique things i've ever built in minecraft and it took me forever to figure out even the base idea with it but i am so happy i decided to try and push myself to do something new here taking a look at back where we started today this is awesome to see the horse racetrack stable structure completed along with the horse testing tracks one final touch i definitely need to do for now is throwing a bit of a floor on the inside as grass is probably not our best bet for the little side cubbies over here i'm thinking we incorporate a bit of deep slate and there's probably gonna be a wall right along there maybe we'll see how it goes maybe a trap door wall so it's skinny but outside of that i want to use a lot of course dirt to kind of frame things in just enough so that we can get the grass to stop spreading on the inside and outside of that i want to use as much of the regular dirt as i can partially because i don't really have too much course dirt but that's okay now let's just hope the grass isn't able to spread to the inside of this looks a little bit more attached in here with a road so that's that's nice i was flying back home for more dirt and realized my wings are nearly broken so let's fix that before it's too late Whoa. nailed it wings are still good okay okay oh where the skelly farms over there and i can just grab some experience right over here and there we go a uh, super quick one Oh, I'm invisible. How'd that happen? Grab some gravel and some dirt to craft coarse dirt. Quick stop in the quarry to grab a little bit more stone bricky action and some dark oak from the lumber mill. I want to get the location for some horse stalls sorted out here soon. But first up, let's get all of our coarse down dirt down. And hopefully I have enough to fill all of this in because uh, we're going to need a big area for things to move around. Right, this is a good start in here, but I'm thinking we tear up a little bit of the coarse dirt, just kind of randomly creating almost like pathways around and fill that back in with our regular dirt. Where hopefully no grass will grow in here. It looks like it should be okay though. Next up, let's move inside the stables and I'm thinking we can use a few trap doors right over here to create a bit of a doorway. For now, just throw some trap doors up for the rest of the wall. This way we still get the full three blocks and it's not just completely sticking out in the walkway. Now, moving on to the stalls, I'm thinking we are gonna do most of these out of stone so it can be holding up the next floor. Going at the same height we have for the main doorway, we can start bringing in a few stairs here to create archways so that we can easily ride a horse inside. And then from here, I wanted to start bringing in a little bit of our dark oak logs for the trim going across the top and strip it all down. Now in between all these, I do like the stone at the base and I'm thinking we just bring in some stone bricks right across the top so the horses can see in between, but they can't walk over them. Hopefully all of them can jump over them in the end, but this should do it for now. For a cheeky little way to walk up to the second floor, I think we can just throw something in right back over here. And perfect. Now just for the game of filling in even more of our dark oak. Running into a bit of an issue out here with that being at the level. So I'm thinking we just bring in these guys. And then on the corner, I want to add in some acacia trapdoors as a way that we can throw hay from the hayloft at this level down into our horses. And this right here is starting to feel really good for the stables itself. As one final step in here, we can add in all of our fence gates going across so we can actually lock the horses in here. Removing the ground torches and everything down here is ready to go we've got cauldrons with water in every single stall we've got random bits and bobs around the lanterns up on the top and a little tack room ready to go with the staircase leaning up here and this little guy where i'm thinking right in front we just throw some hay bales to make it look like you know things are being moved in and that the hayloft is very full a little railing on the staircase too and that'll work out just to be safe let's throw a cheeky bed back here in this room that uh definitely is full of decorations so full but now for the moment i've really been looking forward to it's time to bring our first few horses onto the inside so let's start testing them out first up i'm going for speed to go the distance and then we can work on jump and health later this guy is 10 dirt we definitely have faster than that sorry buddy i'm taking the saddle for now horse number two nine dirt oh i think you're a keeper for now can we get four nope not quite four three and a half okay nine dirt three and a half you can come inside uh you're not feeling quick at all i'm so yeah i'm not even I'll take that saddle, buddy. Oh, you can jump. Wow, wait a second here. Oh, we are just shy of five blocks. That's like a 4.9 block. Right, you can come inside. This one's gonna take a little while. Nine dirt, three and a half. Okay, we've got three of the same horse. And one really slow boy that's a big jumper. We've got our horses in here to get started with. And to start breeding, I need golden carrots or golden apples. And we're gonna be using golden carrots because I'm way too poor for golden apples. Now I can make the long flight journey all the way back here every time 
I need more carrots. And visit my farmer villagers. Well, that's not fun. And that's a long journey to make every time. So in an effort to enjoy the Minecrafty vibes today, let's build a little storage shed over here for some farmers to live in. Okay, but first grabbing a few carrots, we can breed these two horses to get our first baby and put the new one in the stall over here to let them cook. With that, I need to throw together a bunch of materials for the new build sticking on theme for the stables itself. Jumping right into the build, I set up some rings over here so we can build some granary storage silos of sorts. And I want to make sure the base isn't super flat, so we're just throwing on a few slabs and trap doors. Now for the granary itself, I want to bring in a little bit of our dripstone and then also extend in some of our mud, mud bricks and things like that. We'll throw the top on here in a minute, but we're just going to do a little archway as always. Now to mess around with a little bit of shading here, I'm thinking we try some dirt, soul sand into muddy roots and kind of have that just being darker around the rest. We're going to offset the levels so the entrance here for this one is just a little bit taller. Next, bringing up the muddy brick base to be level out with the archways. From here, I want to grab some oak planks and stripped oak logs and we can start transitioning here with some oak planks as the base. And then I'm thinking we bring up our strip logs going a little higher. But to make sure the back isn't so flat, we can do a little jungle trap door action and then add in a third layer of our strip logs. Working up towards the top here, I think it's going to come out to be about this tall because I want to do a ring of composters in here to just break up the... Ooh, nope, that one's wrong. Fixed it. Now on top of the composters, we can do a little pop of our crimson planks in here to kind of be contrasting against everything over there. With that done, it's time to transition into the roof if I can place blocks right or say words right. One day, one day we'll get there. And that right there should do it for the grain silos. And, ooh, I like them. And it is very late at night right now. Get rid of all of these guys and it'll be fine. Woo! No, it's fine. Everything's fine. Now, I want to build a structure attached to this for some villagers to live inside. But first up here, let's make two hoppers, throw the Electra back on, and run over to this farm. As I'm starting to run pretty low on our warped and crimson wood again, so I want to get some storage rocking. I also need some more bone meal for it, which we can just start filling in on the chest on both sides. There we go, completely loaded up, and we should be able to just turn it on. That'll do its thing while we're working on the build. For the villagers, I want to create a storage shed with some stalls in the back for the farmers to stay safe. And here we have a few more decorations on the inside that definitely won't constantly attract the villagers and distract them when I'm trying to move them in. It'll be fine. But out here on the front, I thought we could throw some golden carrots in these little item frames and have them pointing in inside now i have some extra composters and i want to take a little bit of this hay and turn it into wheat and then into bread because i came to visit the villagers over here and unfortunately a lot of them have died uh we're just not going to talk about that so i'm just going to give you guys some bread that'll be great let's increase that population once again and i'm going to make some boats to kidnap new ones or maybe <gasps> he's still here he's still here hi buddy you're new you look like you want to be a farmer at the horse stables That TNT scared me so much. <laughs> I just had a solid. <gasps> There's another one. Okay, we can just take these villagers. We run some trapdoors around here. We should be able to box a villager in, and he can't walk under that, but we can easily move them in place. Yeah, hi, buddy. Come here now. We're having the battle of who's more stubborn right now, and I hate villagers so much. Yes, yes, yes. He's in. Everything about that was terrible. Okay, let's do it two more times. And finally, 20 minutes later, we have three villagers in place. Yay! Back at something I built well over 3,500 days ago. Let's come over here to the auto carrot farm, pick up a ton of carrots as every single one of those villagers wants to trade them. Let's get them going and see what else we're going to be needing here. Oh, we'll buy some pumpkin pie. Sure, why not? Definitely snacks. And I'm going to need a few more emeralds here to buy cookies. But there we go. Three golden carrot trades ready to rock. Before we start any more testing, I'm not too sure if horses need time to get up to maximum speed. So I'm going to extend out our course straight here just a little bit further. The racetrack is going to come through here in the end, so it's okay to keep it that flat for now. Let's see. What are we going to get on this speed test? What are we at? Can we get an eight? We have an eight. Oh, that's a new record. We haven't had an eight before. Uh, not a three and a half for though. Okay, so we lost some jump, but we gained speed. Now for the weird Minecrafty part, if we take both of these, we should hopefully be able to get an even faster horse again. <gasps> Look at 
you, you're adorable. And this is your stall, buddy. And I'm happy to say we've got an eight dirt speed. Oh, that's so good. Well, the horse grows up. I decided to hang out and just lay down a bunch of grass blocks for a while to work on the train and prep for the future racetrack. Little one is now a big one. So let's see how quick they're. Oh, nope, nope. Come on. Settled up and ready to go to the testing track where we can just fly on in from here. We've got another nine blocker. Okay, um... I'm just going to send you out to the pasture, bud. I'm getting a little too excited over here. And so before I forget it, let's link up the road back over to the sheep farm where I'm going to need a ton of spruce slabs and more coarser. With the materials ready, I cleared out all the space I need and laid down the road, linking up the racetrack to the world. Side note, just slept here and we're on day 3,701. That's another 100 days. Okay, back to road making. There we go, all linked up. But I had a few grass blocks left over, so I just placed them down to smooth things out. And our new horse is nine blocks. So, so I did some maths. We have 40 blocks to travel and a hopper moves 2.5 blocks per second. The max horse speed is 14.2 blocks per second. If we get the max speed horse, we can complete this test with seven dirt just barely by like 0.2 seconds off eight dirt we've got good progress here with the eight dirt horse but we can go even faster than that now for the fun minecrafty grind where i just have to repeat this over and 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 over i'll be honest i'm gonna go crazy if i just sit here waiting for horses to grow and be able to breed again so let's get working on creating the track my wife and i have been obsessed with the f1 docuseries so i was scrolling through the tracks to see if anything could fit this zone and the austin track will actually fit perfectly Perfectly. We'll use coarse dirt over here for the start so I can run the redstone along. But after that, I'm thinking we transition to path blocks to kind of save on my sanity, you know? <laughs> yeah, I need that. Starting off with a straightaway, I'm creating a nine wide bit of path block all the way down. This is going to require a lot of smoothing as we go. But for now, the first bit of the racetrack is shoveled into the earth. That did take about an hour. So baby should be fully grown. No, there was no baby. I was waiting for the breeding cooldown on this guy. Oh, that's a bummer. No, there's a baby. Mere little guy, you get the big stall. It means you're going to be super fast, right? Back to working on the track for now. As I need to extend ourselves all the way out this way beyond the mountain range to loop back around. We run into an issue here where there's a mountain and I'm going to need a lot of dirt to smooth that out so we can get up on top. At this point, I just needed to spend the time to get the job done on both breeding a fast horse and finishing the racetrack outline. Both tasks are a lot larger than I was expecting, which means a lot more grind time spent in the game hanging out and just moving this world forward but it's been really fun to do instead of focusing on some crazy massive build project i've just been able to chill out and play some minecraft which has been really nice except it's been five hours little problem here as both of my shovels are falling apart and i need to fix those up which today brings us out to the end Unfortunately, I'm not making much progress on horse speed, so I want to double the length of the test to get a little more variety in the results. For the next step, I need to retime every single one of the horses I have as we're going to get a new dirt count. Previously 9 dirt, now 17 dirt. Okay. Man, I can't wait for the ability to just edit signs in 1.20, but the new test did eliminate two of my horses but everybody else is at 17 minus our big boy jumper over here at uh 26 it's okay that you're slow it's fine but there we have three new ones growing up that we'll come back for in a little bit with that done i went back into shoveling the racetrack to get a better idea again of the shape winding my way around the mountain to connect to the start of the track we already built out clearing the forest along the way where i'm very happy to say i now have two shulker boxes full of oak leaves Woo! Oh my god, I hate everything. Here we are at the top of the mountain, and here I am bringing the dirt down and connecting both ends of the track. Finally, the entire racetrack is ready to go, and the little ones are now big ones. Let's grab some more saddles and test these out real quick. Another 17 with only a three block jump. Okay, it's time to move into horse breeding overdrive. I want to create a bunch of temporary pens outside the stables to have more horses breeding at once to give a higher chance of a better one. It's been 30 days since I got a faster horse, so I'm getting a little impatient. First horse is 17. Ooh, 4.5 jump though. Wait, next round is done and only three of those were even worth keeping, unfortunately. But at least that means I have a few more horses to breed now. Another round of force feeding hay bales. Dude, 
tamed the horses for another round of testing. I kept at this for another hour or so, breeding up horses and testing them out and staying busy to see what results I could get until... Oh, we got a 16 dirt horse! Four and a half. And now all of the slow 17 dirt horses are out of the stables and I have these three winners. That's 16 3.5, 16 3.8 and 16 4.9 don't worry i haven't murdered any horses they're all hanging out out here in the paddock i guess it's time to restart this entire process to work towards 15. for my next distraction project will the next babies grow up we can take a few emeralds with us to head into the villager cave and visit our stonemasons as i want to buy a lot of dripstone blocks and polish andesite i want to try bringing in some dripstone blocks along the edge here just to have a little bit of a retaining wall on the edge of the course near the stables itself if we go about this far out it should give us enough structure for the building this just makes it feel a lot more official along here and i i think i like it so far so that i can still get over to our testing tracks i'm thinking we do something a little bit like this to make it decorative and that should work a stable nearly full of 16 dirt horses just waiting on the last two to grow up but i need a bit of a break so let's do some redstone ha you never expected me to say that huh since the track goes all the way out over there and we start here at this corner i'm a little worried about this section unloading so i actually want the redstone timer to be somewhere out here in the middle as long as our starting and stopping delay is the exact same running a redstone line from there to here shouldn't mess up the count for having a little bit more distance to it so i'm thinking the final score is going to be right here with a hopper pointing into the barrel and that's going to control everything as we did with the old timer we're going to have a redstone block behind it for over here we're going to want our pistons like we did before to move the redstone block back and forth i'm trying to build a system here that's going to work off of the same tripwire hook so we need a start and stop activation that's going to invert each time which is where this is going to come in when our redstone block is next to the hopper that's going to be the race isn't running but if we move it over here that's going to allow us to bring this line down and activate it with the redstone block like this which means if we use a repeater right here that signal is going to get cut off but then if we move the redstone block back that repeater can power this block and send the line through here being able to start the race and if i throw a redstone torch in here we should see the whole thing flip and then that drops down then i do this again it comes back up and the redstone block is back on this side perfect next up we need to bring our redstone line all the way out over here and i think i want to run it underground if i trigger this does that activate yes i think i saw something just for another quick test yes yes it does now i just need to run the redstone line all the way from here over to our little timer make sure i did this one correctly let's just throw a temporary lamp right here and it should turn on can't see it it turned on yes that means it's working oh that's so good and then throw it again and it turns off oh our redstone timer set up the only thing i can't hide is this little spot so we'll just do a stair there and copy it to the far side so it looks like a support now this probably could have been done in a much better way but i made it myself and i'm super happy it works as a next step though i do want to hide it inside out a tower and i want a marker that the race has started so coming down here to the clerics i want to buy a ton of glowstone well actually that's probably enough as i need redstone lamps with this redstone line i have already running underneath we can bring it out this side a little bit more redstone and start building a redstone torch tower going all the way up and i think this layer will work out perfectly so if we do this with an observer facing that away that guy's gonna get pushed up to here which will create a chain of five observers for ourselves and then if we come out over this way we can add some more onto the end now this should be fun as we'll be able to create a looping circle the entire way and then over here i want to branch it off going again the opposite direction then on this corner we can continue that going all the way around to create a big old box in the sky getting rid of the dirt that we have down here and this should hopefully be everything and now if i start the race timer that stays on why do you stay on shouldn't you be looping why you no loopy uh, i gotta think of this one it's fine the observer was facing the wrong direction but look at this now it's a little slow but it gets going look at that oh i love it now if it's still working all the way over here that means the timer is good yes it breaks right here it it breaks right here simulation distance you go up there we go now it's working oh yeah the race truck will work for the hundredth time i have another distraction here because every good stable needs a good boy oh look at it oh. you buddy are gonna hang out right here okay thank you so very much oh you're great and now it's back to waiting for horses to grow up okay buddies 
let's go. The 15 dirt horse shall be mine. In the meantime, I need another project, this time with dispensers, as I want to create a fireworks show for finishing the race. As we have a bit of delay coming from over there to the redstone tower, which then the timer is going to need to bring the redstone line over here, I want to give ourselves a bit of space before we bring in the dispenser. So I'm thinking one here at the very end, and then we go seven blocks and we add in another one. Now from here, I need to grab this redstone line and send it all the way over there and hopefully not run into the other one I just built. And this should be all the space that we need to get everything working with maybe a little bit more cleared out over here. Redstone line is now in place coming all the way over in here to our fireworks setup, where if I run redstone right like that into the block, that'll activate the dispenser on top. I just got to keep them loaded. Excuse me, skeleton. I'm working down here. No, thank you. My spot. Copying the whip stone up to here, and then we can use the stone bricks as our marker line. Going to require a few tests to make sure the timing's right, but I think that'll work. The dispensers are going to have to be visible here up on the top, so I can just load them from this side whenever they run out, but I want to fill them with a ton of stuff. For a little test, let's throw a few rockets in each of them. And now if that goes there, that should turn off and rockets go. I want some big explosions for the fireworks. So running into the nether, let's grab some firework charges. Ooh, there's not too many in here. That should do it. Thank you, piggies. Next, a quick trip out to the swamp biome, as I need light blue dye, where four stacks of blue orchids should do it. Next up, I need a stack of roses and sunflowers to craft yellow dye red dye down into orange dye crafting these things is honestly so weird as it's leading me over to the raid farm where hopefully i do need gunpowder i do need that but i needed glowstone no we don't have much at all oh i've got another stack at home which means we can start to craft everything down i'm thinking we have a big explosion at the end here that's gonna have light blue and orange and a small one in the front with just orange and a small light blue one in the middle so our last step here is we need some gunpowder as now we craft our rockets like normal, but I'm also adding in the firework to give it the big effect. Sun is going down, so this could be a great spot for a quick trial run. We'll put three stacks in each as that should definitely hold me over for a long time. That's 180 something races. This should be starting the race and nothing will happen. Perfect. But when we finish the race, Oh, I love that. That's so good. I'm a very happy whip right now. Okay, let's build a tower. And by building a tower, I mean another round of horse breeding. New foals are ready to go. And I've got one more that actually needs to be tamed back here. And a 17. Ah, bummer, buddy. But you do get to live with all the other horses out here in the paddock. For the tower, let's grab some basalt, stone, deep slate, and andesite, as well as a lot of mud materials, tons of stripped logs. Somehow we're nearly 3,800 days into this world, and I've completely run out of gravel. This will at least keep me busy for now, I guess. Ignore the giant hole where there was once gravel, as I now have a lot of gravel. More flowers, more light gray dye, more light gray concrete powder. I want to turn one stack of this into concrete itself so we can tear this down real quick from the top going down. One more stop before we can finally get into building the tower, as I seem to be running out of everything right now. More bees and pigs and acacia trees, which is really what I need. Little over a stack here should do it. I seem to keep building over all of my tree chopping spots, so I'm gonna have to fix that one here real soon. But for now, I wanna build over the top of the timer with a flat wall to leave some signs to best mark my speedy times. Little something like this. Working towards the redstone lamps, I wanna make a large boxy tower that gets a tiny bit skinnier as it goes up. But, uh, oh, look at that. Quick distraction, the horses have grown. Have some carrots and be my friend. 16, 16, and 16. Next round of babies are in their stalls and back to the build. To fill in the gap over here where the redstone bit starts sticking out, I'm thinking we bring in a mud structure and for a little extra texturing, we bring in a little bit of our jungle planks. I'm not gonna see, be seeing this from up close, so I'm okay with just adding in the texture from afar. That'll probably seem like a little bit too much right now, but it should look a-okay from a distance. On the top here, we can make it a little bit more decorative by bringing in a few mud brick walls on top of upside down mud brick stairs and carry these stairs around to the side. For a final little bit out here on the front, I'm thinking we do something like this, add in a warp door, then a lantern to keep us safe. I'm only really going to come back in here if I need to tweak the redstone system where hopefully, I mean, I definitely know I built it perfectly, so I'll never ever need to come back in here. With the two extra attached structures finished, I'm focusing on stacking up the stone tower itself, trying to add in some shading to give it more interest from a distance. Flying away and yep. 
I like that a lot. That looks really good from a distance. Theme is ready to go, so I finish off the remaining stone walls to surround the redstone lamps. Hey now, we're not done yet. Up here on top, we need to finish off the top of the tower. Stacking up our oak planks and then all the way around here, I want to bring in upside down spruce stairs. To create a railing, I'm thinking we do some spruce slabs going around like this, where I'm very happy it's an odd number. It's a good thing when the math works out. I'm thinking we do a door right there, and then for this layer, I want to add crimson planks going for most of it with some windows right here, and then we can extend up to this tall? For the windows themselves, I'm thinking we just throw in some frog lights and ladders in front. Well, I didn't mean to fall. <laughs> How have I survived this long? I don't know. This works out pretty well. And then we can just do some warp trap doors for the color pop. And then I got to carry it all the way around for a big old box like this. Then we can bring in our slab and trap door action right around here again. With that in place, I'm putting on a dark prismarine roof with a small chimney. To set this all into the environment a little bit better, I'm thinking we build up a big old custom oak tree. And that's looking pretty good. And that is everything for the tower. One more round of horse taming and testing done and still no luck on the fabled 15 dirt horse. But I do have all of these babies we can test out here soon. But I've been doing this for a while and uh, I wanna get back into building. To start off, I'm leveling up this dirt area after the start of the race. And many of the little ones are now big ones. So a another end of horse testing for me, woo, yay. And no luck on any faster horses. I'm going to take that saddle back. I'm up to 384 animals bred. Now we started today at less than 150. I'm actually really having a good time adding in small details for this project, but I've run out of resources for building again. So as always, I need some spruce logs. Next over in the Mesa, as I'm here for red sand, but I kind of also want the dead bushes. Full stack of dead bushes, now for the red sand. There we go. Four stacks should do it for one stack of red sandstone. I love mining red sand. For one last stop, I need some mangrove logs. So let's see if we can find them in the mess of leaves. Back over at the racetrack now, I want to get started on this guy right away here. And I'm thinking we do one, two, three, four, five, and then two. And then we just inch our way up here, which will give us four layers of stands for people to sit on. And I think that's plenty. And an extra line of planks here along the back, just so you can walk around. I'm trying to think of a way to make this look more temporary so we can add in a few fences here. Like they just threw it together for some event happening. Probably want a few railings here. So maybe we do our spruce trap doors coming up the side and then mangrove trap doors above these. Now in the middle of these, I'm thinking for a little seat rest, we can just throw some more of our jungle trap doors in on top to keep on brand i'm using prismarine bricks and smooth red sandstone to create the sunshade this feels pretty basic but i think it does the part pretty well and look it's perfect for keeping the sun out while waiting for more horses to breed i decided to just spend some time building custom trees between testing each of the animals in hopes of getting the 15 dirt horse i ended up with a ton of different types of custom trees inspired by my previous birch forest biome and compiling with everything else inside of here which is starting to look really good around here i feel a lot more like we have an environment going on instead of just a building now I have just resorted to a pen of all of the 16 dirt horses seeing as um I have so many of them and everybody's out of 16 now so it doesn't matter who I breed with who they're all just hopefully gonna get faster at this point I hope I'm really just doing the math wrong and I already have the maxed out horse because uh, I'm going insane if someone can verify my math in the comments that would be fantastic <laughs> this guy feels real fast here and 16 dirt over 40 hours put into building the horse racetrack and i've now spent 20 hours alone trying to breed for the fastest horse with no luck so i guess the near 50 16 dirt horses i have are gonna have to do it's finally time to race around the track and i actually really like where's that light brown one this guy look at him he's so cool the racetrack itself is really solid and i'm really looking forward to detailing this more as i spend more hours inside the world to keep adding to it and keep trying to breed for that perfect horse my goal is to keep this world moving forwards all the time no project is ever truly finished and i can keep expanding upon them which makes me really really want to keep on playing the game just like i 
really want to come back in here and race this track a few more times. I'm nearing 4,000 days survived in hardcore Minecraft, which 90% of those days have been spent building. To prepare for new massive projects, I need to gather tons of materials. So today I'm building 10 auto farms to make my life easier. Also for every subscriber this video gets, I'll gather 10 blocks of dirt to transform the mountains surrounding my starter base. So please subscribe. The first farm I want to build today is a new way to get string as I keep running out. Now I do already have a triple spider spawner, but it's my original experience farm and requires a very long trip to get to. All the way up here in our original mining base, we have the spider farm that is uh, infested by glow squid. Really infested by glow squid. This definitely needs an upgrade. Nope. No, I hate spiders. I hate spiders. I hate this. I already regret this. Let's get some torches in here and turn off the farm. All of the farms are now disabled and I need to get rid of this water. But first, let's clear the spiders out because I don't want those coming back out of me. Much, much better now to remove all of the water and glow squads, apparently, as well as all of the fence gates. Around the walls, I want to place some water up here at the top on top of some fence gates to drown any spiders that are going to crawl up. All the fence gates are in place, and now I just need to fill this entire thing with water sources. That should do it now just to open every single one of these gates. For the cave spiders, they only need one block, so we can save a few fence gates. This should work for the second spawner. Third spawner is now done as well. I believe all the spiders can just spawn in the air around the spawner. So next, I just need them to fall to their deaths. So we got to dig this down about 20 blocks. I really should have set up a beacon, but the first pit is now done. Right, here we go. Pit number two and pit number three are now dug down to the same layer. Before we head out to grab any more materials, though, I need to come here into the middle and stack up some glass on top of the spawners just to make sure everybody who does spawn falls down. Now, I don't really need this killing chamber anymore, so we can also get rid of this. To collect the string, I need to craft some rails and powered rails, as well as three hopper minecarts. To ensure all the spooters die when reaching the bottoms, I'd like to bring some magma blocks with us. We're definitely making a better entrance to this, as currently I go down here, jump off the minecart as it continues on its way, and then we fly up here. <laughs> it's so bad. And you know, my random door that, yep, very secure entrance. Missing a few materials down here, so let's get ourselves some more hoppers. As we need a place to drop off all of our items. Hopper's right to there. Bearder looks at hopper, goes into redstone torch. Redstone torch looks into repeater, which then will power this. But if there's an item in here, it turns off. Great. With the unloading system hooked up, I need to next put down rails across the entire bottom. Then on top of all of the rails, we just need to throw in our magma blocks. Upper minecart in and it's a go. Here goes number two. And now number three with the hopper minecart. Okay, so here's two of the outputs. Where is the third? All the way over here. More redstone bits acquired. Oh, nailed it. No, 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 no. I tried looking so cool and I broke it. But next up, I need to move all the string up to the surface, which means we need a water system going all the way up to there and a way to get the items out of the hoppers into a water stream where something like this right here should work. Anytime an item goes in here, it should spit out. Nice. Farms two and three are so close to each other that I was able to hook them up to the same here and that should work some blue ice at the end and water here that should knock everything down to the end this should work for bringing all the items right down this way and leading us into our water elevator that needs some water i can just work my way up here to the top with a little bit of kelp but realistically i shouldn't need that much storage for it so we can just stack up a few chests or you know what because i really don't need that much let's just do some barrels run some hoppers into the back of these and with the kelp all the way up here that should work Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 not working. Swim down to the bottom, break the kelp, and we shoot back up. Final step to get the farms working again is to remove all of the torches. That should be the first one, and spiders are spawning. And they died. Perfect. Number two is done now as well. And before we do number three, I need more tinted glass. I'm completely out of amethyst shards, so I had to run back over to the Dwarven Village to where we have all of the mines to gather up a few. That right there should be plenty. Next, we can buy a little bit of glass from our librarians and use that to craft tinted glass. Now, this isn't super needed, but I just really like to look into my farms as I think it's kind of cool. So I'm filling out the middle walls with tinted glass. 
And now I can watch all three spider spawners fall to their doom forever. But I probably need a way to get in and out of here pretty easily. That 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 would be nice. Our route home is going to be pretty easy as I just need to dig down to connect in with the existing tunnels I use for branch mining. And there we go. That should be home. Now if I put a powered rail here at the end and a button, that's our start stop. And then we just got to run our way all the way along with some more powered rails as we go. And we can have the really fancy stop just like right there. No, no, I was supposed to be in that. <laughs> this will take us all the way from the mining outpost over to our brand new string farm. And if I stand anywhere on these polished andesites, all three of them are active and we're getting tons of string. Farm one, done. Next up, I'm putting two simple farms in the same space for my favorite decoration items glow berries and hanging roots, which is going to require some string to craft bows and then dispensers i also need a piece of rooted dirt and some glowberries i want to hide this farm inside of the water mill in my city as it still doesn't have an interior and that's two birds with one dirt so if we count one two three four five we can create a strip of dark oak logs going all the way back here then i'm thinking right about here we can have the farms so we put rooted dirt there and glowberries here dispensers looking at both of those things and some observers behind now if we use some levers right in front of these guys that should get Get power down here over to this where you can put a sticky piston and a second observer then if i turn that on that should flick the dispenser perfect now for the other one we're going to use a repeater right here sticky piston and observer reason being is i want to do a hopper and a hopper so we can auto load bone meal from a chest right up here we can have a little access door right back in there and then i think we can just continue up our wall along this way slabs on top of the chest so we can still open it but it looks like it's part of the ceiling now to help close the space off a little bit more i think we can do a wall right over here and then we can start working on the ceiling with some dark oak slabs coming all the way across skip two blocks and do that right here too and use the fun bottom texture i want to run composters across the entire top like this just you know for fun which is starting to look pretty good but no this is looking even better in here we've got a full interior and a little place to sleep off to the side and i'm almost out of bone blocks oh we'll do this many we just load all the bone meal in the top here now if we turn this guy on we should be able to just break all of the rooted dirt that we want well hanging roots off the rooted dirt and i am a very happy flipper right now and this should work for all of the glow berries we're ever gonna need over here we can put all of our hanging roots in right next to that we have storage for the glow berries oh this is gonna be perfect i can't help it i want more much better. I'm very happy with that. Before we jump to the next farm, I need to fix up my tools, which requires a quick trip into the nether. I'm getting really good at flying down the tunnel. Ooh, look at that. Where we can head on down into the wither skeleton farm. I think the... No, there's skeletons. I think the farm broke. The piglin's gone. But that's a lot of skeletons. Okay, can I land this safely up here? and they will all fall in that's a lot of wither skeletons that is a lot <laughs> oh i'm terrified we're gonna kill all of them and then we're gonna deal with this later how did that happen that's so sad oh this farm took forever to build well mostly digging the pit but you get the idea it took forever to get the pig in there now for the next farm i need sweet berries as i want more decor blocks and apparently i want to torment myself with luring foxes around down here is gonna be a great spot for a vineyard just trust me we just got to remove all of the trees down here first now all i've done today is build farm so before you all disappear let's build something people like me for more than my builds right 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 yeah yeah i'm sure grabbing a few empty shulker boxes here as i'm gonna need a lot of materials for this build starting with chopping down a few spruce trees this should hopefully be plenty spruce logs and i'll be sure to replant all of the saplings i got to keep the mega taiga growing i think i actually need some core dirt too so we're just gonna grab that here and mossy cobble i've been really enjoying the designing aspects for builds recently and just going hard with texturing so i had to run around and grab a ton of random materials from all of my chests to make that happen today except there still are a few items i am missing which brings us to the coral reef as i want dead coral blocks A good build always starts with a large shulker monster. I want to raise this build up to sit a little bit more on the hillside over here so we can build out a small retaining wall. 
with a few slabs on top just to make it a little bit better and we'll bring some grass in front of this to take it all the way down then for an outdoor patio we can use dead coral and mud to texture the base and a few decorations added around the edge already with some sweet berries in for the house itself i want to darken this lower section by bringing in some of our stripped dark oak logs and then we can use some barrels here that'll actually be the storage for the sweet berries in the end a few trap doors hidden right up here on top of them so we can throw hoppers going all the way along the back with a small area hanging over the top of it to create a second balcony now to access this section, I'm adding in an attached building using some wider blocks to contrast the main one with a big old copper gear on the back for funsies. This is starting to look pretty good in here. Jumping back to the main building, I'm going with a stone pallet on the front face with my favorite addition of a bay window. And then a warmer gray over on this side, which we can add in a little extra decor like this. Now, this is a fantasy world after all, so I'm adding in some strip warp blocks here as like pipes sticking into the building. We've got a giant gear wheel, so the pipes just kind of complete the look, just like adding a giant chimney sticking high into the sky. And to make this balcony over here look a little bit more decorative, I'm thinking we can bring in a little purple and pink terracotta to add that winery vibe almost. And we can break up the roof with a window here and I'm using the verdant frog lights behind and a little warp trap doors for our shutter. To finish everything off, I'm adding in a deep slate roof, trying to keep some darker tones near the chimney to help it pop more. With that, I am extremely happy with the vineyard building. Now, before we build the vineyard itself, I need to find some fuxes to, you know, set up the berry farm. So let's grab ourselves some leads and some more rockets as we're off on an adventure. And I think I have an idea where some foxes might be i should actually grab some berries to bring with me too a long time ago when i attempted to complete all the advancements in this world we had to find some foxes to breed them and well they were in the taiga over here somewhere and there's where we killed our strider in the rain nice now where did these guys run off to nope that's a pig that's that's a pig adventure time doesn't mean i can't come home without anything but i don't find foxes at least i got more lily of the valley nighttime's coming and i realized i uh forgot my bed so sorry sheepies you had to go <gasps> I think this was the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where it was. Please, please, foxes. Last I saw them, they were right here. It's only been like 2,000 days. They'll still be here, right? I don't think I've ever been this far north in the world, so everything out here should be brand new, and maybe we can find a snowy fox, like a white fox. That'd be amazing. But I'll settle for any fox. Any fox, please. I just found some foxes. There's a baby and an adult. Yes. And yes, we have them. Oh, this is amazing. I caught them killing some chickens. Look how cute they are i love them there's more there's more wait, 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 wait please please he's got an emerald what's the chance of them spawning with an emerald in their mouth <gasps> buddy i love him look at him he's so cute name ideas in the comments please look at them they're all adorable foxes leave the bunny leave it leave it no leave it no we're not gonna kill the chickens either leave the chickens no no follow me welcome to your new home oh we still got a ways to go but you know we're we're almost there here we are back in civilization population me and my my furry friends watch the berries watch the oh wait you guys are immune to them <gasps> oh walk through them all you want now for the ultimate test can we get past the chicken coop just come with me there's no ch don't kill the parrots don't kill the parrots don't okay okay i got really nervous there for a second oh we lost a fox no i lost another fox oh this is awkward this is terrible nope 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 give me that lead we will put all of you there and where's the last one oh he got on the boat oh that's great and i believe i can give you and you a berry and we'll get another fox and it's another white one <gasps> i love that now for the actual sweet berry farm before we build the vineyard which we can dig down here underneath the building and create space for it Right, this is taking too long. I should have done this to begin with. Let's build a beacon. Okay, back to mining we go. This is gonna be a lot faster. Down this layer, we should be able to fill it with stone bricks. Then our rails are going on top of that. Then we put our dirt here, berries, air block, and then our glass floor. And that'll give us three blocks above, perfect. Next up, we can build an item unloading system for our minecart, right? Like this. If I can find where I put all my powered rails, 
What the heck did I do? Oh, they're right there. I'm blind. <laughs> Color blindness is great. We're putting the rails down so I don't accidentally dig into it. Let's put our stone bricks all over. I'm going to need a lot more rails for this, though. First off, putting in redstone blocks to power all of our rails, and then adding in all of the rails to cover the floor and grass blocks on top. To light this up, I want to place our verdant frog lights going around the entire outer rim. Now, after that one, I need to run around and pick up ow, 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 as many sweet berries as I can. Hopefully, we can get about four stacks from the bushes I have around the base. Oh, hey, here's a ton over here. First trip around the starter base, and we got a little over a stack. Wait a second here. Can't I just bone meal them? Like these decorative bushes. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Four full stacks. Now, I'm not sure if I still need to do this or not, but you used to have to put an armor stand down here for an entity to be nearby for foxes to keep working. So we'll put it in just to be safe. But for now, we just throw in the rest of the berries. There we go. All placed in with one extra. Now, since I'm going to be able to see inside this thing, I kind of want to decorate it. So along the walls here, we can fill this all in with our jungle planks, which looks much better. And for our final step, white glass along the top. With the box completed, I set up the item elevator to move the berries up into the barrels. Last thing I still need to do is come in here and place a redstone block and a piston to move that glass block down in place. And now I need to get some foxes in here. Why is it just the middle berries haven't grown? Everything on the outside of the trunk has, except these in the middle. Ooh, spooky. I don't know. Let's move some foxes. I really want to keep the one that has the emerald in its mouth up here. So which is that? No, it's you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get you, hook you back up. And then I'm grabbing all of these. And who wants a berry instead of a lead? Okay. There's two of them. Do you want a berry? Yeah, you want a berry. You're snoozling. We'll get you in a minute. You can snoozle. Have your berry for when you wake up. These foxes are driving me crazy. I keep losing them. Get down here, everybody. Give me those leads back. Give. Thank you. No, I'm just throw them all over the floor. Right. If I let you loose, will you just go down with the berries? There's one in. There goes number two. And number three is in. Perfect. Snoozle fox, you can just hang out up here. Thank you for the lead back. Enjoy your berry. You keep the emerald. And look at that. We have our first berries coming in. They're already working. I hung around in the area to decorate the entrance a little bit here so we can get down to the foxes. And in the meantime, we now have almost four stacks of sweet berries. I got to the start on the vineyard itself down here where I'm working on a coarse dirt road to kind of connect over to the river and the other fields. And then from here, I just need to fill in dirt around the entire way. Little double dirt action and the valley is ready for berries, which we can pick up from our lovely barrel and that's a lot of them. I like this farm. Here I want to border the road by just creating these large lines of our berries going up into the hill. Fun little building tip here is if you're trying to make a vineyard of sorts, having it on a slope is actually the more realistic way to do it because they want to make the vines really work for it because apparently it makes better tasting fruit for all of the wine and stuff. There's your random building tip of the day. And with this, I think the spruce leaf can actually match in pretty well as being just a random darker one. So we can dot a few of those in here. We're not going to be harvesting this because we have the auto farm that's producing more than I'm ever going to need. Back to my favorite Minecraft activity, planting in a field for the vineyard to just complete the cozy vibes. It feels a little all over the place though. So I'm thinking as our last step here, I want to bring in a stone wall of sorts, just kind of blocking this area off from everything else going on. Probably more so on this side. I want to add in some custom trees in here soon, but we'll have to get to that later as we still have a lot of farms to build. But this, this looks really good. Oh, I love it. Just look at the vibes. Oh, I love it so much. Okay. I bet you thought that was today's field, huh? Nope. That was a bonus field. Now for the real hardcore episode field, the one where every video I ask you to subscribe to my channel and leave a like on the episode. Wait, that's a bonus ask for the second field, so it's fine. But if you enjoy my content, any support you can show really does help me out here on the platform. And I'm extremely thankful to have such an awesome community here. So thank you for being you and keep at it. Just like I'll keep at making more fields in this hardcore world as long as I can. I had to come all the way over here to the mud castle. I'm just kind of starting to run out of space. Two fields in one episode. You are all lucky today. Let's dive down into the nether cave for the next farm. As I need gunpowder. My gas farm is currently broken and I'm slowly running out of supplies. I need to replace the entire middle line of each cobblestone row with a light source block. For this, I want to use frog lights since I can grab them down here, where we can use pearlescent frog lights and ochre frog lights. Ochre, ochre, I don't know. Alternating layer by layer as I don't have enough of each individual one to fill it all in with one type of frog light. And I want to get this done now. So a decision 
had to be made with what I had available. As I did make the largest possible gas farm at the time, so this took well over an hour to replace everything. But now if I fly all the way up here, the gas farm is working great. I've already built out a string farm, two micro farms for hanging roots and glowberries, a fox powered sweet berry vineyard, and now finally the gas farm is fixed. Now, what is a block you never use in Minecraft? For me, it's uh, dried kelp blocks. I just kind of forgot they existed, to be honest. Next, we're changing that by building an auto kelp farm. You know what? I do have this open storage building here we could use. It's very finished. But first, I need to dig down underground and clear out a space for the kelp to grow. I'm going to use a lot of cobble in this build, so let's grab our fortune pick. And to get to work on clearing out the space underneath. I just zoned out and got digging, so I guess this is how big the kelp farm's gonna be. Huh. Which means I'm gonna need tons of pistons, observers, and sea lanterns. Now, this farm is pretty simple. It just requires a row of blocks on the base, pistons on top of those, a row of blocks behind the pistons, redstone dust on top of that, and observers looking forwards. Stacked up as many times as I can till the top. Now I need to flood this space for kelp to be able to grow. We run some dirt all the way along here. I can just fill this in with a water source and let it cascade down. Where hopefully this is gonna work and it's gonna fire the pistons a lot. It's gonna fire them a ton. I think this might work though. Yeah. Back at the base real quick, I can grab some kelp out of here and start placing that in on top of all of the observers. And we have kelp farm, but I need a dried kelp farm, which can start with signs going all the way along here. Already kelp is making it to the bottom. Okay, this is gonna produce a lot of stuff. I need to move the kelp into a smelter to create dried kelp. So here we have a water system going into an elevator where we can use kelp to create it. And that'll take it all to the top to right here. Let's start with two double chests here of regular kelp just to have it in case I want it. And then we can run six smokers to smelt everything that are gonna go into their own own sets of double chests. This system is going to really easily overflow. So do we got, oh yeah, maybe that goes right there. So just to be safe, let's add some fire here at the end to burn any excess items. These are going to very quickly run out of fuel. So they're all going to need their own supplies, which we can do to do some barrels from behind. Eventually we can use the kelp blocks themselves as a fuel source. But for now we can grab all the coal from here and stone swords. So many stone swords. We can throw a few stacks of coal in each barrel. That should be enough fuel for now. And this should work for the fully automatic dried kelp farm some extra storage around for when we get more of the blocks and a little cart outside that's covered to keep the kelp dry while it's being transported and there we go another building in the city finished out i think we can all agree mangrove wood is great gathering mangrove logs not so great. So we're building Kangarook's mangrove tree farm. And I want it in the city right down here. So once again, I need to dig out a hole to fit this farm inside so it doesn't look awful in the city. He's too ready to go and let's get to work. And the hole just needs to be about this big. And I gotta go down like uh, 30 blocks. Yay! Now I could definitely just build the farm off in the distance somewhere to keep it out of sight as it'd be sticking out like a sore thumb in this world. But in an effort to build a connected world, I also want the redstone farms I build to be connected to things and hidden inside of the world I am creating. This gives me a reason to actually walk around and see my builds when I need to access the farms underneath them. Here we have the pit and why, 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 why? Why, 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 why do I do this to myself? Look at all these blocks. So many blocks and two very dead pickaxes. As a plus though, it is right next to the copper factory. So copper can age while I gather mangrove logs. With the pit completed, I do need to fill it up with the mangrove tree farm now. So I don't just stare at this thing I spent an hour clearing out. So instead I set off to gather a ton of different materials to bring this thing together. Only two items left to pick on up. First, I need some powdered snow, which we can grab up here. Then I need a stack of blaze powder eight stacks of obsidian and a trip to the end out to the end render to grab a little experience and repair up the tools but at the same time i need the pearls to craft eyes of ender which we can use to craft a stack of ender chests
with that done i'm really trying to learn how to understand redstone but man this one is breaking my brain so i couldn't even formulate a sentence while following along with the tutorial so this time lapse will just make me look really professional while i actually build up the farm and then this mess up top that i definitely haven't rebuilt twice now but i do have a diving board that is supposed to be for tnt so i'm really hoping this doesn't blow everything up oh no that dirt's not supposed to be there just a quick another bucket of powdered snow right here i am so terrified of this let's try this again does that do it and i think it worked i think it worked that's a lot of exploding tnt number one slight problem here as i only have that much bone meal left i don't think i've run the moss farm for bone meal since i got the wither skelly farm but that that can get us started that can get us started we can throw that all inside here and we're definitely going to need more to run the farm for longer now for the true test does it turn on and do things it looks like it's doing oh it's trying oh things explosions and it's doing it again okay now i just look right here and we have a mangrove tree look at that oh i love this now i just sit here this would be great I really try not to AFK in this world, but unfortunately some farms do require the player to be involved. So I sat around for about 30 minutes watching as mangrove trees blew up in front of me. I prefer to get as much done as possible in as few days as possible instead of bloat the day count with AFK time, you know? But this year is gonna be so nice for building. Just like the building over the top. Hey look, distraction! I need mangrove propagules to run the farm but i'm all out now and to get those i need bone meal so let's dive into the nether and fix the wither skeleton farm please don't make it worse well first and foremost unfortunately my pig disappeared so we need a new one from over there well first and foremost i need to get the guy in here he'll stand on top of the trap door we open it and he will fall down there we name tag him and go so let's take a ton of stone slabs and work out to the far side out on the far side i need to find a piglin carrying a sword not a skeleton with a buff preferably a live piglin with a sword and definitely not a baby piggy oh piglin ah he's got a bow oh, i'm so quick nobody can get me piglin you have a bow there's one okay yes 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 yes. hi buddy come with me all the way over here keep up please no 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 me 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 oh you're scared of him i'll get rid of him for you right here's the piglin and down here is my stone platform hey maybe he needs a staircase to get down no 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 <sighs> stupid pig not the time guess okay he missed come on come with me can you walk on slabs no 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 buddy buddy no buddy no buddy no he can walk on slabs yep he's coming no he ran into the oh you're so duh <laughs> i hate piglins new piglin is in tow right here we go into the middle yet again and this time i've got guardrails and a lot of wither skeletons okay i'm just gonna get rid of all of these if i name tag you right oh no he's gonna be able to get out sorry we're doing very important things right now can't have any wither skeletons thank you now if i open this you should just fall directly onto the platform and he's in yes okay and i should be able to put the glass back in there and a little button on top to spawn proof it and i think that's everything now i think this is what killed the pig the first time is they jumped on top of these walls by getting pushed and then they could get up there so we're just gonna add some extra walls how did you just spawn over there how did you, how did you just this is you, what Right, wither skeletons are spawning and they just safely fell down to the bottom. So let's get rid of this platform for now, all the way back to here, just in case I need another one. Now that the farm is up and operational, we can still slightly improve it. Nope, 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 look at the pick. The original nether fortress had walkways leading off from this cross section. So I can add in some netherite going five blocks out and the wither skellies will still aggro on the piggy in the middle. This year should work for the first and I have two more to do. Unfortunately, the fourth side was at the end of the fortress. So there's no additional spawning spaces to move into, but these three additions should help, which it looks like they already are. Finally, I want to also remove the TNT machine over here. It's only been about six months but it feels great to have this gone now after that gas spawned all the way up there i installed mini hud to see if the perimeter needed some work and well um this big red sphere here that's everything that can spawn mobs right now so oh no I need to run around and remove all of the blocks inside of the sphere to hopefully improve the rates even more 
Well, this is a lucky find. Two ancient debris, I forgot. I'll take those. Oh, wait, there's a third. I know it's not 100% vanilla, but I did spend over 200 hours clearing this place out originally, so I think it's fair to save the extra hour not doing the math on what I missed. And there we go. The entire Wither Skelly perimeter is clear. I just need so many bone blocks. Doggos are going to take over now, but check that out. That is going to do nicely. Time to go look at the nice blue sky in Minecraft. I'm feeling very done with the nether today. With the bone meal acquired, I can build up the propagule farm now, so I got all the materials I need together. This is really similar to my glow lichen farm. I just need as many dispensers as possible, looking at the mangrove leaf to make the propagules grow super fast. I'm just gonna hide it underneath the street of the industrial district near the mangrove farm and uh we'll turn it into a basement soon but for now we can take nine stacks of bone meal and add that to each of our dispensers and make magic happen yep magic happening magic very much happening oh my gosh it's so loud <gasps> it's leaking that might help i don't know we'll see no it didn't help at all actually i think it made it worse less than a minute later and we already almost have four stacks and there's a glass pane in there moving on as one of my favorite blocks in minecraft is the mushroom stem except it's really difficult to farm in bulk so i want to build a mushroom tree nursery to grow the big boys and i'm thinking right over here is gonna do great mushrooms can be planted on pods all in any light where otherwise it needs complete darkness but we can grow that up here and they grow three blocks out in every direction but from there i should be able to plant another big one and they're nearly connected but i could go five blocks and it still works they just overhang <gasps> perfect still this means i need to clear out a large amount of trees here on the far side of spawn to make space for our mushroom trees i want to fit as many mushroom trees in here as possible so taking puzzle i started with a grid spread out by five blocks each this is currently 18 mushroom growing points right now so let's try and fit in a few no we're gonna get really close over here okay we'll go for 22 of them Using string from the spider farm, I crafted up 22 dispensers here that we can use to automatically bone meal all of our mushrooms. Now I just need to dig around underground to find them all. Oh, oh no. From here, I want to use a redstone clock, so if we activate that, that'll come down here. Repeater powers that block, then we go into another repeater. That'll power this block, and we can loop that around for a clock. Now, underneath every single one of our dispensers, I added in a redstone torch. So we can actually do that, and that'll activate it straight away. So now I just need to snake some redstone lines all the way around. I should probably light this up down here as it's uh, turning into a bit of a rave, but that should be everything hooked up. <laughs> I just hope it turns off. Oh, it's very dark outside. That right there should turn everything off. Yes. Yes, it's going to work. Now I need to load every dispenser here with a little bit of bone meal. I'm thinking three stacks in each is going to do the trick. And there we go. With a flick of the lever, this should grow every single one of the trees. Yes. Yes, we're getting there. They might be a little too close together, but you know, that's a that's a pretty good start. That's a that's a pretty good start. I'm going to run out of brown mushrooms real quick, so I need a fortune three axe to get some more. We can buy a new one here. Now, for the first time in a very long time, I took the enchant off and let's see if we can just roll fortune. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We'll, we'll start there. We'll buy a book. We can pick up a new mending book an efficiency four and fortune three. <laughs> Oh, goodbye, Anvil. <laughs> Efficiency five and mending. Lastly, we can take one of our netherite ingots and upgrade this to a new netherite axe. I almost said pickaxe. It's an axe. Using the fortune axe on all of our brown mushrooms and then silk touching our way down the stems. We can just place that back. Looks like every harvest is going to give a little over four and a quarter stacks and over a stack of mushroom stems at this rate. We can also get our brown mushroom blocks as they all grow back. Please grow. Please grow. Please grow. Oh, we're wasting so... Okay. Flip redstone. Yay. Flip redstone. Yay. Right? Right? Yeah, that's great. With this, though, I should be able to just go around and gather up all these mushrooms, which I'm doing for the blocks this time. With all those cleared out, I should be able to just do this, and then all of these trees will grow. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Oh, I love my farm. And yeah, look how many blocks I got. This is honestly really good. Look at that stem. That's a nice stem 
There we go. 10 new farms ready to go in the hardcore world. I have one week to record this video. And for some reason, my brain said, hey, Flip, building a mountain could be fun. So starting from this flat hill, I'm attempting to build a mountain in hardcore Minecraft in a week. And what have I done so far? Nothing. One very important thing to building mountains in survival is a lot of rockets to fly around and my rocket box is nearly empty so a quick stop for a little bit of sugarcane turned into paper and a stop at the monolith to grab a little gunpowder from the gas farm to craft into firework rockets and that is much better with a few shulker boxes here completely filled up with stone well, almost. And a few grass blocks. It's time to get started on the mountain. Where from here, we can add in a few guidelines and I want to continue on from our monolith mountain over there to probably about here. Then the terrain is gonna actually swoop back down in here to about this height and fly back into the sky at our highest peak. Building custom terrain in Minecraft requires a lot of steps to get done right, especially in survival. I don't have any fancy world edit plugins to make this for me, so to start out, I want guidelines to tell me roughly how tall each of the peaks will be. And I think this right here is a good first step. Now from here, I wanna try and create a line between all of the peaks to create a form of silhouette shape kind of for this whole thing. And now at the scale of this project is really setting in. I might be in trouble to do this in a week as I'm already halfway through day one. But if I can get the shapes in today, that'll be a success as right now it doesn't look uh, too great. Let's start with the smaller peak here and just start setting things in stone where the first shulker is already empty and let's grab some more. I got a little carried away building out this section, but I think I like it. Quickly back to the viewing tree. Ooh, yes, I do like it. Now for the sake of time, I'm only gonna focus on the front. And once we get that sorted, then we can uh, think about the back. As for now, it's uh, just this. Yep. And there goes another hour of mountain work and a lot of progress has been done so far on the smaller peak. But I only have a stack of grass blocks left and, and we're through just over two shulker boxes of stone. I still have tons of stone to work with, but with already two shulkers down, I want to get the texturing materials together as it sounds like I'm going to be needing a lot of them. For the general shadows, I use tough blocks and acacia logs on the original mountain. Starting with acacia logs, I'm planting tons of saplings to move the process forwards. To save some time, I did bone meal up a lot of those saplings in order to get chopping. Now, I already have a ton of saplings from building the Giga Tree, so I did spend about 30 minutes gathering leaves off the top to fill two shulker boxes of acacia leaves. There was still tons left, but I decided to just leave it alone and get chopping on all of the logs since it was gonna take a while. Nearly 40 minutes but later, but we can add to the pile here for one and a half shulkers of acacia logs. I think I'm gonna need more. Next, diving down into the caves for the tough blocks. I scavenged through the branch mines trying to find pockets of it and ended up doing a little bit of caving throughout just some random caves I found, which is what you do in Minecraft when you find caves. But over here, we now have two shulker boxes nearly full of tough blocks and 90 diamonds. Now for the highlights, I'm using light gray wool and light gray concrete powder. Let's start with the wool here as I do have the sheep farm down the mountain and hopefully it's been running for a while no no we uh we've been using a lot of light gray wool i guess let's grab a little bit of wheat from the wheat farm which you are very full Ooh, i love this i've already dyed all the sheep outside to light gray wool so we can just breed them all up as the more sheep we can get down here means the more wool i'm gonna be able to get right i think that's everybody now and <laughs> that's a lot of little sheep oh Wait, if I hold this and I just shear, they all come to me. That's every sheep sheared now, and that's uh, under a stack and a half. Okay, that's not good. That's not good. Shulker monster, shulker monster, please. 10, there's, there's 10. Right, that's gonna be a problem. We'll deal with the wool situation soon, but I have more important matters to attend to, like creating light gray concrete powder. That should fill the shulker. Flying over our beautiful mountain range, we can stop at the white tulip farm for these white tulips to create light gray dye. Yep, that's a thing. But now we have light gray concrete powder. We'll craft more as we need it later, but for now we've got a full shulker. Before we get the last blocks together, I have an extremely important thing to do. Naming these two adorable foxes. Here we have M 
and snoozle not that this berry farm isn't already producing so much might need to hook up a composter these berries here in the middle aren't growing because there's not enough light so we can make the farm even more efficient with just the little glow lichen right in here and i think it'll be enough i'm gonna regret this <laughs> Oh, professional. And now everything in the middle here should be growing. Another stop to the dirt storage room where I want to grab a ton of mud. Uh, never mind. Never. I will not be grabbing a ton of mud. The last two terraforming materials, I wanted to use mud and basalt where we do have plenty of basalt. So that's good. As this will allow me to make some more drastic shadows and keep with kind of a bluey tone that should help it feel natural, but still kind of on the fantasy side I'm going for. I definitely want more mud. And if anything, I'll use it for builds later. So I ran out to the mangrove swamp and completely ignored the fact that I built a mud farm to gather up a ton of mud and you know, further destroy this biome. That's two sugar boxes of mud full and a little extra for the packed mud box slight distraction here i did find a buried treasure map on my way home and it should be right here i'm guessing this spot no that spot free heart of the sea and tnt here we've got our little shulker monster for our big mountain first full day of work and i have a good start so far but now it's time to focus on how the mountains will merge into the terrain below down here i want to create some large rock faces like the whale rock to bring the baseland up into the mountains here's the first one and they're all going to be about this large it's going to be interesting trying to work this into the terrain below because i don't want to completely remove the dirt so we'll see how this is all going to land like these are probably slow inch their way down into here we can have another one starting below it kind of right about here that's going to stick out a touch further and we can end with a second box like this it's about the same size so we've got to add some more third one's now in place I think this spot right here is pretty perfect for a waterfall. So we can start framing out a position for it with some taller rocks. I just keep flying away and looking back and uh, I think that'll work. Maybe a little taller and much better. I'm calling these rocks the great beans because as I added in more shapes, I realized they all look like beans and now we have a big bean wall. This looks like a pretty good start, but I do need to figure out how we can bring the rocks around the corner and merge into the existing mountain terrain. I think we can take the idea of just having some large random rocks rocks and maybe start one right over here some of these rocks are going to be sticking out and others are just kind of along the landscape i'm fine everything's fine i'm just gonna you know for no reason whatsoever just kind of spontaneously i'm gonna light up this cave with some torches i didn't hear the sizzle at all oh no i did need to remove that dirt though so thank you creeper then from here we can just turn the rock into the grassy landscape for the rolling hill leading into the mountain i don't want to completely replace the entire hill that we have down here so i think we can just work the slope all the way up into the mountain edge itself but with that first rock sorted we can start adding in a few extras and i'm thinking we're gonna have a few that do overhang i think this will be pretty short but a wide boy I know I'm still in the early stages here, but I'm really excited when I can finally start adding some trees to really bring this place alive. Adding in the additional rocks below, this should be enough place down to balance out the terrain itself. From the old raid farm, it's starting to look pretty good. Now to fill in all of the stone walls to make this look a little more solid. There are only so many things I can say while placing down stone blocks that sound interesting. So this is a very interesting statement about me placing stone blocks to create big stone beans. Very interesting. Man, I can't wait to rebuild all of these with the texturing blocks. But now the beans need some grass blocks on top. I like these boulders. These are some nice boulders. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I need to plant a field. Even though I'm on a time crunch here, I can't forget the most important part of a hardcore video, building a new field in this world. Imagine if I skipped an episode of building a field and we are forever a field short. That'd be awful. Just like imagine if you missed a hardcore episode because you weren't subscribed and you'd feel forever like you missed a little bit of this world. So be sure to double check that you've subscribed as YouTube could be YouTubing and breaking things. I really appreciate all of your support. So thank you for taking the time to subscribe and leave a like on this episode little potato field done time for the big bean mountain back to work on the mountain as i want to finish shaping this out of stone but i've only got a little over a shulker left are any of these full of stone 
No, but this one is empty. Scavenge together a few boxes here, and thankfully, I've got enough stone down here. I just needed boxes to move it with. This is why hoarding all your resources is a good thing. You have them in random chests. All stone. With the materials ready to go, I spent the entire next day working on stone casting the mountain, working out each unique section, and taking the time to get it right, as it'll hopefully save a lot of time later when I get into texturing. The first section of the large peak looks pretty good, though. I worked on the peak next, as I felt if it was done, I can just work down from there but that didn't stop me from allowing my brain to just work out the elements it wanted to in the moment which turned into a lot of jumping around and building the rock shapes out all over the entire mountain until it's stitched together i started to just let myself define the large outlines to fill in later on then coming back to fill in all of those shapes with all of the stone that i had on hand before trying to connect this down to the grassy hill and the large rocks i previously developed which i am extremely happy to see all of this merging together into the existing terrain but that's five shulker boxes of stone down however looking at where we started this week this is already a massive amount of progress for hardcore minecraft mountain building two days down and i'm actually on the fourth day as yesterday was my wife's birthday so i decided to spend that with her instead of playing minecraft all day but happy birthday sid and i got a mountain to build i picked up a little bit more stone but before we get back into it i need to breed up the sheep one more time and hopefully this will actually repair my wings a bit how did you get out there and how are you out there ah that actually worked pretty well on the repairing excuse me excuse me no no why are... how did you guys even get here i also want to use moss to texture the grassy areas so let's turn on the moss farm and let this run while we get our wool because uh actually there's a decent amount but i think we're gonna need more thankfully the light gray wool is pretty easy to get even if it's just a little tedious to keep shearing all the sheep been here gathering wool for like 20 minutes and all the sheep just keep staying stuck up here at the top so i had an idea what do you think if there was like a block in minecraft like the village bell that keeps villagers nearby it but for bred animals that could put like right here and they'd stop trying to phase through the fence like this guy almost six more stacks of wool here but i want to get back and finish building out the mountains by that i mean i'm almost basically out of dirt too which means i can start to repay back on my promise right now i owe 6150 dirt Four shulker boxes are full over here, but some is grass, so I still owe about 2,000 dirt. Next, I want to finish filling in the open gaps here before we start placing too many stone blocks again. Connecting the mountain to the big bean rocks is making me really, really like how this is turning out so far. I'll be honest, I'm a bit worried about completing the back in the remaining time I have, as I haven't started to texture at all yet. But I need to figure out the shape that this is going to take on, where I think we're going to bring in some stone back here so I can start to plan how I need to wrap around the main mountain section so that we can easily line it up later as my plan is to hide the nether tree farm in a giant rock like we have this guy then we'll probably have another prong coming off this direction kind of down towards the stables trying to avoid making too much of a plus shape here but something like that i think will work with that in mind i need to start wrapping around and seeing how much i can get finished up on the main mountain itself so far I've got two rocks figured out down here for I want to loop them around. And then I also built this thing coming out the back that the clouds are blocking. I'm just going to turn this off. But it's kind of hanging out here, meaning now I need to balance it by extending the mountain out further. So that line's going to work great. I think this is going to extend up here and we can bring the dirt out just a little bit further. Most of this will probably be moss at the end, just so it's super bright. For now, I think we can just extend the dirt out like this and maybe pump it out here just a little bit further. It's at the point in a terraforming project where I'm just like, yeah, just throw the block in. It'll be fine what's the worst that could happen pulling a bit of an audible out here and i think i'm just gonna extend the grass out this way and we'll figure out how it lines up later but i think it's gonna look really nice i've almost got the entire peak cased in here i've just got this one little section left and got distracted by placing grass blocks down but we can fix that right now i was gonna say much better i forgot a block professional minecraft replaceable 
<laughs> Nailed it. Definitely what I intended to do. Definitely. You know, you can't even tell where I put that one. Yeah, it's great. You know how I mentioned just needing time to place blocks in and figure it out? I decided to spend the next two hours doing just that and spamming in as much stone down as possible on the big boy, which I gotta say is looking much more substantial now. And I'm really happy with it. It's coming all the way back here too. Just uh, ignore the giant darkness underneath. We just need to now sort out this smaller one over here, where I do think I can make it look a lot better by adding in some additional depth here onto the back side, which will make it feel more full and less wonky like it currently is. Quick little flyaway here, and that looks a lot more mountainy, so I think that's good, right? Yeah. Now I need to bring this side out here even further because uh, it still is a weirdly weighted on the front. With this curving back here, I think I want to create this into like a really shadowy area. So we're going to stretch the rock out this way and invert the curve a bit further. That that looks like a good line. Yeah, hopefully I'm spending a lot of hours on this one. Okay, so this is really not making sense in my brain right now. For some reason, I can't figure it out. So we're going to try something new and jump down here to the bottom and just like work my way up. Ow, not like that come up to about here so it's like halfway in between those we can do a small little grassy section and then we're gonna go a pretty gradual slope up here that's just gonna be like highlighted rocks and then a big element i'm trying to keep inside of this terrain that you've probably seen by now is that it does kind of work its way back on top of itself like being large rocks stacked up so we can bring it back forwards again and that brings us up to the problem section where we can do a little grass right over here kind of looping around the back looks so nash and that forces that new curve i was talking about okay perfect it barely makes sense to me if so if you're confused too we're in the same boat Quick trip back over to the viewing trees again so we can take a look at this thing. And that is starting to look really good. It definitely feels like a lot of rocks stacked on top of each other. And we're going to make that even more extreme once we get in all the, the texturing. Before we get into that, though, there's a little bit of a problem I need to take care of. And thankfully, the gas farm gave me a ton of torches back after we fixed it. I like this a lot. I really, really like this a lot. Did I? I missed a spot. You saw nothing? Just like how dark and spooky it is back here chest piece on and it's time for a little bit of battling there's so many mobs down here oh i forgot i don't have a lighter <laughs> the only part i'm now terrified of is you know actually in the mountain itself but all those torches are going to be removed when i'm actually breaking the blocks to replace them so that's a future problem nearly three more shulkers of stone emptied and a bit of dirt Woo! this is a big boy before i can build out any more of the mountain i should probably reclaim some of the stone and get to work on texturing what i have so far since i'm on such a time crunch i want to use tools on my side to make this go quicker so i copied the mountain into a creative world and started to texture the mountain for the first time using world edit so i could just get a better idea what it should look like when i get back into the hardcore world i'm really happy i did that because i found coal ore is actually going to be really nice for shading and as much as you all hate the shulker monster right here i have been hoarding plenty of coal ore who knew this could be a great building block i'm gonna need a lot more light gray wool than i thought so i ran over to the white tulip farm to get a ton of those then crafting all of the white tulips down into light gray dye i took white wool and then created the light gray wool i needed i'm thinking from here we just start with all of the darker colors and get those added in and i'm gonna need a lot of acacia wood which is uh, i'm really happy i got all these screenshots on the side monitor i got to work copying in everything i had prepped in the creative copy and just ran with it trying to stick on theme for all of the the colors representing highlights and shadows along with the terrain itself so when you see this build from a distance it has a lot more depth to it than just a stone mountain and i did get a bit carried away and finished it four hours later but now the main mountain is finally done and this is what it looks like without the fancy shaders on and i'm still loving it got a little extra materials around here so we'll throw them back for now as i'm not mentally ready for that next one yet next up i want to grab a little bit of moss out of here nailed it that we can use to just get a little bit more of a dynamic feel to the grassy areas before we put any grass or flowers on them i'm thinking we just come in here take a few of them out and fill in the moss How are there horses back on top of this mountain? I have to know, are they all tamed? They are. <gasps> They're escaping. You're also tamed too. How many horses have made it? Oh, maybe we need a bigger paddock. They're all escaping. What's going on? <laughs> we'll 
get back to the mossing in a second as um i just saw back in here and there's a lot of dark spots that mobs can spawn so let's uh, eliminate a few of those all it takes for one of these to be a creeper and come through the mountain while i'm trying to build it like that one and this should be the last of it a very bright nope missed a spot yep nailed it ah i might have made a problem actually lighting up the inside of my mountain now the outside of the mountain that i'm actually trying to work on is so many mobs just racking up that kill count as i snooze away but with that done i can get back to the lovely task of mossing the mountain Just ran out of moss blocks but this is a pretty good start probably easier for y'all to see because i'm colorblind when it comes to this stuff but i i like it i got most of the top peak done and down here i'm just wrapping it around before we keep going on the moss i need to repair all my stuff before it uh, gets too late look at the mountain ah oh, it's so good down into the nether we go to the wither skeleton farm There we go, everything in the under chest is fixed up now too, so we can put the doggies back in position and so many stone swords. We'll put a filter on that eventually, yeah. Oh, I'm phasing out of resistance. And now I wanna try adding in some waterfalls that'll come down from the mountain all the way down into the base and flow out and connect into the water over here. I left this channel in here pretty perfectly for one of those waterfalls to, ooh, it's still open at the bottom. But one of the waterfalls is definitely gonna be coming right down here. We have a pretty drastic drop in here, but then we need to start merging it up into actually reaching one of the mountains. You know what? I think this one's actually going to be coming over from the new section that we're going to be building out next. I think this steeper section here is going to be a pretty good spot to drop it down. Might need to do some additional terraforming here because it looks like it should be falling out there, but uh, it's fine. It's totally fine. Got a rough line in here now that's going to bring ourselves around there, curve the corner, and drop on down. And I think we can honestly just kind of pop the water coming out right about here. Let's throw the water in and hopefully it doesn't mess up everything. No, 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 no. Oh, please, torches, be safe. Now for the waterfall itself, I need to add in a few extra bits so that the water more smoothly cascades its way down here. But that actually is looking pretty good for the first try. I decided to actually connect in a second waterfall from the new mountain into the main bit we just made before extending it down to the river below. We're now working on a waterfall system to come down from the main mountain we've already textured. And I figured this time I could work from the bottom going back up. And for simplicity's sake, I think it's easiest to work with the natural train and just run it down here into that existing place we've already done. Except maybe we have like a little pond section in here. That's unique. Yeah. And then the pond comes out into our new river here. This is only going to be one waterfall coming down from the big mountain. So it's okay for this to be a little bit skinnier than the first one. There goes the pond in place. And now we're connected into the river. Now, I don't want to ruin the texturing on the mountain too badly, but I'm thinking right in here is the perfect place for this waterfall to come down. So if we pick right up there next to the coal blocks, we can drop it down coming over here. Might not be the cleanest, but it should work out. Down into the flatlands now, and I think if I just snake it coming along this direction, that should lean up into the next fall point right here. There goes the dirt filled out, and time for the terrifying part of putting the water in. There we go, and a good first start. There we go, there we go, we're falling, and we have impact. Oh, that looks so good. This right here is starting to look pretty magical. Moving on to day number six. I've already spent over 45 hours in the last five days playing this game. Well, four days, because I didn't play on one of them, but we're almost done with the front of the mountain, and yet again, I need more light gray wool. Should have everything together. Now we can jump to the top of the mountain and to get in some of the highlights. We've got the formula down for the mountain, so I'm able to more easily fly through building this mountain peak. I'm really happy with the first one, so going with the same ideas, this should hopefully turn out just as good. A quick flyaway to check up on the peak. And this is a very high performance level, but I can't quite find the word for it. Ah, peak. 
let's just move on and get into building out the next section before too many people leave the video so here's me sleep deprived and building up even more of the mountain with fancy colors that'll make you forget my awful joke never did I think I would use so much coal ore when building anything in Minecraft well if we come back all the way to the outpost you can see that it really works well as like a shaded little slightly darker gray block from back here speaking of dark shadows I might have created another mob pit here behind I did try and fix this one as I go so it's not quite as terrible but it's pretty bad oh no <laughs> I put my chest piece on no not the chill it's looking pretty lit in here now it means we can come back over to the front where whoa I guess I forgot that now for the rocks in between the mountains leaving these as blank stone over here is gonna be a really really bad idea because they're gonna look so out of place next to the mountains that we're making so I'm thinking since we don't have the overhangs here we just pick a few spots to run almost like a shadow line coming up and then we just add in some subtle highlights around and that should do the trick you know I think as uh annoying as it is that I'm using it everywhere I think the coal ore is gonna work out really well here since I don't plan to really walk in these mountains they're most just as the backdrop just doing a quick once over on these and I think that'll work for the first and there we have it all of the rocks coming down and connecting back into our original mountain range are textured out pretty well I think they look pretty good and when we fly all the way back over here it feels a lot more cohesive throughout the entire thing it's just uh 9 30 at night and I only have one more day to build this thing so I'm not too sure this one's gonna happen before I even start thinking about that though we gotta focus on the rocks down here I've got to say I can't stop looking at the mountains so I hope you enjoy an extra cinematic shot here but the rocks down below do need a little love to match everything as they do stand out a little bit too much currently as being bland so I want to fix that before I run out of time on this build so far I've been running around and adding in all of the shadows then coming back in to add in the highlights as it helps me keep my inventory a little bit cleaner and I don't accidentally miss spaces as I'm moving along being on the smaller scale than the mountains I was able to leave a lot more of the space as stone in place to still keep that natural look to it though I did decide to stream while texturing the rocks so it's actually my seventh anniversary of uploading on this flip YouTube channel and I knew this was going to take a few hours to finish up but that was extremely exciting to share with the community until uh, of course I ran out of light gray wool again and again and again so back over to the sheepies again for even more light gray wool collecting to build rocks out of wool before returning back to the rocks to finish off all of the bean texturing to really make them pop along with the mountain itself I did set up a little dispenser here so that we can celebrate and have some firework rockets go up which is just so fun there's so many in here and my inventory is full so I gotta get rid of them yay fireworks yay just three hours later of bean building and the mountains are done just a little lifeless and don't look at the back it doesn't exist for the next distraction from the back I mean next step in building I'm gonna need some more moss blocks wow from all the way over here the mountains are looking so good with the moss I want to add in some strips coming down the mountains for something like a slight erosion channel reaching all the way Way down here for something more like this I spent the entire next hour adding in a few more erosion channels on this side of the mountain Woo! fireworks Woo! fireworks Woo! fireworks Woo! now from here I want to dot a few trees along the landscape being careful to make these on the smaller size as if I build them too large they'll overtake the mountain and make it look really small so we need the smaller trees so they don't ruin the scale of the mountain itself we just built and something like that should work out really well for the trees my elytra is very broken though so before we can leaf them I gotta fix this 70 durability in a dream we can definitely make it out here just in time so I've got a lot of stuff to fix 
I'm definitely running out of time to record this episode, so this is gonna have to be good enough on the tools. From here, though, I do want to bring a bunch of bones with me, as we're gonna need a lot of bone meal soon. We'll break that down into bone blocks later. Now I just need to put all these birch leaves on top of the trees. Less than a stack of leaves left and still three trees to go, but this is looking really good over here. <laughs> Now time to finish up these last trees. And that is looking much better. Woo, fireworks, woo, fireworks, yay! Actually, I want to add in a few smaller trees too for variety's sake, so I decided to just hang out and do that with oak fences and acacia leaves like I have below in the forest. Now is where those bones I grabbed earlier are gonna come into help. As I want tall grass to be on top of this entire terrain, I need to be careful not to bone meal over the moss though, cause uh, that's gonna cause some problems. And we're gonna get rid of a lot of the flowers. First big section is done now, and it looks a lot better with the grass on top of it, and it's really making those moss channels that we built pop out even more. I decided to leave a bunch of yellow flowers in here as they all naturally spawned when I was bone mealing. And again, taking a look back, and that, I like it. That just adds a nice little pop to that section, again, with all the tall grass down here, and I'm like halfway done. It's just been two days, woo! Fireworks, yay! Bone mealing, yay! More bone mealing, woo, bone meal, wow. Such fun, invigorating content, so cool, wow. The entire lower section is now done and that, nope, I forgot those rocks, but up there is looking really good. Like it never happened, we're just gonna hide it in, nope in some grass small mountains now finished up and i think it just adds that extra little bit of softness around the grassy areas which makes it feel more lush finally time for the last one here and i've got to be very careful and not clicking on the moss i can barely see it and this here finishes off the main mountain and wow i am extremely happy with how this has turned out to the viewing tree yep that's that's good mountain yay fireworks Woo! fireworks yay and now I think it's finally time to uh, clean up this little bit of a shulker mess up here. That's gonna require two trips. Wait, I can put the flowers in here like we were never there. I'm just gonna casually go ahead and put all these shulkers back here and we'll uh, deal with them later. It's not becoming a problem. It's currently way late at night, but I need to wake up early for a long road trip tomorrow. So I am officially out of time, but I'm calling the one week mountain challenge a success. Please leave a like as this has taken well over 60 hours in the past week to complete and it helps me out so much more than you could ever know now be sure to subscribe if you haven't as this sunset right here officially brings me to 4,000 days survived in this hardcore world currently on day 3,999 and with that i'll catch y'all on the flip side woo fireworks woo fireworks woo